PKA667. Slush Puppy may be joining us. Um, he was gonna. He's not online right now. So he's we'll on the other side of the out. planet. We'll give him a break. Sometimes you get sleepy, especially when you're we streaming like as often as he's been. This episode brought to you by FaroDistro.com. Lock and load and better help. Bunch of wonderful sponsors we'll talk more about later. Kyle, you had something you were just itching to talk about. <laughs> you know, like I always talk about how... You've oversold I, I, it. Yeah, you really have. <laughs> this is going to be the most interesting topic we've covered thus far. Kyle, I'm you had something it. you mentioned in a cursory, half-interested way just well, a minute been, ago. <laughs> I tell you, I've been reading those pamphlets you sent me about Israel, and God damn it if you aren't right. You know, <laughs> I, I've come yes, full circle. I wrote the check. Uh, good, yeah. good luck to We're our all warriors. Going, all go in Kanye mode. Salam alaikum, my friends, and, and, and good luck in your battle to come. <laughs> Wait, I don't know which side we're on. Ah, I thought we were pro-Israel until the end. Oh, no. Whatever Taylor is very takes. much the... Uh, any, no, I was thinking of the uh, <laughs> the new iPhone 15 just came out. There's this big, huge ad campaign. And I was actually triggered a little bit by the ad campaign in a good way. I was like, oh, that's cool. Because they're showing that like the element of titanium has traveled from so far to get to Earth so that it could be mined by us and turned into the goddamn cell phone for you. And here it is. Look at it. And it's like, all right. That's kind of neat. You got a titanium. That's the color of the phone. It's got titanium in it. And it did come from there. And All right. Neat, wait, 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 why Where'd did titanium travel farther than all the other materials on Earth? Uh, it would have had to be made in the heart of a star, right? Because anything more dense they than start iron that is, is, far is only away. created in a uh, star. How long is this but commercial? <laughs> <laughs> 40 seconds or so. <laughs> My point is that... Now that people have their hands on them, they're doing, I saw one reviewer do the standard like bend test. You just put it in your hands and you're like, bend it. And it snaps. It breaks and shatters. And they're bending and bulging. I see, I've seen lots of pictures of, of shitty iPhone 15s. And then I saw them take a Nokia, one of the old school ones, the first phone I had maybe, or the one my mom had, the first one she had, that blue Nokia block phone. And they put 1 million volts through the charge port. They hooked it up with this crazy apparatus. I don't understand electricity enough to know how it works, but they've amplified up a million volts and they're putting it into this thing. And he's just like Dr. Frankenstein, giving it the juice. And, mm. and the thing's going, wham, wham. And <laughs> bolts of plasma are shooting out of it to the top and to the sides. Like, like it looks like fire, but it's plasma. It's, it's the electricity arcing through the air and ionizing. And then they're like, all right, that's enough. Back it off. Because it hasn't broken or burnt. I they unconnect it. They turn it on. It's got full battery. <laughs> I saw right something away. that I think was equally true. They put the Nokia phone under a hydraulic press and the press broke. <laughs> All right, that's not true. <laughs> I did see it. <laughs> I saw that too. They made the top of the press out of like Play-Doh. <laughs> it's a great video. There's though. no it's way true. it didn't break after putting a million volts. But well, I also don't understand electricity. electricity. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I don't understand electricity at all. And my wife, who has the same level of understanding of electricity as me, is describing the route through which the lightning bolt went through her car and why she thinks it took out like various computers. So, if people don't know, it seems like lightning hit a tree next to Jackie's car. It seems like it might have entered through the side view mirror. And from there, it's just magic. I have no idea. But I know the mirror was blown off the side. And then. Both of the front tires on my truck won't hold air anymore. I have to fill them every time I drive the truck because I'm too lazy to get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had some real lightning damage. Garage door stopped working. Um, but for her to detail, like, which ECU to ECU, like, looking at a schematic of the computer she thinks the lightning traveled through, I I don't know why she has any level of confidence in this, but she does. Yeah. Yeah, probably the only way not, to guess would not. be like that's destroyed, that's destroyed, this is ruined. Oh, it uh, didn't want to go to the center console because the napkins I, and, I'm, and pens are in there. I'm hating the way this whole situation is getting down, and I might get more involved because I this is what's happened. I call up my insurance company and I'm like, hey, look, I think that this car was struck by lightning. First, we thought a deer freaked out because the side view mirror was blown off, but if you look more carefully, there's um like a lightning bolt in the side view mirror, and there's electrical damage. For people who don't know, the uh, car is completely unresponsive. Power doors, power windows, nothing works. The start button doesn't work. The rear turn signals are just steady on. That's the only symptom. Just that. Um, okay, cool. So we call up USAA and they're like, take it to Gerber Collision. We work with them. And I was like, oh, okay, but like this has dealer written all over it to me. I'm no expert. I'm out of my field, but... 
ECUs getting replaced and programmer, you know, computers getting swapped. That doesn't sound like some collision store. That's mm-hmm. the dealer. So we take it to the collision store that the insurance company said to take it to. And they're instantly like, well, we'll tow it to the dealer for you. Thanks. Thanks for that. So there's two dealers in our area. One is these fuck shits that try to rate me every time I go there. I'm working <laughs> out. And uh, for example, I call them up. I say, I'd like an oil change. And they're like, cool, we got you. And uh, I get there and there's a bill for like this 30,000 mile service that includes everything under the sun. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I didn't say this car has 21,000 miles. Why did you think I wanted the 30,000 mile service when the words were oil change? Yeah. And uh, they it's start trying to give me this song and dance as to why I wanted it. Long story short, I got them to fix the price, but I hate them. That hasn't changed. So I told the collision place to take it to a different dealer that I don't really have any experience with. And they took it to the one I hate. The one I hate is saying it's totaled. And not even that. They're saying it will cost $4,600 to determine if it's totaled. And I just feel like, ah, I don't know, a little okay. noob. It's a bad deal. Uh, go on Amazon and you can get a device that'll read that computer. If it's if the computer's taking any charge, that's the device they need. They are, they're full of shit. They're, they're, that's awful. But they, they're, they're saying just to diagnose whether it's totaled. But it is totaled. It is totaled. If, if it's a... if if. You, just the parts alone and then the time and it, but you don't want the car after the repair is done is the other thing. This is what, this is as bad as water damage. If you ask me, can I pause there? Yeah. So like water damage and some kinds of damage, like little things crop up for the rest of your car's life. And that sucks. I didn't know that electrical was like that. I thought that like, once it worked, you're like, all right, we got all the things fixed. It'd show itself immediately. I would be so afraid of a modern car with as many computers as in them as are in them now that 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 one of them was stressed and they were like, oh, that one's still yeah, it's sending back the 403 code. We're good, leave it. And it's like, well, it's it's not good though. It's just barely sending back the 403 code or something. I don't know. I, I just feel like that whole ro- wiring harness probably has to be replaced. Like they've got to gut that car. Uh, and you know how dealerships are. With, what do they charge per hour? How many mechanics are working on this thing? How many specialists have to show up? Right. The computers alone. It's going to be multiple computers. So you think, it almost sounds like you're saying, hey, Woody, this dealership that's just calling it totaled without barely looking into it, stay there. They'll total it. Oh, no, I get out of there if you don't like next Fuck car. them. I, but my, I always want to get away from people I don't like. So fuck But them if I go price, to but... a, a different dealer, they might say it's not totaled. I mean... Well, then you can always go back. <laughs> <laughs> this is like code names when people want to guess, and it's like, hey, 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 you can't win here, but you can lose. Why don't we wait till next round? True. So I, true. I don't, I don't think you can win right now at your current dealership. But by going to the other one, you can't lose. I, I, I would, I would want that. I always want that second opinion with everything mm. that's going to cost more than fifty dollars. I guess. It's like, what do you think? Oh, that guy's an idiot. Don't listen to him. Oh, I'm glad I talked to you first. The other thing that you might not. None of this is my money. Like I, I asked the insurance company specifically, I'm like, okay, let's say the car is worth 30 grand. I don't know, but they charge five grand to tell you it's totaled. How much do you get? How much do I get? And they're like 3,500 or 35,000. I did the math wrong. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, I can't lose. It seems like. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you can't lose, then your only advantage would be wasting a bit more of you and your wife's time to stick it to the current dealership, which you'd want to tell them um, at some point <laughs> for it to be worth it as well. Just so yeah. you know, guys, I need this car back at ASAP, hauling it across town, hoping to give them the business because fuck <laughs> that guy right there. Steve? Yeah, you, Steve, you cocksucker. Steve. <laughs> Steve's the I, reason I'm taking this $35,000 down the road. Yeah. I'm more uh, than, than most, though. I have also <laughs> found out where Steve lives by now. Mm. Is a lightning strike not considered an act of God? Yeah, sure, right? Why do you ask? I don't know. I always see stuff on TV that's like, well, that's an act of God. We don't cover that. That's oh. what you insure for. You insure for acts of God. Yeah, no, I actually, I don't have collision. I always thought, like, like we haven't hit anything that required, like, real help in 30 years now. If our car gets totaled, I'll just get another one and take it on the chin. But by and large... Insurance costs more than accidents. They make sure of that, you know, yep. on average. Mm-hmm. So whatever. It, um, 
but I do have Act of God insurance, and it turns go. out that's good. Yeah, I, good I would just cash it in then. Like, like, are you gonna get the same car? Do you think I, it's probably up to her? She didn't love it, so I think we're looking elsewhere. Even um, better. Yeah. Take the total. I, yeah, she. All right, she loved her Forerunner. Really loved her Forerunner. She had it for a long time. Hit everything she could find with it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and just really <laughs> enjoyed it. But she wore she ran that car until it was done. Two hundred seventy five thousand mm-hmm. miles, something like that. Impressive. And um, eventually, the, all the parts like that you could see on the outside, like the fan and the belt and whatever, they stopped turning. Silver dust is flying everywhere. And this is a car coming on three hundred thousand miles. So we um, silver dust. So like bits <laughs> of metal. Like yes, yeah. So you're using dust. it in the mind. No scientist. <laughs> so, There's bits yeah, of metal yeah. flying off the engine. And I thought, Dude, honey, maybe ten more thousand miles. But the alternator stopped car. working. I charged it <laughs> so we could metal? drive it to the dealer <laughs> and <laughs> traded it in. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's uh, good. That's dangerous. <laughs> so, uh, so we got it. We were going to get another Forerunner, but the year we got it, 2020, the Forerunners hadn't been updated for a long time. I want to say it didn't have Apple CarPlay, which is like a must uh, for us. Mm-hmm. And um, it just looked dated. But this Highlander, I, it was either updated that year or the year before. And everything about it was like fancy and better and appropriate for her mission. But it turned out she just didn't love it. So we're going to mm-hmm. try to find something she likes more. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Nothing wrong with the car except it's bitch made with regard to lightning. My truck got yeah. struck too. All it has is two flat tires. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. What did you Maybe do? Maybe it was a weaker upset strike. Upset the Lord. Uh, you know what it was, Kyle? Down. You know, remember post show last week when we were talking to Wendigoon and you said, I was talking to Taylor and we both agreed that we would not do a, a joke about selling our soul to the devil. Yeah. I wanted point. to do a bit on the show where Woody sold his soul to the devil, but I didn't even suggest it to him because I was like, I know that he's an atheist, but he wouldn't sell his soul to an. an like, all right, here, here imagine this demon. a bit. A guest comes on the show, and he has sent Woody the paperwork pre uh, already, and there's a lance set in there and everything. He's got to prick his thumb, put a bloody fucking thumbprint on a real contract that says that this this man, as an arbiter for Satan himself, gains access to Woody's eternal soul. And it's a, it's a well-written contract and everything. I wouldn't sign the contract, is what I'm saying. I wouldn't go I through with it. I will sell you my soul for a crisp $20 bill every week you know we can just make it a recurring uh, halloween episode we I'll gotta find it. someone we'll to buy his soul <laughs> kyle you want to you want to go in on want to split woody's soul 10 bucks I, I so want to buy his soul um let's let's both give him ten dollars and we will be co-owners of his soul what if like immediately our lives improve and his collapse like, 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 like immediately if, if your bench like, goes up 75 pounds you're like what, what happened <laughs> Well, that makes oh sense. God. You guys would have split mine. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, like, just get more powerful in every way. And, and But every week, Woody looks like the guy from Thinner. He's just like becoming tiny. Yeah. Like the crypt, he's, he's turning into the Crypt Keeper a week He's looking time. more and more like a Mexican alien every yeah. single week. <laughs> just kind of crisping up and fading away. Uh, just eyes sinking further and further into, yeah. into his he's skull. like, hey, yeah. about that soul. And we're like, ah, yeah, don't have it with me you know I'll, I'll remember next week and we don't remember next week it'll be like when we get to the pearly gates it's like if our soul gets declined we can be like really let me check my wallet try this one and they'll be like this is an even worse half of a soul it belongs <laughs> to the devil what are you doing with this guy and it's like oh well you're right i guess i don't want you're not yeah we shouldn't bring his soul to heaven yeah we'll leave us. it here if we, we probably, right, probably should sell it to the devil at some point, if we're going to be the the owners of the soul ourselves, I wanted to find. I don't want to be involved in a devil deal. That can't help. I us. think. Well, it's Woody's soul we're giving them. It's not ourn. You know, if it, if it were that, then I yeah. But God's going to know but. that we were middlemanning for the devil. <laughs> God's going to know that we purchased Woody's soul. I, I don't think that we're getting out of this. I unscathed. think that the reason we purchase it is to keep him from selling it to Satan. Would he would would Woody rather have his soul possessed by the Lord of Darkness or two retards? Clearly, I would, us. I kind of I wouldn't do anything with it. I put it that in my the whole I, thing. You you want to actually sell? Oh well, I was being more benevolent. I was thinking I would take my half of the soul do- contract, put it in there in my. I was in the business of flipping souls. It would seem. 
you're going to make a See, cool that's exactly what I $15. Thought. See, we've got, this is, this is, <laughs> Simpsons this did this is, first. Uh, this is capitalism Yeah, the Simpsons right here. did we, too. This. Here we have, here we have <laughs> Woody, Barnes who has no interest in his soul. He, ha- he finds it have zero value. And here we have Satan, who finds nothing to be more valuable. You know, it seems like you want to really be that I really need to cut out star. the middle, man. Maybe I'll but, get rid of my gray hair. What would actually happen is we would get bamboozled by the devil because he's smarter than we are. And mm. he would get us by virtue of the fact that we sold the soul to him. He'd be like, now you've lost your souls also. Three for one for him. Too late, fucker. Too late? <laughs> yeah. well, I don't I know if it's an unpopular we're, opinion. We're, you're you're saying, thinking about the devil. I already and sold and mine. I think Johnny plays the fiddle better than the devil. No, he I does. have that backwards. I Everyone think the knows devil that beat Johnny. The devil plays better than Johnny. Everyone knows the devil plays better than Johnny. Mostly because he has accompaniment. Those demons and and then a band of demons joined in and it sounded a little something like this. And they fucking play and it's like, oh, that sounds pretty good. But when the devil hits his lick, it's like that's a way cleaner, longer, better lick than what Johnny hit. It's definitely superior. When that song is performed, does the same person do both parts? Charlie Daniels. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had it on my he, head. There were like two fiddlers on stage. <laughs> One was clearly better. Charlie Daniels is known as a, a very good fiddler, you, as you might imagine, since Rest he actually has the whole song about, about, the, about the thing. Mm. Is he dead? He's oh, a I fit don't know. guy. You know, I, I, I remember that. I remember him being very svelte, very, very long and slender. No, <laughs> I thought he was a big fat fiddler who, who big, was fat from fiddler. olden times. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah so I, was, I would not sell my soul to the devil. That seems no. like there's nothing to gain there, and a, I mean, and a whole whatever. lot to lose. Hey, yes, your soul. Down here, rising up your bow and play your fiddle hard. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, Hope he's alive. He looks like he's alive. Good for him. Rocking it. Oh no, no, he died in 2020. I now I look oh. better. Oh, was it COVID? That's a good question. But he doesn't look like the kind of guy who'd line up for a vaccine. As I bet it was. Hard, well, you. Pretty much heart disease is the the easiest layup. Pretty much everybody dies of that. I remembered him being heavier, but in that photo Zach showed there, he looks. For those of you who don't know, Charlie Daniels band. Check him out on YouTube. Some some country music from the Taylor. I'm going to ask you to pronounce this for me. Hemorrhagic stroke. Yeah, I made a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a brain hemorrhage. Yeah, mm. yeah. that that sucks for him. The the well, devil took his finally took him to the great beyond. Maybe you made know. it the devil got him. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Did he sell his soul to the devil? I, I don't know anything about this guy other than the last no. five seconds of you guys talking about him. You, you mm-hmm. don't know the song. You don't know the lyrics of the song? The story of the song? I know. Well, we should probably move along. Jesus it. fucking Christ. Well, who Please, was that guy? Let us down the, again. Who is the fucking black guy who sold his soul to the devil in the old like oh, brother, where legend? Uh Robert something, where it's like he was the best fiddler ever, and in the early 1900s, he sold his soul to the devil to be the best fiddler. Which is, I would ask for more. I wouldn't do it, but if someone consulted me on it, I would say ask for more than that, dude. I don't know what you're talking about, but I do know in the movie Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, which is a great movie, the black kid they picked up just had sold his soul to the devil at a, at a crossroads, like a crossroads demon, to play the guitar. And okay. uh, and he I have tells seen that me, movie, so that must be what I'm. Oh, thinking. son, you you sold your eternal soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. That's a good movie, dude. We have to talk about the Trump trial. Have you guys paid attention to the most recent thing? I get headlines Not occasionally, something about disbanding his uh, like businesses in New York, maybe, and and also there was something about deciding that his property, Mar-a-Lago, in Florida, was worth substantially less than what he had been claiming. Yeah, I did see that, and it was like eighteen million for that giant play, dude. There is no fucking way that's only worth eighteen million. Uh, I don't know. I I saw seventy three million for that place, but Trump valued it at seven hundred and thirty nine million, uh, ten times what you'd expect. Um, so so here's the deal: Trump was being sued for habitually deceiving lenders and insurers on the value of what they were lending against and insuring and Trump's own personal net worth. Um, (laughs) And the thing is, he's really guilty. So there's something called puffery, 
that is sort of normal standard practice in real estate where you might say mm. like these wooden floors behind me, <laughs> the part that's uncovered, yeah. are the finest wooden floors. They're the best you can get. And that's a little bit of puffery. Like, well, in my opinion, oak is the finest, right? You know, screw yeah. your fucking mahogany or something. That's salesmanship. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what Trump does. Trump is like, this room is 60,000 square feet. Square feet are not negotiable. They're not a matter of opinion or a term of art. You can't say this building is 73 stories tall when it's really 53 stories tall. This isn't puffery anymore. This is deception and fraud. Um, here's what the judge wrote. In the defendant's world, rent-regulated apartments are worth the same as unregulated apartments. Restricted land is worth the same as unrestricted land. Restrictions can evaporate into thin air. A disclaimer by one party casting responsibility onto another exonerates the party's lies. That is a fantasy world, not the real world. So that disclaimer part, what he would do is he would be like, this building is this many square feet. It's this tall. It's worth this much. But do your own research, you know, because you may have a different opinion. And they're like, no, 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 you can't just say do your own research and pretend that that means that you're allowed to lie, that that like you have no liability. The judge found against that. So what happened is it was going to go to a jury trial next week. And the judge did instead a summary judgment. So I haven't had law forever, but a summary judgment is when the facts are so plain on the surface that it's not something that a jury needs to decide. If Taylor misses his court date, we don't need a jury to be like, well, you know, I think maybe he was there. I think maybe he wasn't. There. It's plain on itself. He either mm -hmm. where he was there or he wasn't. So the judge determined that the level of Trump's deceit around the value of his properties, the size of his properties, the comps, you know, in real estate, use comps. Like, I hey, Taylor, probably a lot of homes in your area are similar. We can look at what they sold for recently and get an estimate of what yours is worth. Sure. But he would do comps with things that, like, Mar-a-Lago, for example, is a country club, right? It's a golf course and it's a restaurant and shit like that. Probably a hotel. And he would compare it to a fully developed residential neighborhood that had the same square footage, but had like, you know, 6,000 houses on it. It's like, no, you can't compare your land, which has zoning restrictions against becoming that and say that yours is worth the same because the acreage is roughly similar. Like that's just lying. That's fraud. And the uh, judge issued a summary judgment. And one of the consequences is that he has to disband all his properties. He can't work in New York anymore. So he's going to, his uh, business is going into receivership and then will be sold and the proceeds will go to Trump and he will no longer be allowed to conduct business in New York along with his children and the other people in the Trump enterprise. And I'm just like, you, seems like, a are you saying there's a consequence? It's called the going nuclear it's like the business death penalty he got they're the riding him out of town outcome. on a rail <laughs> yes they're <laughs> riding him out of town on a rail and um he's guilty by the way like almost no one argues yeah, that Trump yeah, is yeah, innocent I, I, of these things I, like I, nobody's <laughs> saying he's not <laughs> i just right? didn't think they could ride you out, ride you out of town on a rail and if you don't know that expression google it it's fun <laughs> 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 I've heard it, but I don't feel like I don't know its history that I'm they laughing a lot, but I shouldn't. <laughs> they get a rail and they sit you on that motherfucker, and you are usually <laughs> naked, half beaten to death, oh. covered in tar and feathers, like on a, perhaps. Like which on is a not train? a cartoon type, type punishment. Like on a this is like a railroad. They'd like put you in a caboose and be like, "Get the hell out of Springfield! You're not welcome here." <laughs> it would be a monorail. Yeah. Monorail. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I am baffled that Trump has. Now, there's going to be an appeal. And I'm like, like he's already ordered the dissolution of his business as if it's a done deal. And I'm like, but there's going to be an appeal, right? And what happens at the appeal level? I don't know actually how this works. And there's also substantial fines. Something along the line of like a quarter billion dollars is like the minimum. And uh, um, that is going to a jury trial. That part, the judge doesn't just summary judgment. So there'll be some extended portion of this. But the findings of facts that Trump has fraudulently conducted business and routinely lied to lenders and insurers is locked in, at least until the appeal. Is there nobody checking on stuff like like I feel like if I were buying a big building and the guy was like, it's 80 stories, I would check. 
I'd at least One, get in the elevator two, and take a peek and be like, hey, uh, this ends at 62, brother. <laughs> Where's my 18 stories? Like, that seems like a buyer beware thing. I would never slip up and he names buy every something floor a different name. Like, like, oh, that's the Peter floor. Which one is it? It's the Peter floor. It's, it's between Sally and Judy. <laughs> Bro, did you seriously not use numbers? Yeah, just pick what, which name were you? Just actually, a, why are you a series counting? of glyphs. How yeah. many? <laughs> How many floors are not labeled yeah. typically? Like, I don't even know the, you know, 13, of course there's no 13, right? right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm just making this up because I don't know anything about anything. But if a building's 87 stories tall, mm -hmm. you probably devote a floor to like maintenance and HVAC and I don't know what, like I'm making shit yeah. up, but like, like there's probably one that's just for staff and it's somewhere in the middle. I guess like you don't want to go down to two every time. I've probably never heard of numbered, that, though. but if it were true, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I, It'd be I, one of I those buttons that has like a there's... key next to it that you need. Yeah, like, but it's yeah. not like that floor doesn't exist. Like it's usually like house. I, or... I, I'm I'm trying to invent ways that make it harder to count floors because how the fuck do you lie about that? You, got, you, you literally some binoculars like, like, and and how I could mean, you on. not see it? You just could stand on the street and count, or get in the fucking elevator and go. You to know the what top. I would do. I'd make short windows on my building. So so it added up to like like make make every window 20% shorter than they should be and just keep stacking them. So they would oh. look terrible from the inside, but it looked like there's 20 more floors. There's another it's little fun thing about it. Floors. Trump had like five attorneys or something trying this case. Every attorney was personally fined $7,500 for filing frivolous motions. So they were just like delaying and making bullshit or they'd file a motion and they'd like hear it out and be like, oh, okay, yeah, that was obviously quite bullshit. You're just trying to stall us. And then they'd file the exact same motion again. And then the exact same motion a third time until they got fines for themselves. You know, <clears throat> all of that, that was sounds like how the death like, penalty worked. Sounds Trumpy to me. All that sounds like litigious behavior that happens a lot. I, I don't care. It's neither here nor there. And it sounds like he's probably guilty of like everything that you just said. I wouldn't be doing this to the guy who's leading in the polls like might just be the most powerful man this side of the sun pretty right. soon <laughs> the most uh, powerful this, human to like, have ever like, exist this maybe side wait about of the four, sun. give it five years <laughs> and keep and, and and then do this guys like like when he's 85 and and his money's tapped he's about to become again the most powerful person that exists again he, he, no, i, I don't mean think he's leading in all the polls him. Like every time I see uh, the numbers, and I'm not on Fox News, I, I don't I don't have it. I'm on CBS, right. and they're and they're showing like the blue line crashing and the red line going up. They're showing Biden with fifty six percent. Um, what what is it when they don't like you? Like disapproval, disapproval. rate or whatever. <laughs> what is it when they don't like you? <laughs> it's like the mean. You know, they're like real gentle about. It. Oh, and what they mean is fifty six percent said they fucking hate him. I wish they would ask like a like a, like a crate like a wild card question at the bottom and. 38% say they, he should be forcibly castrated in the streets. Really? Yeah, 38%. Well, let's hope like, that damn. number goes down for his That's sake. a lot of America. That's a lot <laughs> of America. It's, it's probably half. close. <laughs> it, like, it's probably close. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, predicting the president is so tough. It was only a few months earlier in this cycle, at this point, eight years ago, that mm. uh, Jeb was winning. So... I try not to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I sure. routinely lose on this. I've been picking like I, I, you were like, hey, it's definitely going to be Bernie or Biden. And I'm like, oh, I'll take everyone else combined. Not a good move. No, it, yeah. it was probably a coin flip. It was probably a coin flip or maybe it was 60 40. You know, it, it, it was it wasn't like the worst bet ever to take. But I just felt so con what I felt mm. was that something bad had to happen to one of them. And they I, I knew that they weren't going to get mud thrown on them like a Republican might because. Probably they're just more decent human beings. I doubt Bernie Sanders ever sucked a dick in a in a lit theater or anything. Or maybe he did, and then he'd be applauded for it. doesn't make him it, bad. But, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wouldn't mean well, he's doing it. Poor Pee Wee Herman. He can't make us laugh anymore, can he? He, he was jerking <laughs> his own dick. That's the worst railroad job ever. If you want to talk about someone who who got who, who got fucked out of the businesses, but for something so silly. He was in for an those adult who don't theater, know, right? we didn't all... There didn't yeah. used to be the internet. So if a man wanted to jerk off to a little pornography, as we do from time to time, you could do it you with have friends. go down to some sleazy theater downtown and slide in there on the way home from work. Oh, look, it's the triple X rub and tug. Let's go. And you'd go in there in the dark and you'd bust right there. And they had some kind of a goddamn jerk detective in this one, which is 
And, and the, the first time ever is like, ah, oh, that's Pee Wee Herman jerking it. Maybe they caught him there before and knew he frequented, but they locked him up and he yeah. he had his goatee, which was not what his characters looked no. like. And immediately, like what trickled down to the playground the schoolyard of, yeah <laughs> yeah because you know we start at the courthouse and in a theater in new york somewhere and what trickles down to the playground in livonia georgia is that peewee was a pedophile he liked little boys or something oh, peewee's dirty that. peewee peewee's gonna peewee wants your peewee you know that because hoo, 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 hoo. we're like second graders peewee's dirty now let's not watch his movies let's like no, yeah. it ruined that guy's whole career and he's just you know he'd been making kids laugh all day he needed a release all right he did, and he was I, doing it with a bunch of other adult men there, and I bet the masturbation detective, that guy saw dozens of guys beating off every day. It wasn't until he saw a famous face that suddenly yep. he decided to put it back in his pants and start mm -hmm. writing up a fucking report, which is, you know, really unfair to Pee Wee. Horrible. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is an excellent film. A wonderful movie. I'll watch that 10 more times before I see Terminator 2. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, because it's because it's wonderful. It's hilarious. It's a very good movie. And he didn't deserve to be railroaded. And now he's dead. Are you happy, America? <laughs> <laughs> it's cause and effect. Are you happy um, that 25 years Paul later Rubin? he died? Yeah, Paul, Paul Rubin, Rubin I think. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. So Paul on Rubin, Trump, one out. I, we'll see if he actually faces consequences. I'm just not accustomed to him. Like, consequences of finding him for real I, I i have this mindset because i've been watching that stupid show rome on hbo and when you mm. when you do someone wrong in that show they start thinking about how to ruin you in the future and i'm like is trump like that is is he like mm. go find out who that guy's associated with where his daughters go to school if we can make them lose a job or an internship if we can make it so that they don't get a free car anymore from from this business that they've been that's been lobbying them because I put the finger to somebody like whatever it takes make their life hard and, and then when he's in the presidency is he like find out what they need find out what funding that district needs find out where his kids go to school find out what, find out if their volleyball team needs a federal fucking grant this year for more inflation I don't fucking care find everything and squash it make it go to a crawl for the next four years whatever they need. Like, I hope that's the case because that's the Trump I want to believe. I believe in <laughs> the one that's that's the getting, vindictive, petty one. He's on the ball, taking his cold medicine, and he's focused, laser focused. <sighs> nice. I'm down yeah. With that. I I I am fully convinced Trump won't be the next president. Mm. But I am also maybe blinded by my own bias. Right. I have this idea that like once he gets out there talking and, and people revisit the insanity that is a typical Trump word salad that he's going to lose some support. People love he's, the idea of Trump. He's but been the bad reality of lately. Trump, he's been bad. Uh, I think they're going to legally worrying. preclude him from running with some, some shit and be like, Oh, this document thing, you can't run now. And they'll wait I mean, really fake. late into the, into the game, I think to do it. And then that'd be the worst time. I don't even I know what I they, want. Right. It's a guy who doesn't like Trump and thinks that he's me. I, I saw their debates last night and uh, um, I was like, I think I'd take almost maybe every single one of these guys over Trump. Not a huge fan of um, DeSantis, but Trump, I'm really, really down on. But it's like, do you actually want Trump to be prevented from getting on the ballot more than you put him on there and let his ideas lose? That would be perhaps the ideal outcome for a guy. I like don't me. think his opponents want him on there. Like he's so much more popular than everybody else he's competing against from a national perspective. So right. I, I, I respect that opinion and you're on to something. I agree. However, I feel like historically, every time the two candidates are chosen, they get elevated to the same level. One guy can be a no one, but if the RNC says McCain's our guy this year, suddenly he's on par with Obama. No, um, no, he got butt fucked by Obama. Uh, didn't he lose like badly? It was bad. Like, it was, he wasn't power, even so it wasn't a Reagan-like blowout or anything, but yeah. it looked bad. And every now and then, the political sector, it'll be like, holy shit, can the le is the left dead? Or is the right dead? Like, they mm. just got beat they so bad. They never are. They never are, because it, it's <laughs> like, they, they rise like the phoenix again, like two to four years. Dude, we should have like 30 parties. party like has Europe. good enough answers to keep the ball rolling. They can't get that fucking dynasty established. Like, you... See, they need Kirby Smart 
to be the president of the United States. He's the coach at the University of Georgia. So after he wins his third <laughs> national title this year, you should put him in the White House because that guy understands a dynasty mentality. One hundred percent. We need, we need to, a president even, who can win three terms. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, he would. He would win. He would win Georgia. So, so not one person in Georgia would vote the other way. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of Georgia Tech fans, but you know, <laughs> okay, um, well, then the Georgia Tech fans but, who would who would go against but, that guy? But they lose. Yeah, not n- not many. I I bet someone like if he wins a third term, he really could probably do some political stuff here. But why would he want to? Like that job? Wait, I don't know. Trump win a third term? Is that what you meant to say? Uh, we're talking about Kirby Smart, the coach of. The oh, if he NBA. wins, well, he hasn't won any terms yet. Well, I'm calling national championships terms, I suppose. But, oh, but yeah, if he wins okay. a third one in a row, I like like. It could, what if he ran for governor? Could he win as governor or something like Would he like want that? to make exactly. way just, less money mm. to have less fun and be yeah. less famous? Like, I don't think he would. What does he get point. paid? It's, I bet it's yeah. – let's guess what Kirby Smart gets paid a year. I, I doubt he's one of the highest paid because he's probably had a contract for – I bet it's like $5 million a year. I, I it's got to be ridiculous. I bet it's $10 million and And they've always – it seems like on the collegiate level especially, they're great at giving you a perks package that's so impressive that it's like, oh, fuck the cash. Really? <laughs> the jet forever? And fuel too? There's not a maintenance cost you're sneaking Ooh. in. You handle the maintenance? And the engines get updated every six years? Are you serious? Like, like, like the perks packages can be nutty. Um, Dude, he has a, he has a 10 year perk package for Terminator 2 was $86 million. His perk package for the film was. This guy, the coach for Georgia, has a 10-year, $112.5 million contract. Mm-mm. So he earns 10, point, 10 and a quarter million every year. And that's his contract. I, I, I don't know this to be true. I'm just making it up. Doesn't Nike probably pay him like $5 million a year or something? I bet he has My some My guess would be that, that they pay the NCAA, and the NCAA like trickles that money down to all the teams probably. I bet there's a bigger contract as far as like the overarching sponsorships like Nike and um, all I know is in basketball, it didn't used to work that way. No. So, so I don't know how if that data point is worth anything. Oh, I'm glad you brought basketball. As much as I despise LeBron James, I, I'm looking okay. for some new sneakers. I love that uh, you hate him so much. He's just so, <laughs> he's so yeah. meaningless in your life and interests. Yeah. Like he's, yeah, I just I just I just hate <laughs> to looking me. At he him. is a guy I never think about unless I'm like. Well, you know, he comes I up. You know, I, I I I I I talk a lot of sports in my in my regular life. I watch ESPN all day, and I have to see that cocksucker. And anyway, I uh, hate him. And as much as I do hate him, <laughs> that's a good man. That man makes a fine sneaker. All right, like I'm looking at the like like the shoes I want are Lebron's. Like, I, can, like, can, Zach, can we see a picture? I, I can't just even. pull up a pair of Lebron's. I'm, I like I'm the white on white purple and gold 1980s high. Top I like the white. I like white on white, but the white with gold is nice. I don't. Um, and uh, there's one that's kind of got some like fruity colors on it, and it's not bad either. Uh, I like like I like the design. I think it's it doesn't look like. A piece of shit because so many times i'm like i'm not putting that on my shoe i'm on my foot like I, that, that looks ugly it just looks like a nice clean shoe well yeah 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 oh sure that's that's the exact shoe i like did you see uh that or the white some, some news story about lebron's school did you see that like not one yes. eighth grade student has passed a math uh exam like those Didn't placement I get beaten exams to death there the in, other day since 2020 yeah, I was gonna, something yeah, i got beaten to death recently. the other day there <laughs> okay, it's, well then, what what are we doing? He's he's got to get his school under control. That well, sounds like it's and, doing and bad. Don't look in, don't look into why that child was beaten to death. There were it had nothing to do with race. Those three black child children just happened to not like that that white child's friend squirted them with a a gel pellet gun. Wait, Wait someone oh. actually was beaten to death. At yeah, LeBron one kid James shot school. at another kid with like one of those gel pellet guns, and. uh so they came over and what hit is the a other guy. Pellet gun. I don't know this. <clears throat> yeah, it's I. I don't know where they came from. It was probably a Kickstarter or some shit. But they got super popular, especially in like I would see black neighborhoods where everybody had them, like shooting each other, having fun with them. They shoot these biodegradable gel pellets that are soft and squishy, but you like brrr, like blast with them. They hurt a lot. So it's nah, no. It's, it's like silly. It's like it's not paintball airsoft. It's not that. It's it's more like. Let's be silly with like nerf. It's like a little bit above nerf. Okay. And uh, so I guess like somebody got shot one of those, got mad and came over and hit the the white dude. And then he fell and he never got up again and he never will. Uh, so yeah. that's what happened there. Cause I saw the tweet and then Elon 
interacted with the tweet in some way. I don't remember what he wrote. And so I read into it a little bit more. I see. Yeah, no, I, I read Jesus that. Christ. So I, the original thing I saw called it a squirt gun. And mm-hmm. they're like, it was actually a pellet gun. And I was like, ooh, I know what a pellet gun is. And that's that'll break the skin, you know? John Candy said so. Yeah. But, that's a white boy uh, lost his eye. Not this but, gun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this, I guess, is not the pellet gun that I'm imagining. They're little yeah, lead pellets in a normal pellet gun. Yeah, it's not a real pellet gun. A real pellet gun, you it, could fuck somebody up. It's like shooting Tide Pods almost. It's these little gel thingies. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're tiny, though. Um, I, I've never had one. I've just seen like lots of fun videos of... They were like, this used to be the most dangerous neighborhood in all of Chicago. What do they do? They passed out 300 gel pellet rifles. Now the kids are having fun. Everybody's just having a war in the street, shooting each other, doing drive-bys with gel pellet guns. <laughs> Did the, is that true? Yeah. Somewhat. Okay. <laughs> Damn, that's a little bit. He, he, and it, this school's not doing well. This school no. seems like a terrible, terrible school. I, and well, why is it well, look, so bad? Because be it's well funded. So did, did yeah, they just yeah, yeah. start with some really underachieving students? Is that I'm making up reasons as to why it might be so terrible. Like they grab the students on the edge of dropping out, put them all in the same school and hope to turn mm-hmm. their lives around. And in a situation like that, you, you take on a really hard task. No one's even passing math. Yeah, there's no, no one. How do you yeah, not no have a guy who's just naturally good at math? Like I think LeBron through. James is bad at teaching. I think yeah, he's, that he's the only teacher. He never shows up. I wonder what they do in China when you fail. Like, like I pick China because I think of them as a no nonsense, no nonsense sort of place. That's why they're like, winning. what do you do if you're a third grader who can't cut it? You're not. You don't have an excuse. You're not disabled in any way. But clearly, you're not paying attention. Chop seeing. You're you're fucking not. You don't know your AB fucking whatever the hells. And yeah. and, and you don't behave. Here? You don't behave. We send you to LeBron James School in <laughs> I think oh, learning your A B no, whatever the hell is no. an underappreciated joke. <laughs> the Chinese a, B, alphabet thing. The <laughs> your A B chicken scratches. Yeah. Like whatever yeah, the shit they, they, they don't do want to get there. sent to this fucking shithole school. So they, so they behave. Like, like like forget LeBron James school and every school in America. It doesn't matter if you're any if you do anything, they'll just keep moving you along. I don't think they fail kids. I think that there are very few no. pl- I think there are very few places where they will fail you. No matter what you do, like maybe you don't get a diploma at the end, but they'll keep you along the whole fucking time and and just let you show up and leave and they won't hold you back. Like you'll just be in another grade next year. They won't do it. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be something for that. There needs to be. You don't want to turn out like those people over there, do you? Because everything else in life, they do that. Well, why? do I don't want to go to bed. Why not? Well, you don't want to be like that guy, do you? We need that guy to point at again. We need that guy. We need consequences. Mm. So there should yeah. be some kids who know. Ah, shit. Looks like you can't read, Timmy. Looks like you're not trying to very hard. Well, outside with you. What do you mean? You live outside now for eight hours a day out there in the yeah. kennels. Just put them out there in the kennels or something. Chop wood. Let, 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 give them a little crap. Yeah, you can dig ditches with the team out there. Make them dig ditches. Slave labor of some kind. Hmm. You just put them to work. So like punishment... But we're also building infrastructure. Yeah. I, well, basically, it's like, all right, you don't want to learn. There's plenty of jobs that do not require you, you to know your ABCs, like digging that hole out there with those fellas. Like yeah, you didn't try in math or English. And so you clearly are very interested in the career of ditch digging. So your semester will be ditch digging. And then they won't go to the ditch digging class the same way they didn't go to the math class. Well, I do mean, if they don't. digging is that bad a job. I bet they don't even manual use ditch digging or, or like one of those, di- one of those nah, like giant no chainsaw things. Now neat. you're working at a chainsaw thing. I had excavator in my head, which is the big bucket on the front that like with those the are fun to work. If you, if, well, you don't want just anybody ever, doing that. You want you someone who knows what one, doing. Uh, did you have I operated one? Yeah, excavator. Uh, yes, I have, but I'm not good at it. I don't have a lot of time. Ah, nobody's good at it first time. It's it, it was fun to fuck around with. Yeah, it's like. I'm, I, I was at the level where, like, I'll bump this a little bit, see what it does. Oh, okay, I want the opposite of that. Probably the other way, <laughs> you know, and just, like, start to work on. But the people who do it, I, I can work a um, front-end loader pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, not amazing, but I didn't do that. Yeah, Never that's, um, the excavator is very fun. Uh, I, of course, I was a kid when I was using it. I guess I've got a job right now, like, digging holes all day. I'd be like, 
not so fun after all. But you, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's really fun as a kid to be moving there, like digging that huge hole and having all that power to just. When I yeah. would commute to Cisco, um, I got into woodworking and like just hated my job. Like that's something. I, it, Cisco didn't treat me poorly or anything, but just going working in a cube. All our cubes were the color of dirty dishwater, which had a big impact on me. I don't yeah. know if everyone's like that. Like a gray. A gray with some like squiggles in Swirls. it. Swirls. Like yeah, like yeah. dirty dishwater. And wow. uh and you would just sit there surrounded by this sort of dirty dishwater with your illusion of privacy. <laughs> and um and then I would work there all day long. And the nature of my job was often like to be persuasive and that gets just tiring. Like you you, you have to persuade, but you don't have authority in in, in some situations, mm-hmm. like over other people's groups. And uh just every fucking day trying to get people on board and Anyway, <laughs> but I would commute to work passing guys who were like uh, expanding the road from one lane each way to two lanes each way. And I'm like, man, they're living the life out there in these like diesel earth movers. You know, yeah. there's, there's I don't know the name of the machine, but it's long and it has a scraper blade in the middle and it makes things level. A grading and I, machine, a grader. It, oh, okay. So yeah. I particularly thought operating the grader was the dream. I don't know why that one, but. They're so cool. Uh, <laughs> my dad, when he built a couple of poultry houses, you bring in multiple of those and they look like dinosaurs moving along, just carving the earth anew. It's like, this is a valley, but it won't be in two weeks. Like, they filled mm. the valley. They cut the, they cut the hill down and filled the valley with the hill. And now they had this huge flat spot. And it mm. pushes down on the dirt so hard that it compresses it. And it's shiny, almost like glass. It's like that. the clay turns into this, mm. like the light refracts off of it. And it pushes it together in a way that it looks like, um, sometimes when they split a rock, it'll be like, and then they polish it. It'll have that really beautiful look to it on the inside, yeah, like turns, geodes and stuff. Like That's obsidian. what the dirt looked like after yeah. a grader went over it. It was really cool. You got that's the I machine. Thought, yeah, that okay, one's the one I imagine has two wheels or four wheels, but that's it. Is that not what you were talking about, Kyle? The one I'm thinking of is, is the bigger version of it. This is um, oh, bigger thing. than a Tonka truck. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, see, Woody, you can't get in this. That's a toy. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll get you nowhere. Traditionally, but, they're made of metal. But they make some big ones, like diesel engines, and you can get inside of it. And no, that's a I, the <laughs> word I have for that piece of machinery. The, the regular size one, obviously, is, a I think, a, a, a road scrape. But those okay. grading machines look like something different. I was actually thinking about this last night, bizarrely enough, because I was thinking about what that land looked like before they graded it so long ago. Mm. But um, yeah, big machinery is fun to operate. And I've thought about that, too. There's that scene in Office Space, which I'm sure maybe even triggered the thoughts that you're having, where he despises the monotony of that cubicle life and the horse shit of, of, of having eight bosses and whatever. And it's his buddy is out there like, just getting dirty, sweating, carrying bags of, bags of concrete, digging with a shovel, but nobody's giving them any shit. Everybody's there as equals, doing their thing. Nobody's getting shit on. They're just getting shit done. And 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 that's a lot more appealing to it. Mm. And it, I'm sure it's a lot more appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure there's a good... I used to think that... You got me thinking about my days at Cisco. So here's the deal. I was kind of a high performance employee i did a good job my projects were done on time and i went years without a single bug making it out of my desk which is very very uncommon and uh, a normal programmer has like a bug every 10 lines of code or something i went thousands but i wasn't a dream employee because i knew that i was high performance so i was very high maintenance Mm -hmm. i would demand bonuses and raises and promotions constantly that pretty much every fucking week i'd be in my boss's office being like how are we looking for this a cap award cisco achievement program they had these bonuses they would give you and they'd pay your taxes too so i told him i had one fucking kid instead of two so they'd pay more in taxes (laughs) 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 and uh tried that now they're getting him for it (laughs) (laughs) yeah and you know if i wanted like software tools or something like books it was just like i I would just demand a lot so not perfect in every way but my projects would get done so i was sort of high performance and high maintenance at the same time and uh we do these team building events (laughs) and i suggested that we watch office space yeah since i mixed the title up with the office which is the title, and we watched that at work and it just demotivated fucking oh, everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you watch rudy 
<laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. But, like, you watch you watch fucking Miracle on Ice. You watch dude, something we, like, we started referring to like Jesus some of our Christ. tasks as TPS reports, like it infiltrated the team. You were doing uh, that yeah. to make everybody else worse so that you were like, yes, now an even greater <laughs> chasm has emerged. And I can I just... All right, now everybody get out there and put in a hard day's work today. As many lines of code as you can. No faults. Remember, no faults. And then you get back in your cubicle. Perfection, perfection, perfection. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get to work, that's what, See, that seems, it would seem easier to tear them down than to carry out that years-long st uh, streak of perfection. What about you made you so much better? At, at, at specifically writing thousands of lines of code without an error was it that your coding was a little bit different or less prone to committing errors or was are you just that 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 studious that that careful i think i was just um a little more diligent in the way that i tested it and it, it was uh so we have a quality assurance team and the development team and the quality assurance team have a bit of a rivalry right like if a qa guy sits in your queue because he wants to talk to you about your code the fuck is wrong with you? Why Why do you suck so bad? That's what he wants to know. Mm -hmm. So QA guys uh, were not welcome. Well, not that they weren't welcome at Q, but they, I didn't want them ever to be asking me how my shit worked or why it's doing a certain thing. Um, I, and I, <laughs> I did have a QA guy ask me, this is in a meeting though, about my calves. He's the guy that where that story originated from. They're like, how do you do it? I could, I see you enter the room in shorts, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> your calves they're huge. You you could wear shorts at Cisco. <laughs> I wore fucking flip flops because I was Woody. Like I, I, I <laughs> you, know? you really yeah. took that movie to heart. <laughs> you came in with sunglasses and a fucking Tommy Bahama shirt on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I legit did wear flip flops or mandals or whatever the fuck I wanted. It's you know, could I made my own dress code. Um, I don't see any reason to be to have much of a dress code if you're going to be in a cubicle. If you're ever going to be interacting with anyone who's from a different floor of the building, even sure. or certainly from outside the building, mm -hmm. then that would make sense. But if you're just in a cubicle, like head down, get your shit done, who fucking cares about your footwear? <laughs> like you really yeah. come in here to talk about my footwear, boss? Like, like I I wouldn't recommend it. Like I don't want anyone to be inspired to do this. I. <laughs> When I was in high school, I read this book on how to get into college and some guy got into Harvard and his essay was about a man he admired. So the dude got a red crown and he wrote for like a thousand words, a man named Jesus Christ, a man named Jesus Christ, a man named Jesus Christ, just paper. And he turned in this crayon written essay and he got into Harvard. But the book suggested don't copy that idea. Don't get into, don't try to get in Harvard in spite of your essay. Try to get in Harvard because of your essay. You'll have a much mm -hmm. higher success rate. Mm -hmm. So I would argue I got whatever my promotions and raises in spite of my footwear. When I would have done myself a little favor to put on some fucking dockers or whatever everyone else was wearing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was an asshole. So <laughs> what are you going to do? Because you weren't bugging up the, the works the way everybody <clears throat> else was. Yeah, yeah, that was how I saw it too. And uh um I was sought after amongst the managers. Like they like, oh I've got this thing and we're all gonna be measured on it, and I need a lead. Can I have Woody? Like that was who I was there. So uh it's like are you gonna pay his taxes? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite moves. There's nothing illegal about it. I just had to deduct as if I had fewer deductions. <laughs> so. I didn't even know you could do that. I guess you got to be a really good coder or programmer. <laughs> is there a difference? Do it. Is there a you difference? Fill out, is it your W? What's the one? Is it W4? The one you fill out when you first get a job? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Claim zero on your W4. I claim one. I want to pay. But yeah. Man. So Kyle, did you ever have the, the car dealership pay your taxes for you? Walking, walking around what in flip-flops. What do you mean? Like, file them for me? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. no. It didn't pan out that way. I don't remember. Um, I think I think I got this. Back then, I had the same tax guy as my dad. Um, and, um, you know, I think I think he still has that same guy. But no, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay my taxes for me. We had, a, <laughs> we, had, we had a dress code, but it was, you know, just don't look like an asshole. You could either wear a button up or you could wear one of their polos, and that was it. Yeah. You couldn't well, you're, you had you're to wear customer facing. You have to look presentable. Yeah. 
Well, some guys would push that and try to come in on their off day and sell a car wearing like a Falcons jersey. <laughs> hmm. See, I, w- I wouldn't like that. If I'm there and some guy in a Falcons jersey comes up to me and is like, how do you like the new Tacoma? I'm like, yeah. look, I'm not looking for friends here, bud. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> do you, oh, you work here. All right. Well, then can I talk to the guy in the tie? Like, yeah, instead I would- of you. I like the idea of like eyeballing the customer as he comes in and doing a quick change. You know, Kyle shows up with like one fucking gold tooth and a big chain. <laughs> like, yo, 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 you need to show you the grill. <laughs> <laughs> and then he shows him his own teeth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kyle's in the back, like looking and like, like, like getting ready to like code switch and to talk to black people mode. Oh, yeah. His, like putting on his. Is Atlanta Falcons jersey or whatever? You, would you do that? I would. Oh yeah, I would absolutely coach switch. Like, 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 like that's what I would do. I every there, there's probably three different ones. You, there's definitely like a a southern dude. There's a way. There's another. There's a there's a mm. way to talk to another white man from the south, and there's a way to talk to like you know black folks, and there's a way to talk to like a hoity toity Alpha 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 out of Georgia is where I was Alpharetta Georgia. And there, the at the time, the median income was like 175k or something oh, like man. that, and the, and the median combined was over 300, and the average Beacon score was like 725. 725 was the average, and so they're if they're coming into your Ford dealership, you kind of got to get them while you can. If you, if it's that mm-hmm. guy, because he's going to Audi after here or somewhere like that, like he's going to go look at a fucking lexus and compare it to your fusion so either he buys now or he's leaving so i don't know i treat them a little different too that makes sense mostly mm. just just like maybe my accent and some I of the like words the way I that use. i've seen kyle code switch he does it really well it's personable and it always works you can put him in boston you can put him with a real country guy I, there's only two versions of me there's me and then if i think that's not well received a quieter version of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can bring to you. <laughs> That's All right, I, I am not being well received. Time to clam up and <laughs> be silent. We'll just get a smile and <laughs> laugh at your jokes from here going forward. <laughs> <laughs> that that works, you know. Just 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 clam up. If you're not. There's a quieter version of me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Kyle, how That'll do you code? Smart. I'm gonna I'm gonna name a consumer. You code switch into it. Right. A, Jap- a Japanese man, brand new to Atlanta, and he wants to feel like real American. <clears throat> he just moved here. Now, actually, no. Now he Chinese, and he just moved here. <laughs> well, you know, sir. The thing about these American cars, they're they're really not like any automobile built anywhere else in the world. And that's because American roads are like nothing else anywhere else in the world. American parking. Our culture and our country is built around the motor vehicle. First ve- motor vehicle is the Ford Model T. And we live, but we, we bring that tradition on and we don't care how big it is. And frankly, how much fuel mileage it gets. I'd sell them like that. I'd beef them up about, about America and size. I'm like, do you know that Ford makes the largest SUV ever? Ever? We got one. Don't I was buy hoping you'd car. be like, I got a oh, huge excursion out there. <laughs> oh, hero. oh, you think I'm going to try to be Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I go put on my, my, put on my like, like round little glasses and <laughs> misidentify oh, the Chinese guy as Japanese and now yeah. you're his enemy. <laughs> He's like, I just moved from Beijing and you're like, oh, a small world. Oh, me, me too. too. I'm from Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from wherever you're from. <laughs> Are yeah, you so from you North do... Cheap Town too? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You, you, so you wouldn't you wouldn't mirror their accent back at them? Okay. No, I'm, I'm no, dropping this down for sales but I would, techniques. But I would fuck with them for sure. Like like I I felt like maybe I felt like it'd be more um, theatrical with a foreigner, and and they wouldn't realize I was being ridiculous, and and because like. So I'd be I'd be pretty boisterous. My arms would be moving, and I, I might jump around a little. Um, I'd, I'd 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 be raising my voice quite a bit, like getting them hyped up about the car. And there were like Eastern Europeans you talked to who like probably just thought that different stuff was cool. So if there was like a Serbian guy who came in, you could be like, oh, "Those guys don't come." I, I finally <laughs> need to show. Uh, I, I have someone to show the the purple interior 
Lexus too that's been sitting burning a hole in our pocket on the lot because this fucking Serbian guy will think it's neat. This Persian will think it's cool. Actually, include me in that. Purple. Woody will think it's cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not want a purple car. Yeah, I guess you you definitely just want to talk to people, or I felt like you wanted to talk to different people differently because they're going to expect something different. I think, or different yeah. things will work on different people. Of course, that's that's just not being bad at sales. If you're trying to sell everyone the same way, you probably suck. Because <clears throat> like it seemed like that's for black people, <laughs> I tried <laughs> with black people. It seemed like it was easy to make this car buying experience <clears throat> like a fucking party we're about to have. Like mm. like we're about like like let's get the fuck out of here so we go have some fun in this thing. Let's go somewhere and do a thing. Like let's. Hey, come before on, we let's... get down to the nitty gritty, who wants to see a magic trick? <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! This guy knows magic. So you wouldn't do that. You're a fucking <laughs> warlock. <laughs> a sorcerer. <laughs> you never, you didn't have a magic trick in your back pocket to be endearing. Uh, I used to. Um, I could card do this, so that, and the other. A story-based card trick. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, and this, that, and the other is really good for killing time. If because because you know we can sit there and I can make that trick go for a long time. I can keep rotating it and and keep, keep mm. it going for a long time and kill some time and also make you think that I am a wizard if you happen to be an African American because they do believe in magic readily, readily. They don't look into it a bit. It's the best part about Bucky. you do that thumb I wanna, thing. I want to believe in magic. <laughs> <laughs> you do the thumb oh, thing. <laughs> they didn't fall for the got you nose. They're like, my nose yeah. isn't white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't, don't a, try and take adults' noses. They like, hate it. <laughs> would, you pay, would that be a would that be racist? After that, I just clam up and then did you, the. If you did black thumb, if you did black thumb. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna steal a let's say you're gonna steal a small black child's nose and uh but and preemptively you you paint your whole thumb like chestnut brown and then you come up whoop and, and there it is and they're like uh uh-huh, wait wait did you did you paint your you, you, you are you wearing black thumb? And you're like, yeah, it's cool, right? It's cool, right? <laughs> That's really gonna be a Canadian prime minister. Yeah, I bet I bet they would bomb with five year olds. <laughs> Dude, they would hate if you did black thumb. Man, I would. I don't want anyone, point. any other adult, touching my face in public, and oh. I think that's a very normal impulse. Let me tell you, uh, John Jones was at this expo, and he's like okay. back behind a booth, um, pimping some product or whatever. And a guy comes up and starts talking shit, and reaches up and gets his beard, gives him a little beard flick, <laughs> and you could see John's eyes. Just John doesn't raise his voice or anything. He's just like, "It's okay, it's okay. No, no, no. Don't hold him back." Don't hold him back. You, he's good. He's good. Let him go. Let him go. Was this just a random a, guy who was trying it's to a fuck a big with man who's calling John out and talking shit? Oh, you know, another for, fighter. Like, no, just a human being who who is who likes slapping tigers in the face. I guess. Yeah. Then it was like John's not going to come over the counter and hurt you because he can't. But if you were to cross over into his counter, if you were to go over that table, he would hurt you so bad. Man, I can't wait for the next John Jones fight. I, I he's gonna fight Stipe, um, who for Taylor's benefit is like the big white champ who everybody thinks of as maybe one of the best, or certainly the best left because of you guys, Stipe Miocic. Yeah, yes, he's yeah. Gonna, so Stipe Fireman has from... the most title defenses at heavyweight ever. Heavyweight because everyone has dynamite in their hands. People don't seem to be able to win like three times in a row. It's mm-hmm. whatever, he but Stipe did, and. Uh, I, by the numbers, he's the best ever. Is he actually? I don't know. Kane. But um, okay. A lot of people say Kane. Some people say Fedor. Um, Kane smoke Fedor. I, I, of course, I've never seen Fedor in a fight that I couldn't say for. When I see him in in Japan, I'm like, who's he fighting? What they talk about before they fought? I don't know if I believe all this. This guy doesn't have a Wikipedia page. And now, when I see him fight in um. I saw him fight Chael. He's fought everyone. Like like the last um, um, Matt Mitrione, he fought him a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Like he just gets his ass whooped half the time, maybe three quarters of the time. They just rough that guy up left and right. So I, I have a hard. He's before my time as a fan. So so I didn't see him when he did anything impressive. And when I look back at the old videos, I don't know if they're real or not, or who who these who, who these fucks are. They're in a boxing ring. They're wearing he weird gloves. In Pride and, uh, in Japan, yeah. and it was notoriously corrupt. 
Uh, yeah. You know, they're, like their contract specified, we promise not to test you for drugs, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah. And uh, um, I, they say a lot of the fights were fixed. So, But, but anyway, John Jones <laughs> is going to fight that guy. And, and man, I love John Jones. I, he's, I love everything about him. I, I love uh, how awful he is. Mm-hmm. I love that he's clearly putting on like two or three fake faces at a time. He wears th- mm-hmm. he wears like three masks at once, and, <laughs> and 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 they're all like semi transparent. He's like he's got three fake guys. He's pretending to be all at the same fucking time, mm-hmm. and 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 I w- we know what he is, and that's what I like. I like the I like the piece of shit, John, the one who's like, yeah, I hit a pregnant woman. It's not like she died. Like, like, you know, I bet that's what he said in private. Like, I like I, the villain John Jones. If you Dude, can what he did do what Kyle O'Connor. does and get past, like, being upset over the fakeness and just yeah. appreciate it as him being. Like, if he was just straight up an asshole, an evil dick who, like, rammed pregnant women and I'm sorry, rammed pregnant women with their car, broke her arm. You know how hard you have to hit someone to break an arm in a modern car? Pretty hard. So he ran, he hits her hard enough to break her arm, runs from the scene, hit and run. Then he realizes, oh, shit, I've got my drug paraphernalia still in my car. Runs back, back to his car and escapes again. And it, But then he pretends to be this absolutely God-fearing, super wonderful person, great father, great husband. Uh, if you do pot, I'm going to rat you out because I can't have people doing bad things in this world. That's who he says he is. And if you get all upset and riled up over that, eh, you're, you're you know uh, falling for the mark. You're a mark. But if you appreciate, oh, I think it's funny that he's a piece of shit. And the fact that he claims he's not just doubles. It's two layers of shit. Then you can enjoy him. I like the fake religiousness, the religious tattoos, him giving thanks to God <laughs> when you know it's he's doing it with a he, he's doing it with a grin. And then he's just like, yeah, yeah. thanks to God. Too. Th- th- thanks to you, Lord. <laughs> 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 maybe maybe, maybe he kind of sold his soul to Satan. The guy he's fighting is genuinely a really nice guy. He's got like a great marriage, good kids. Yeah, he's a fireman. Guy. He doesn't need to. I got beats his wife. He just enjoys saving lives. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I got. I got beats his wife. I don't care. John Jones, be, yeah, he beats his. Look, wife she's too. still there. She has. She's clearly okay with it too. Who, yeah, I'm gonna ever, root for the nicer guy then. Uh, keep going. They've been Miocic. doing that. That hasn't worked for anyone for twenty fucking years. Twenty fucking years they've been rooting for the nice guy, and every time the How last old is John guy, Jones. He just won the heavyweight title. Um, he was the light heavyweight champion since he was like 19 or something like that. And he's yeah. 37 roughly. But he uh, now he's a heavyweight. They they set him up against Cyril Gaon, the, the guy who's supposed to be so slick, so fast, so elusive, this French big black guy. And John choked him, un- choked him out and made him tap in like 40 seconds. And the look on Gaon's face, they should be, there should be posters of that. Make that into a poster and I'll buy it. John's walking away going, shh. And you can see Cyril over his shoulder on his ass against the cage with a look of confused terror. It's it's like, what just happened to me? Wait, what do you mean it's all over? We just started. I never touched him. And he didn't. He never touched John. John walked over there, danced a little, and then grabbed him. And then Cyril was on his ass, and Sean put, put him in some choke that I couldn't even tell he was doing to him. And mm, he was tap, 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 crazy. and that was it. And it was like, what the fuck? That was supposed to be the Terminator. And then, of course, the next day, they're like, yeah, God's not actually that good. You know, he's not really that good. It's not a big deal that John walked in there and eliminated him in 45 seconds. It's no, John could have held that choke and killed that man right there in another 90 seconds, and he'd be dead on the floor. I think that's, that's how all the jokes That kind of though, right? lethality. Yes, it is. That's so not you, star, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, he walked in there, and he could have had that man dead on the floor in under two minutes with his bare hands. And that's not a civilian. That's not. That's the best they could come up with. That's the best they could come up with on the planet. Yes. Throw but even him. John Jones loses to the mighty gun. <laughs> the gun. The mighty he, gun. Yes. So he. So what's mm-hmm. interesting is that John Jones is like a well-rounded, lethal man. Uh, I'll call him. He's got the Belgian Malinois attack dog that he trains with, and he he does that John Wick style like three gun shooting. So you see him like like bang 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 with the rifle, dropping the rifle, going to the handgun and like quick draw and stuff. So like, I think oh, he's, he's good as at that close too. to he's as close to a superhero as I know that exists. Is he I like think a he has a wild team. cat. Too. There's a SEAL Team Six guy somewhere who you would absolutely want to send on a mission somewhere to get something done because John John's on. He don't know nothing about that. 
But if we're sending people into a room to fight to the death, there's nobody I can imagine who's more skilled in more areas that, that, than John Jones. And he's six foot four. And he's been doing it his whole life, you know? He's just a terrifying hey, that's not, human It's not being. good to be tall in a gunfight. A gunfight? Like, if he's in a gunfight with Keanu Reeves, and yeah, Keanu Reeves is target, six huh? feet tall or whatever, he's mm -hmm. going to have an easier time winging John Jones. Ah, uh, like so so you, you want to pick odd job for that kind of a scenario. You want yeah. to well you couldn't guy. pick odd job just like in 007, it's cheating. Well, <laughs> say what you want, it's my game system. That you want were nachos you that after fucking, this? I'll tell mom. That kid, did you do that shit? You All demanded right, Taylor, that you Mom, got... three nachos. Taylor doesn't want any. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, fruit the... salad for him. <laughs> no, that that would have been mom if, says so. If you were that kid. Damn, I would have not liked playing 007 all, Goldeneye with you because that was unfair. The the people the person who was actually before. really good always picked Jaws because mm. Jaws was taller than everyone else. And so if you could win as Jaws, it was a flex. <laughs> no, what I just described would be the scummiest thing ever. Um yeah, you don't play odd job, nobody played odd job. I didn't have a play around with my snacks experience. either. Because I didn't have I didn't <laughs> I didn't have a 64. My sister did, and she wouldn't let me play it. Like when she was away at another person's house or like hanging out, I would get her 64, hook it up real quick and play Paper Mario. And I'd get like halfway through the, you know, the campaign and she'd get home and fucking pull that fucking cartridge out, throw it in the drawer, wrap that Wait, cord around. Let me bit. save. Let me save. No, <laughs> no. Delete all my saves. Like, like my fucking 64. Put it back in her closet. Oh, my God. She wasn't playing Dude, that's, yeah, yeah. That is bullshit. My, that would not have flown with my parents. Like. We we were not allowed to just be like if I got an N sixty four for Christmas or something it was well established like this is not yours really like you can't oh, tell no. your brothers they can't use it like it's for everyone it so stays how, here I like my it, my brother had a job he's two years older than me so he was fourteen I was twelve call it <clears throat> and he had a job so he bought a Nintendo sixty four I had no job. So when he was out working, I played with his Nintendo 64, <laughs> like a piece of shit. I, what's the game with Link? Uh, you can't tell. Oh, Zelda. Zelda, yeah. I beat Zelda on his gaming station. Well, and he was mad. That. Yeah, there's nothing oh, wrong mad. with that. Yeah, well, he, he didn't like that I got the... I guess he felt like he was subsidizing my good time. Yeah, oh, I don't think I, that. I mean, it's not like you were stealing it from him. He couldn't have played at that time anyway. There was nothing to have been lost. The only reason you wouldn't want someone using a ton of your N64 was because those middle joysticks lost tension very quickly compared to other ones. And so if you recall, you'd go to a friend's house and they'd have four controllers on their N64. And obviously when you notice them like doing the quick walk, it's like, you know, oh, fuck, there's probably only a couple good controllers. And then they hand you one and then we're trying to play Mario or uh, Super Smash. And it's like, uh, there's no tensile strength to this. It's like, you can move it around as much as you want. Unless you really jam it to the side, you, you can't get your guy bands. to jump. You really do need some rubber bands. Yeah. yeah. I remember, man, N64 was so fun. I think I'm going to, I bet they're expensive now. No, like, not. is you it expensive? So you can get an, em an emulator. Uh, I, I got Super Mario's as a Chrome extension. <laughs> like those games are so <laughs> little that, that it's just on my, it's just stuck on my. Uh, well, I'd want to play it on the old N64 controller for fun, you know? Oh, Hmm. Well, you can get that. So you can buy you can buy these things, and um, it's the old controller, and it's like every game ever. You know those bootleg ones. Like you mm -hmm. don't need like the real system. But I bet an N sixty four you can get for cheap. There's USB okay. N sixty four controllers. He said that would be the way to go with an emulator because then you then you're like, eh, actually I want to play Zelda three. Nah, fuck it. Super Mario's four. No, fuck it. Super Mario's two. And you can just bounce around because those those games are kind of interchangeable. So all, Looking those, back, those platformers like those controllers were bad, real bad. Like they the really only worked for a child hand. Like yeah. it, a standard flat controller square. that comes on the Xbox now is fantastic. The D pad that sucked. Um, back in the day, I used to play this computer game, a PC game, Falcon Three. It was a jet game, and I bought a joystick called the Thrustmaster. And uh, <laughs> they're not as good as they are now. Nowadays, like a run of the mill joystick for, for aviation's better but jackie nicknamed me the Thrustmaster for a good decade after that <laughs> <laughs> Thrust. Thrust yeah Dude, I, were you I've so pr proud those. of yourself that first time where you're like sitting down with your Thrustmaster and you're like i'm a i'm a pilot 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, because I was a bad pilot. It was like, all right, we're going to have to turn off crashing. Like, I've never landed successfully in that game. I think Dude, that was I like old enough game system. Overrated skill. I think that's an one overrated of those skill. Yeah, I think, I think I think you could point me at the plane and I could get mm-hmm. in it and fly it. I, I think if, if it was like a regular plane, like I think I could just get in there, figure it out, and take off and fly. I think modern and... planes are way, especially like commercial planes, are way way easier than we're led on to fly. But like if you were hopping in a little, I don't know what a little plane, Cessnas. Cessna, sure. Yeah, if you were hopping Maybe. in that, like. <clears throat> That, that that would probably be pretty tough to just wing it. I think right? they said it took five, I think it was $5,000 to get your license. I don't remember how many hours they said, but they just kept going on about that book work and I didn't want to do it. But, but it, I kind of wish I had now. How much that, would, book that would be cool. It was hours. It was weeks. We Have you done the front work? of the plane? Have you done takeoffs and landings in a plane before, Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. I just need help with some of the flaps and stuff. Like, I feel like I need, there are, um, they'll be like, all right, when you approach, you want to go this fast with your flaps at this thing. And there's like repeatable Mm. sort of milestones. If I had some cheat cards, I think I could launch and land a plane. I've done it with someone talking me through it, but I would need. That's what I did as well. I did it with someone talking me through it both, both both times, obviously. Um, I got spooked on my landing. And, uh, I told the, the instructor, I was like, all right, you have the plane, you have the plane. Cause I. I didn't feel like I was doing it right. And he mm-hmm. said, no. <laughs> yeah. You can't say no. <laughs> like We're both going to die. I thought we had a deal. Like, little did you know, his controls don't even work. <laughs> I couldn't afford a real trainer. I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> Dude, we, we talked about this before. I remember like my grandma buying me a game shark at, and or at a uh, Toys R Us. And like, being a little nervous like leaving being like there's they don't want us to have this like <laughs> i was like i was like seven and so i didn't have a conception Man, of it. if those if the jacks was find out i have this they'll confiscate my system it was yeah because like at the time they had like you could get like uh pokemon red you could go to uh, like get whatever game store you wanted and they'd have a big magazine that was like pokemon red and blue and then you could open through that and it would have like a map of the the different levels and how oh this is how you these are all the turns in that cave you have to make your way through oh this is that tip this oh. is that tip and then it would like have ads in there where it was like with game shark you can do this with your pokemon you can add yeah. this and like obviously didn't have the wherewithal in my little mind at the time to realize like it's being advertised in a it's magazine that says nintendo over the top <laughs> but i thought like they wouldn't lie. I thought it would be like frowned you upon. Get free cable I, or something over there. Yeah, like basically. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a I had a game genie. I, I specifically remember that it's like a bald genie. I think with his arms crossed. Yeah, white guy yep. looks like Mister Clean, and he's just like giving you the fucking nod of fuck that game, however you want, dude. A thousand lives, have them. Um, and I'm you know as a six year old trying to beat Mario Brothers, I needed some help. I couldn't do it. Do the I way was the, the cheats away that people could. The way the cheats worked on Pokemon Red back in the day, it was like Pokemon Red and Blue, which came out in like 98. So I was seven. Perfect lineup for it. And it wasn't like modern cheating where like if you get caught, you get booted off or like it's a single player game. So like they're not going to kick you off for cheating in Skyrim or something. But if you fucked up a cheat on like Pokemon Blue or Pokemon Red, you know, there was this thing you could do where you could go to Vermilion City and talk to this guy. Uh, and it was he was an early guy, a, a bald man who you were supposed to talk to early game who you talked to. And he said, do you need to know how to catch a Pokemon? And then <laughs> if you said no, he'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. And then he would leave. <laughs> but if you said if he said yes, he'd be like, let's go teach you how to catch Pokemon. And then he would do that. And so you had to put, if I recall, whatever item you wanted to make infinite, which was always rare candies because that was a free level up. You put that in your seventh, I think it is. It was either, I think it was your seventh or your ninth inventory slot. And then you talked to that guy and then you flew directly from there to Cinnabar Island, which is where Blaine, the fire gym master was. And then you immediately walked over and you surfed up and down on the right side of Cinnabar Island. And instead of a Pokemon popping up, because usually it would pop up and be like, oh, a tentacool is here. Oh, uh, a Lapras, like some water Pokemon would show up. A big box like of glitches that looked like um, a QR code 
would show up on there and it would say missing no which is missing number but we didn't know as kids we just thought it was like a thing called missing no and while missing no there it is and so if you killed the missing no and it would be anywhere between level one and level like a thousand and like but it always died easy and so you killed that thing and then you checked your inventory and it was whatever you had in the seventh slot you had a hundred or two hundred of them something like that and so then you could just boost up your pokemon in ridiculous ways but it was and this was like one of the uh like schoolyard things that like you you tossed around as information if you ever caught a missing no if you threw a pokeball at it and you caught it it would often brick your entire game like it could never be fixed it was ruined it wouldn't start if you if you turned it on it would just go and say like game boy and then blink oh, out. No. and so every once in a while someone would be like they'd want to catch the missing no and people on the playground would be like don't catch the missing no you're gonna ruin your game and then they would and it would often ruin their games but yeah it was high high stakes cheating back then because <laughs> at the time when you're seven years old and your your pokemon red breaks what are you gonna do your parents aren't going to get you another one. You have no money. I, I just you have had to hope Super that Mario some Brothers idiot goes for a bad Tetris. trade. A Tetris. Yeah. Man, you were so close to being in the right age for for Pokemon. So yeah. just like not. if you were three years younger, you you would have been in the mix. Yeah, yeah that's fucking stupid. Color color hadn't happened yet. You oh I I remember feeling like a like a big boy showing up in school when I got <laughs> the yellow Game Boy Color. But they didn't actually have color. It's just like the whole game was red. Yeah. It was instead of black like and white, the whole game was red or the whole game was blue. So that was what they, they could meant have done color, color originally, apparently, but it would have taken twice as many batteries. It would have taken they could they could have done like Ooh. the OG Game Boy could have been color, but it would have required eight batteries instead of four, which is like a no go. Yeah, and those batteries already sucked. I remember being like panicked in road trips. Hours. Because I'd be in the back of the car and I'd be like looking at my Game Boy and they didn't have backlighting back in the day. And so you had to like plug this thing onto the top of it like a reading light. <laughs> and when you had the reading light on there, and by the way, it's a dog shit light. So it's like glaring off of the crappy yep. screen at you. It doesn't look good. But you're like just trying to play and it'd be like, oh, I, I don't I only have like two hours left of battery. I could maybe get two and a half if I turn the light off and you're just trying to squint at it in the back of a dark car. I just remember road trip i remember thinking my game boy was super lame when i saw the first sega handheld that to me was, never had that it was um you held it like this because it, it was like wide wider than it was tall and um i guess you know you had controls on either side with your thumbs obviously but it had mm -hmm. a big color screen it had a it had like a wide screen whereas the nintendo was like a tall screen kind of like a cell phone this yeah. was a wide screen with color and you could play sonic and it was like when I saw a kid playing fucking Sonic in art class and I'm over there making a goddamn ashtray or whatever the hell. I'm like, oh, my God, that exists. How much are they? They might have been three hundred dollars back then, which would have been crazy. Um, Damn. But I wanted one of those so bad. No, dad would Never not buy it. me video games. No, no, they would not buy me stuff like that because it. Man, I remember something much cooler than that in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is in your not head, it what was I'm picturing. Maybe the what it looked like after what uh, it looked like in buttons. years after that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it I I think the one I remember was well, I definitely remember it being better than that. Maybe that was a earlier model. You guys, I remember having when a when's the last um, time you were that excited about getting something? Uh probably a game that was coming out. Um okay. Sometimes when it's wipe day, if I've prepared for that, for rust or something, I can be pretty giddy about that. I can, you know, mm -hmm. I've got, ooh, I know what kind of call, I got my coffee set up for the morning. I know what I'm <laughs> going to be. I got my, I got my, I got my special pajama pants. I'm going to wear those when I game tomorrow. Like, like maybe, <laughs> That's good. Like, like that might happen. But um, probably when I got Toby, I was pretty excited to, to get oh, him, the, the yeah. fucking dog. That's a um, good one. Uh, the, the neighbor's kids are, are always leaning over the fence like, can we pet him? No, like, nah, he'll bite you. He'll bite you. No, he looks nice. And he's going, arr, arr, arr. I'm like, no, nah, he, he's going to bite you. Don't, don't come over here. Bite you. <laughs> Is he a biter? He would really bite him? I don't know. Oh, you just don't want kids in your yard. Yeah. I don't want fucking children to climb over my goddamn fence into my yard. It's like, no, get out of here. What are you doing? You can't come play with my dog. What? 
<laughs> I would absolutely to... let kids gr- play with my dog. I'm a grown I don't know. ass. I say I'm a grown that. ass man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, ma'am, your kids are. They'll be with me. Don't worry. I like. Don't worry. I'm over there. Meanwhile, I'm over there like in my pajamas, high. <laughs> my dogs are old now, so you don't walk dogs that old. But the idea of kids exercising my dogs when yeah. they need it, it sounds cool. Kyle, you're like I'm a felon, but the drug kind, <laughs> the, the weed kind, not the real drug kind. <laughs> well, sometimes the real, the real, drug, sometimes you know, the real drug. Hey, I don't judge. I don't judge. Yeah, I, my fish tank is coming next week. And I Another have one? been. Uh, the last I one was you were getting February. out of the fishing game. Did you? Oh, no, like no. You were down on it last time we talked about it. Oh, I think I complained about the algae, but that we, we resolved it mostly. I hope. And uh, so, look, I got this tank in February. It took us about a month to decide that we were kind of into this, and we ordered the new tank. This Stop company it. says if you custom order it, it's cheaper. The warranty's longer, but you have to wait four to six months. So I call him on the phone and I'm like, hey, four to six months is a long time. Is it really that long? And he's like, eh, it can be, but you know, a lot of times it's only three. What I heard is three, right? I heard three months, you got this thing, dude, you know, you'll be fine. It was seven. Yeah, we're in our <laughs> seventh month now and it comes next Mama week. Mamma mia. Yeah, dude, seven months is such a fucking long time. Oh, my cur- so my current tank. tank- <laughs> my current tank is 25 gallons, but a little bit smaller because the back of it is filled with like filtration and pumps and shit like that. The next one is not 25 gallons, but it's 150. And there's okay. a 60, there's a 60 gallon tank underneath it for filters and shit like that. So all 150 is devoted to like fish and display and whatever. And I can't wait. It's 710 pounds. I don't really have a plan for that. I can't lift that. I don't. It's they 710 guys pounds with it before you add in how many gallons of water? 150 at eight pounds per gallon. You're gonna uh, want a little more with salt water. You add water. So we're talking about. <laughs> 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 and, oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I don't know what. God kind damn it! Now it's 4,100 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's Kyle. You got to put a jack under the joist. It's yeah. 2,500 pounds. <laughs> it's really heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's like parking a car in there. Um, but I can't wait to get it. I I've been on edge. I I've checked the tracking number progress at least nine times today. Like it, and it hasn't changed. There's no updates at all. It just it's left for departure. departure so you're gonna have to hire movers, or they bring. They don't just send movers with it. I feel so like that I don't know. I want to say the actual glass tank, right? So the seven ten probably includes like a pallet or two, the um stand and things like that i want to say the tank tank itself is in the 400s and with that you're like ah maybe i get two friends you know like it's probably too much for just me and colin Mm -hmm. um it wouldn't be too much for like me and one of you but so i need to figure it out let me run this by you tangentially related would you have any interest in running a small fish farm a fishery if you will because you can operate them in a greenhouse, basically, with ve- and you go in there and there's like a water wheel that keeps everything going on this big circle. It's shaped like an L, a double L, obviously, because it's a square. But I've seen we had those at my school. You know, you could be who wants to work on the fish farm? No one. You cocksucker. Give me my <laughs> grade. But, but they had them out there and people would. I just did, had no interest in it. But we. I think we had catfish and when they grew to like the right eating size, fish fry and your chart and we fry them all up and we, we serve them with hush puppies and slaw and French Ooh. fries, which cost nothing by yeah. the way. And hmm. they would make, you know, $10 a plate and they would just have a line that went for miles. And it was just so much money to be made by the school that got went right back into all of our other programs. It was neat. And I just thought you, you're going bigger, and I feel like this this tank sounds like about as big as you'd want to go on an, an in the house tank. But if you yeah. really want to, you could go fishery very easily. <laughs> that could be cool. Yeah, they do that with the ornamental fish. Most of my fish are captive bred. They're nice because they tend to be disease free. They're accustomed to tank life. They show up at your door already eating pellets, as opposed to like wild caught bugs mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, and uh, um. And then, you know, if you're into the environment and stuff, I guess there's a little feel good that you didn't rob it from some coral reef. It was bred mm-hmm. for you in a tank. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. But more interesting than that, than a fish farm would be a coral farm. We're literally like, so the thing about a coral 
It's an animal, but pretend it's a plant for a second. You can just like break off a branch, stick it on a rock, and now you have two plants and then they grow and you know, you can just keep doing that. And they're really people make good money on coral farms. Like what are the requirements? You need a salt salt water tank with the correct media? Yeah, and there's some economies of scale. So there's benefits to being like, you know what? I'm going in this for like 70 grand to get started or something significant, 100 grand as opposed to just like doing it out of your own tank. Well, shit, you barely make enough money to cover your expenses, but the economies of scale make it make sense to farm in a bigger way. Probably like a real farm. Yeah. And uh um but I think I'm just going to keep it at the hobby level. Sure. Why not? You know? Yeah, it won't be fun anymore once you feel like there are deadlines <laughs> and things and you're like, damn it, I should have let my hobby stay a fun hobby instead of really? like because e- just emailing now someone describing... about why there are corals late. Because just now describing the catfish situation, it's like, huh, that would be kind of fun. Because it's like, it's basically a greenhouse with a gigantic tank and a few thousand fish in it and you just feed them and everything's automated. It's on See, that would be fun because you can eat it. Like, and that's like what, so much if, if everything comes crashing down and you got your own little fish hatchery fish farm, yeah, you're you're good as long as you don't <laughs> get sick of fish. I don't value the uh disaster recovery, I'm sorry, the disaster planning very much. I, I feel no. like a lot of times it's people cosplaying or wishing for apocalypses that aren't thriving in the actual environment we live in. Well, when the goons uh, big into that, there there's different different flavors of those guys. Mm. I've seen guys who think of it as like cosplay for real. They're like, look, I know, but let me have my fucking yeah. bulletproof vest. Yeah. Dude, let me do my cool. hobby. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's guys who are like, when it, all right, if that's your attitude, Kyle, then when the big ball drops, best not see you around the perimeter. That's all I'm saying. It's mm-hmm. like, oh shit. He means it for reals. And <laughs> you know, there's everything in between there. There, yeah. there are, and, and I don't know what would happen that would throw us into that. Um, that's so likely that we need to prepare for it. An you know EMP I mean? like, is the it's thing. It's like we're preparing. F- well, those don't like shut us down forever. It's, it, you know, it's, it's solar just, flare, whatever that thing is that fucks everything up even, for a long time. Even that it just, it, it messes we up stuff back, that's probably. here right now. We, we, <clears throat> if anything, the economy improves because of all the shit that needs to be made and all the people we need. Like when the forest burns down and it comes back so green and perfect. Yeah, or like when a war happens and everybody's got to go build a bunch of shit, and, mm. and now we've got shit, to, and you know, it, it, disasters can be good for the for for good economic events. Um, I don't think anything's shutting us down so that we need to have a bunker with guns and food and shit like that. I really mm-hmm. don't. It, the odds of that are just super super low. The variety of, of the guy that I fuss at in particular is the one who's not doing that well, has no college account for his kids or whatever, but he has tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand in his bunker and backup food and his armaments and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, oh, you should have gone to college instead. You've put, you put enough money into dehydrated food to fund an education that could have actually like paid dividends in your life. Yeah. yeah. It's like you you won't like give your daughter your old civic to teach her responsibility, but you have 30 cows <laughs> in a residential area like that you're bothering everyone with like that. that would be I can awesome. see that. That's just shitty. Yeah, Actually, I, I just don't mean those would be hilarious. Yeah, that wouldn't bother me. I mean, in, in I, I'd be like, I know those cows. Let me pet them. Yeah, I can't <laughs> hide your cows. Steal cows. A few cows don't bother anything. It's when you got a dairy fa- operation where where your feet are a feedlot, where they're not eating the grass anyway because there is no grass. They're just standing in muck and mud, and you're feeding them grain, and they're just shitting there all day. That's a dreadful like those, thing. Those those pig kafos, I think they're called. Right. I don't know what a kafos is. KFO, C A F O, isn't it a an acronym for like those disgusting, like pig and uh, Zach, cow farms? The word hog, Kfo? the the phrase hog parlor comes to mind. I think uh, that's the colorful. <laughs> that's that well, I was trying. I, I was trying. <laughs> to get, you know, Google hog parlor because that's in my brain. It it exists in there. Can, concentrated know. animal feeding operations. That's what it is. Oh, okay. That's yeah. where they're like. That's the last stage before slaughter. That's when they they've brought those animals there from. They've been purchased from every, anywhere and everywhere, or bread or whatever, and now they're getting fattened up for the slaughter. Oh, and you know why I knew that? Uh, I, I th- many years ago, I probably mentioned this on the show. One of my first classes I took in college was food science. In hmm. like my freshman year, it was like some like 
bullshit like class that fulfill the requirement. Sponsored by Monsanto. The, the, yeah, literally, <laughs> yes. And this guy, because Monsanto is a Missouri like tier, yep. so it was. And this this teacher always wore a bolo tie. He was very friendly, very fun and nice. And me and the other buddies I had made in my dorm chose this class when we were like doing our little schedules early on because it was basically like, hey, Taylor, you know, let's take a class together. We're all going to do this. Food science. How hard could that be? That sounds ridiculous. Let's all do food science and it fulfills whatever this is. And so we all sounds selected food science. Yes, it did. And we went in and I remember the first day he was like being all friendly at big lecture hall. So there's like probably five, 600 people in the class and he's up there talking and he's like giving us an example. He's like, so an example of something that might be on a test would be like, which of the following is a fruit? Like something like that was an example he All gave, right. but he didn't really give it in that much of a jokey way. And so then me and a bunch of my buddies were like, fuck this. Like, I'm not going to go to this very often. Like, why would I bother? And so I, I more than my buddies, like actually would still go and pop into the class. And the first test like I remember studying for all I did was, just, was read through all the chapters we had and was like, all right, well, what's he going to fucking ask me? Like what, what's going to be that hard. And we get in there and like, I've never seen so many people also looking up from their test, like making eye contact with other students with like panic because mm -hmm. like question one was like, which subset of bovine hemoglobin is found in blank or something or what is the mechanism by which musculature is reinforced in this type of animal? Like that kind of shit. And like, I think I got like a 61% on the test, which was actually higher than the yeah. average. I think the Ooh. average in the class was like a 40 or something like that. Like not even a low F, Did like a it? high, uh, he curved it. And, but he like, he had some, I think he had like some internal limit on the curve. And so like, I only got boosted up to like a B minus, even though like it, mm. it wasn't that bad or it was that bad. And that was just like, it set me up to think that every class, my first couple of years of college was going to be like that. And it was, I was going to be bamboozled. Gotcha. And so if anything, like it made me much better going forward. Cause I, I got pretty good grades overall, but that was a, I remember like, that was the first college test that I took. <laughs> and my head was like, you're too dumb for this. Like you, you, you didn't study. You're not, not, you're too dumb really. But in that moment, I'm like, you was, fucking retard, you moron, you idiot. You don't know this. Everybody I, else I'm does. The same lesson. And, and I have a, a takeaway. I don't know if it'll help you. See, things are different now. You go on the internet and find yeah. out if the teacher is good, if the course is hard, et cetera. Back in the day, this advice would have helped. How hard a course is isn't based on how hard you think it is or how stupid the subject is. It's based on how much you knew before the course started. If, if you take American history, you can probably get a C without trying. Right. And if you try, you get an A or a B. Those are the range because you've yeah. learned American history every year since fifth grade or fifth, five years old, maybe. And, yeah. and you're fine. I took music appreciation and I thought, Oh, what could be easier than music appreciation? I just have to convince this teacher that I appreciate music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to kill this. <laughs> then we start like he puts some dots on the chalkboard and he's like, what song is this? And in my heart, I'm like, what? That's not even music. That's writing. That's it. Yeah. That, you know, those are just dots. <laughs> and it, what you might think I'm talking about, like we all know that is it the scale, you know, where you, the, you, there's the yeah, horizontal yeah. lines. You put, no, no, no. There were no horizontal lines or it was some different notation that I don't understand. And then someone else from class is like, that looks like the uh, national anthem. He's like, I can tell because it goes up and down so much. And that song is known for that. And I was like, like, Oh my God, you're like one of him and I'm not either of those. Yes. <laughs> and then, and then I got fucked. I, I like, you had the, you could hear music and ask what time period it was from. Like if I played some old song and said like, is this medieval or Baroque? Most people would be like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Like, so I got fucked in that course. I had to try really hard. I think I got a C or something. I didn't get good grades. That sucks. Yeah. The difficulty of a course is based on how much you know before it started, not yeah. how hard the course is. And it can depend, especially in college, on like whether you have a shithead professor who 
it like really wants to believe their job is more important than it is. Like I remember there was this lady who ended up getting fired uh, or it's a university. She probably didn't get fired. She probably got put in a cushy administrative position and she used to teach macroeconomics and it's not, I'm no genius, but it wasn't like hard material. It was hard because she was Korean and she, you could mm. not understand, not like, not even doing my kind of joke, like literally like she you could not understand what she was saying. Like, I remember being in the class and being like, today's the day you you learn and like <laughs> trying, trying to focus on it. And like by the time I had parsed what she said in the sentence through context clues from subsequent sentences, I was now two paragraphs back in what she was saying. And it wasn't just me. Everyone in the class felt this way because all the grades were terrible. Uh, I took that class. With her, I took macro econ with her my freshman year, and I think I probably got like a, a low A after I learned like, oh, I just have to teach myself macroeconomics mm -hmm. from the book. And then senior year, I had that same uh, Korean lady teaching me, and it was me, and I was just doing it as like a fulfillment of something. And it was I was like the only senior in the class. Everybody else was a freshman. And I remember like looking around at people and being like, you guys have no idea how terrible of a teacher this Korean lady is and how hard these tests are. And I, I ruined the curve for that class. I really? ruined it. Yeah, because I didn't go to the class at all, because at that point I realized like once I showed up the first time, it was like uh, she said in broken English that we weren't going to be taking attendance, but it's up to you to be ready for the test. And so I just left. Because I'm like, hmm. I'm, I just I have to teach myself this anyway, because she is unintelligible in her speech. And I would go in like just from teaching myself. And this is not it's not because I'm smart. It's because it was easy material and like get a 95 on the test, 96 on the test. And everybody else was getting like 65, like 64, 70 at the highest. They're wasting their time, wasting their time listening to this Korean woman garble up there not making any sense and or probably making plenty of sense but you can't understand what she's saying there was so Sometimes much time in class that was fucking useless my economics professor i i thought he was pretty good but his grading was way too hard he had this thing like a predefined number of a's b's and c's d's and f's that he wanted to give out and then the class just fit into that what? curve yeah, so he's like, A should be rare. Like, two of you will get them. I got one. And uh, and I wasn't even a good student. I just really was invested and, in, in, mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted to be good at this topic. He's, he's and, uh, exploring, like, like, it doesn't matter what you do. There's there's only one gold medal here, Woody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not far from that. <laughs> Holy so, so he was bad. At Drexel, though, we had a similar situation to you with teachers that didn't speak the language very well. Mm -hmm. And early in my time at Drexel, they added like communication skills to the teacher reviews and just wholesale fired all Fuck of these yeah. teachers. Yeah, they actually had really good credentials, like their academic credentials. They, they were good at passing the tests, but they weren't mm -hmm. good at teaching. And I think Drexel was right. Look, communication skills are important for a teacher. You have to measure that. It can't just be the papers they wrote and the degrees they have. Yeah. Of course not. They have to teach. Your understanding yes. of the... Uh, I don't care if you fail, if you can't take the test because you're dyslexic, for example. If you're a good teacher, who cares if you can take the goddamn test? It's about yeah, I'm teaching. With you. And so yeah. was Drexel. So I, I heard it and I was like, I give this thumbs up. I like their fucking their Sergeant Matumbo up there teaching me economics. And I'm over there just squinting at him the whole time. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would have killed for a Matumbo. <laughs> over over this Korean lady who sounded like she had just gotten every single class. It seemed like someone had she, she had just arrived in the United States for the first time and everyone and she, they had like black bagged her, put her in a van from the airport mm. and then like pulled the bag off in front of us and was like, teach econ. Like, that's what it felt like. Oh, no, bro. there was no ability to under. like. And when you went to the econ building, it was all Koreans. And so, like, they didn't, I don't, th they were like speaking in Korean to each other. Like, the, the, the professors, teachers the, the teachers. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like, a lot of the TAs were Korean. And so it was like, this is, you guys are setting up a lot of blocks, like a lot of blockades here that are making <laughs> well, probably it probably really most difficult. of the students in Missouri were Korean. No. Oh, just ones of percent. No, not even that. <laughs> not even that. <laughs> I remember when I met my first Asian person, he was a Korean. It was when a Korean family yeah. moved to our corner of Georgia. It was high school. That was the first Asian I'd ever met. <laughs> you never oh, had an Asian in high school? Me. No, where would I meet him? I don't know. I guess there was an Asian guy in my school I knew from 
a much younger age. In New Jersey, oh, we had actually. everything. Like, oh wait, yeah, yeah, a huge percentage of like Italians, Irish, Jewish, Asian, black. I don't know what any of those things look like except for movies and like my experiences later in life. Like, like I had no hmm. concept of what a Jew was. I, I, like you had no concept person? of what a Jew no, was. No, I really didn't. Not not truly. Like I knew about the Holocaust. We had a whole book in, 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 on the shelf called like "And God Cried," and it's this fucking whole all, horrific read about the Holocaust with pictures. Uh, you know the b- piles of bodies in there and shit. And uh, and but you know I knew Jesus. Uh, my grandmother had the little magnet on her refrigerator. My my savior is a Jew- Jewish carpenter, something like that. So I knew that Jesus was a Jew. But I didn't know what a Jew was. Like, like, like I didn't know Jerry Seinfeld was a Jew. I had no fucking idea. I had no. My next door neighbor that... was Jewish, and uh, it made me like. At first, I was like, Hanukkah sounds better than Christmas. I mean, you guys have like eight days of gift giving. This is the mm-hmm. bomb. And then he's like, No, no, no. It's day three. I got this, and it looked like something that you'd put twenty five cents in and get the toy out and the little capsule and the bubble gum machine. Like that was your fucking present for day three of Hanukkah. Never mind. Yeah. You can keep that bullshit. Yeah, never mind. This is a trash holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. I'm glad that we have the good one. They're like Hanukkah is actually nothing. We just celebrate it because Christians have Christmas. Yeah. Well, which makes sense. We have everybody the, else is celebrating. You, you want to do your. What own makes thing. sense is that they've had a holiday that they've kept traditional for probably five thousand years. And we have this bastardized, corporatized slurry of traditions mashed together, right? Like we we, we we're still figuring out what Christmas is. Like we, <laughs> I think Christmas was probably Christmas was probably much better defined prior to like the early 1900s when it was less about gift giving. Like it was as an adult. These holidays are not about gift giving anymore. The purpose of holidays is to have a cheat day. That's it. That's it. I want I want pie. I want, I want a turkey. That's what Christmas is for. You That's can really what all yeah. the time. Not like I want it. Not deep gravy. fried turkey. Not, want, yeah. I don't put gravy? salt on things because I'm always like if I don't have high blood pressure, I'm like bumping up against it. Like I have to uh-huh. work all the time to have my blood pressure in the healthy range. But I, I I don't work on Christmas. Do you take any blood pressure medications? Yeah. No. I mean, shit. You could have turkey. You could, you could have all sorts of things with a little pill. I, it, to me, it's a slippery slope. Like you, you do it with diet, you get other benefits along the way. But if you do it with a pill, then I, I'm out of my depth. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't half of them fuck with your dick. That's very important to me. Yeah. But uh, you take Cialis yeah. constantly, like like. My, my, I mean, so then you just let those pills battle. <laughs> <You're> playing, <laughs> right? That's what happens. Yeah, yeah, they battle it out in there, and the Cialis always wins. Huh? I this just I isn't the route works. I want to take. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Would you, you do it? I'm pills. actually seriously, Kyle. If you had high blood pressure chronically, yeah, would you take a high blood pressure pill, like couple it with the Cialis, and like just live that life? Yeah, why not? Um, Cialis is already good for your blood pressure. Um, it, it, it's it's the reason that I take the blue chew regularly. I just use it as my prescribed, um, um, you know, blood pressure medicine. But um, yeah, I mean, when I'm going hard, if when I was eating two pounds of beef a day, mm-hmm. there's no way to salt two pounds of beef, let alone the veggies and everything else and rice that goes with it appropriately and not have high blood pressure while you're on mm-hmm. steroids. Like it's you're just going to get up there. So mm. I there was a point where I was barely using any salt and I was using all those salt substitutes. It sucks. It fucking sucks. So yeah, they're not I, nearly as good go as salt. A, no, no. I, and, I mean, your know, taste is subjective. Ish. Like, you know, as you know, like to some people, this tastes like nothing. To other people, it tastes like soap mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Those salt substitutes to me are so much worse than no salt. They're Damn. just atrocious to Sorry. me. I hate them. I like them. Oh, lemon juice I can, I did. for rice. Like I do lemon juice instead of salt, okay. and the, and that mm-hmm. like lemon or lime or something like That's that. Do smart. like a fiesta thing, and and some cilantro to like put put flavor in there. But two, you cannot eat two pounds of fucking beef without some salt. It's just oh, <laughs> it's just, mm-hmm. oh every Were you putting my, like that uh that like half <laughs> potassium salt, half regular yeah. shit on there? Yeah, like you know, and and the way that I do those big meals is. I'm not going to have like, okay, my side is here and my, my, my entree is here. And like, I'm not going to dress a plate. Everything's going to end up in a bowl. 
that I'm going to eat, a, you know, with a, the biggest spoon I own over the yeah. sink. Like, like these aren't, <laughs> this, these aren't over sit down and sink. enjoy. Yeah. I was like, Cause I'm eating, you don't eat two pounds at a time, right? You got to eat five or six or eight meals a day to get two pounds of meat in you and not vomit. At least if you've got like a normal human stomach, I, I, mm. I see that. I think that's the hardest part of those, of that bodybuilding lifestyle. And I think bet, I've seen like pro, pro bodybuilders talk about that is just getting that food in you. There's the one yeah. guy, have you seen who does the chicken shakes? Oh, he's blending chicken. He purees mm -hmm. chicken breast and he drinks it. And when you see him do it, you're disgusted, of course, but you also realize, my God, you just got a lot of chicken down fast. That does work because he I don't remember how big the shake was, but dude, it was not one chicken breast. It was more like eight. And it was like it was so much liquid. And he's just like glug, 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 glug. Just put that's it like down. a fear factor kind of challenge. That sounds it's, disgusting. I was drinking eggs at one point because I was so disgusted. By oh, that's them. not that's not bad. Like I was so disgusted by the scrambled eggs because I was eating them in so much quantity that like the texture of them when like the fork would go into them was like gross to me. Mm. And and like I if I burped in it and it and it like tasted like egg, I'd almost vomit up my whole breakfast. And I was like, fuck Ooh. this, we're not eating cooked eggs anymore. And I would just start I started drinking the eggs. And that Speaking was so much of, better uh, to drink them. Really? Like, of fear factor challenges style stuff. A, like what do you think you would do? Like could I anytime I see a show like that and I see people having to eat bugs, yeah, I have I can't do it. I have a bad gag reflex. Like yeah, I, can't I do that. like as like I know that once I have the bugs in my mouth, even if it doesn't taste that bad, I'm gonna be like, these are bugs. There are bug guts they, all over it, your mouth. And I I'm gonna need gag. Them to give and then me, the gag um, is gonna make me gag more. So I could do it if they gave me anything I wanted as a chaser. Cause I think oh, if your chaser do. If your chaser was something like water's no good because then I keep all the texture of the bug. But if I had something that was like a like a slushy or a frozen drink of some kind that has like it's like thick and that can kind of mask all the mush that I'm eating. But no, I, I know for a fact that I would bitch out, pussy out, whatever you want to say, vomit out. I can't eat cockroaches. I can't eat maggots. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. I made a pot roast the other day. And I forgot to like clean out the slow cooker and like five days went by and I walked past it and I was like, Ugh, oh, God, no. And because like it all like came together yeah. and like I knew what had and I couldn't deal with it. I just threw the whole thing away. You How much is the whole slow, slow cooker? cooker away? I don't know. I, but, but, you know, the inside part. It's over a hundred dollars, right? No, no, they're nah, not that much. No, nah, I could probably oh, get okay. the new a new little Walmart part get one for, for like, 30 bucks. Yeah, but I was just, I, I can't deal with that. I took a trash bag and I put it over it. And then I picked the whole thing up and I sat it down at the bottom of my dumpster and I closed it and walked away because I was so, I, like, I don't want to throw up over the slow cooker. I got to, I have two slow cookers. Well, I did. <laughs> now you have one slow cooker. <laughs> now I got so one. So you, you also wouldn't do well with eating challenges. I, uh, I can't do it. It's just every time I see like on Survivor or something, or I mean, eating challenges are in fucking every reality show, I'm like, damn. Like, I think this is where I would get eliminated again. Yeah, right I'd away. be embarrassed, too, because everybody next to me would be at least getting, like, a couple scorpions down, and Have I'd be still, like, halfway through the makes first people... scorpion. I've seen a guy on TikTok, and he runs it. I guess it's popular enough that people will approach him on the street, and they know him, and they know the game. Like, so he just does bug eating for money on the streets, and it is Is he awful. Chinese? And it, I don't remember, but, okay. but, but it's in America. Like, like he, and it, he's not eating the bugs. You are like, you're approaching like, all right, you oh. want $5? I got a cockroach, right? I got a worm right here. You eat the worm. All right. They eat the worm. Here's your $5. Now, do you want to push that $5? Make it 20 for a cockroach? And it's like, no, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I do. And you're like, they're eating the no. cockroach. How'd you get in my house? <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's playing it like a, like a street game out there. At, so there's no way that I can go on Fear Factor. Even for, for $50,000, I can't eat those cave spiders. That's the worst bug I ever saw, by the way. Do you remember yeah. the cave, cave spiders? Spider. Zach, <laughs> show yeah, me the Fear cave, cave spiders. spiders. <laughs> from the Fear problem Factor. is the volume. If they were like, would he eat a cockroach? I could muscle through it. I could get it done. Even if it was alive, I can kill it with my mouth and get it down. I, I think I'm done. But oftentimes it'd be like, drink this half-gallon jar of bull semen. Yeah. And it's like, I, I can lick it, but to guzzle that much is a lot. 
That's a they ate these. They ate multiple of these, and it was. I alive? can't remember if it was a man or a woman, but they were bleeding. Their mouth was bleeding. And they're alive while they're eating them. Yeah, they're, they're alive. Dead? Yeah, you have to reach in and grab them. And again, like like the I don't know something happened, and the person's lips were bleeding from the the spot. Yeah, something fucking happened. Look at this thing. Every yeah, bit of yeah. this says, "Don't eat me." <laughs> it's uh, it's hard for me to look at, frankly. And when you, they're very big. Like, don't imagine that this thing is the size of your pinky nail. It's a big spider that's probably a couple inches across, and they they're munching them down. Multiple of them on Fear Factor. That was the Jesus. worst bug eating thing I ever saw on there. Obviously, drinking the horse cum and the horse piss was the worst like challenge of anything going in you because that's just. The piss is not as bad. I, I would, I would I way drink rather piss. drink piss than come from a yeah. the hot come from a horse cock. Yeah, I would prefer the piss over the spider, even. But the cum, what like temperature, do you want your cum, Taylor? I mean, Frozen, I don't like want custard. it to be is it like, like a softy or a smoothie. Maybe it is better fresh. I don't know. Like, <laughs> what do you want? To you don't want to have to chew. You know, when no, you eat a little pudding don't. and you give it a little chew just to kind of. Yeah, it's like in it's like in the fucking jackass where Chris Pontius is like about to drink it and he's like, "This gets me out of something I don't want to do, right? This gets me out of it." Okay, and then he just yeah, does that. yeah, and he drank like, that. Ugh. But that girl on Fear Factor, it was like two sexy twins or something. Like the cast on that show was great. They're like, "All right," and they were, I memory's weird. I remember beer steins. I remember them mm -hmm. having beer steins of piss. I don't remember what the cum was in, but I remember them drinking like a, a pint of piss, at least a pint of piss. It was so much piss. Mm. I mean, That's the volume is no joke. You, you ever pee on a lady, Taylor? Uh, no, no. I would if it was requested. I'm just, you know, it doesn't do it yeah. for me. Nice, you know, it, Zach. That, that, that's impressive. I, I, I can, can I see that again? I need I need to see that again. I didn't I didn't get a good enough look. Let's see. Let's let's pull that up again and see those if... young ladies imbibing a bit of. Yeah, I wonder how they chose which oh. one was going to get the piss. Look how tall that glass of cum is. <laughs> That's so much cum, dude. The piss girl. That has dude to was feel on like lock she, and load. She has to feel like she made out like a bandit. The piss girl. Logan. Yeah. Logan on the left. He's just like God, you got his the fucking piss wall. Girl I got the donkey like there. <laughs> the donkey's, the donkey's there. right there. Was it hot off the tap? Uh, definitely not. I I love that they picked. This was the twins episode. Clearly, oh uh, man, Ugh. wild ass show. I, I think they tried to bring it back a couple years ago, and and it didn't work out or something. If Rogan came back and did the show, obviously he wouldn't. But man, that'd be cool, right? Like I, I would. How much would it cost? That would to be have cool. Rogan do it. Would he do it for a million dollars an episode? Four if he did it, I bet it would be his own thing. Yeah, he should produce it himself. That way, he's comfortable. Because I remember him being upset with the course come. He was like, "You can't do this. Don't do that to him." And also the bull riding. Those were the two things that he he was like, "Come on, you can't put these people on bulls." And they're <laughs> like, "Ah, oh, don't worry. It's a it's a stunt bull." And they're like, "Does he know that?" He's just a yeah. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bull doesn't know it's a stunt bull. It's still a bull. Like it's it'll just, fuck you up. He doesn't know he's got like fucking <laughs> paperwork. Like he's just yeah. I like animal. it. Remember the guy who was violent? There was one um, guy. Yeah, he had like he yeah. Had curly His blonde wife hair. was the real violent one. Yeah, and um. I don't know this. Guy. I get so if I recall correctly, his wife. There were it was like maybe a couple's episode, and his wife was kind of aggressive towards another couple, and then, uh, dude, like the wife started the fight. Dude kind of continued it from there, and Joe steps in, and he's not like de-escalating too much. He's like, hey, you need to stop. You can't do this. You can't put your hands on anybody. And uh, he's like, just because you put your hands on your wife doesn't mean you can put it on these other people over here. And it was like a dig, like you're beating your wife. I, I, I don't remember it as beating, but the two of them were like passionate. She was, they were, they punched each other like in the arm hard. Like they would rough each other up. And the wife had hit an, op an opponent, like punched him in the body hard because he was really good at manipulating and teasing her. And they were she trolls. hits him. And he's like, the fuck you hit me and rogan was not having it it was good yeah and rogan eventually put the guy in a standing guillotine joke if i recall correctly <laughs> uh, in his like efforts to sort of take control of the situation yes, 
It was yeah. lopsided. Joe was not much taller, but he was way stronger and obviously decade of training. Yeah, Joe's doing. like uh, five, pro probably five, five, maybe, but he's 200 pounds. He's over 200 pounds. Five, five? I thought he was taller than that. I think it says five, eight on the internet and people like stand him next to other people that are five, eight and he's a good bit shorter. So uh, hard to say. I, I would say that with shoes on, he's probably five, six, five, seven. He's a, he's a real short guy. But but he's like two hundred fucking pounds. He he really is as close to a a dwarf as like like a like a like not a a little person, but a like Gimli like a yeah. dwarf from lore. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'd be he's, he's built for mining, built for underground <laughs> labor. That's what he's very dangerous in short doing. distances. He is. I, I wouldn't <laughs> fuck with Joe Rogan over short or long distances. That guy. You know, all I know about him is it seems like he podcasts and then like does hill Trains. sprints and wrestles with people have you seen his jujitsu coach his hand Do you know about this eddie brought so his hand uh-uh it's a different guy so oh. so uh rogan's jits coach has this genetic uh deformity in one of his hands where he doesn't have any fingers just a thumb but he's able to like sneak it in under your chin so well that you can't stop it <laughs> so it's like it's really an advantage when we're <laughs> in jujitsu because he just sneaks it in there and you can't keep it out because he doesn't have any fucking fingers. And they showed a picture of it. And sure enough, it's like these little nub fingers down here and then just a thumb. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Look at that thing. It looks like he's got a little pinky over there as well. Maybe something on the other nub. side. It's just a little protrusion. He should get that ground off. So he can't he even punch ground. then. Or maybe his punch. He can't hurt. exclusively punch. You don't want him to hit you with that thing. You don't need a hand at all to punch, Taylor. You can do it with a wrist. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, you just and it's a smaller point of contact, more pressure. Mm. Damn. Yeah, I wouldn't want to roll with Joe. Actually, no you know, one. I bet he wouldn't it be mean on about his it. Attitude. I bet he'd be nice yeah, about exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. I bet I bet Joe Rogan is capable of rolling politely. They're not like Jocko. <laughs> Fucking I is he known that. for rolling? He you know, broke a guy's windpipe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a the guy, douchebag. Like, here's the situation. If I roll with Jocko, I expect him to care for me in the same way that if I rolled with a nine-year-old, it would be my responsibility to make sure that no one leaves this wounded, right? Yeah. I, I, I might win, but I'm not going to hurt the kid. I'm the kid with Jocko. But Jocko doesn't feel like that. Jocko is like, you're just a piece of meat that he's there to fuck up and get better at fucking things up. And yeah, he broke a guy's trachea or something. It was, it was bad. That is. So and when shitty. Jocko retold the story, there wasn't any like regret or empathy in it. It was just like, you know, it's dangerous to roll with people. He should have known. And even Joe Rogan was like, yeah, don't roll with Jocko. That's a mistake. And yeah. Fucked up. That doesn't come off as like a oh, don't roll with that guy. He's like Ruth. He's dangerous. He's so good. It comes off as like, like, like what you'd say about a stupid person. Like, don't roll with that guy. He's beyond doesn't dumb. He's he doesn't know what he's doing. It's like it's literally like if I'm like, hey Kyle, you want to come and do a learn to skate with me? Here's a stick. Here's a little stick and puck. I can teach you how to pass. Teach you how to Blind skate. Me. <laughs> and then I just like Kyle's facing the board. Kyle's standing four feet from the boards, the most dangerous place to stand. <laughs> yes. He he doesn't know how dangerous it is to stand there because he's been on the ice for three seconds. And then I hit him from behind to be like, yeah, welcome to hockey. And he loses all his teeth because he hits his face right on That's that corner stanchion. Like. If in that case, you wouldn't go like, oh, yeah, dude, don't go to stick and puck with Taylor. He's so good. It'd be like, <laughs> oh, don't, don't go with Taylor. He's a cruel piece of shit who gets off on hurting people. Oh, perfect phrasing. I love that. That was my takeaway from Jocko. And if he was like, look, I've rolled with people. I don't think I've ever hurt anyone. But people get hurt. Mm -hmm. And... You know, if that happens, like, like ah, yeah, this one got away from me. I was going for this, but it turned into that. Um, but he was just like, yeah, he messed with the bully, get the horns. And that solidified what he's kind of a piece of shit on the mat. Yeah, John Jones wouldn't do that. I would. Yeah, I bet John Jones wouldn't. If if uh, if I was rolling with John Jones I, and I was like, Mr. Jones, I'm brand new. Will you teach me the ropes? I doubt yeah, he breaks my I, I doubt he breaks my fingers and stuff. Let me use he would, first of all, he quickly code switched to his white people voice. 
and he'd, he'd put his <laughs> collar down and button up one button, and, and you guys would have a great time together. He, you go shoot, you could play a little golf. What MMA you know, magic? The what game? current yeah. UFC fighters do you think would hurt you if you were to do a fun role? Oh, Honor, well, maybe? definitely Diego the Nightmare Sanchez because I called him a homosexual. To <laughs> okay, and, and a lot of times. He heard it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you guys were, were, you know, you do what you do, and you send him the, the clip of me calling yeah. him homosexual, and he didn't care for that. <laughs> he didn't like it a bit. Um, that's, that's the only thing I know about Diego Sanchez is that he's that gay guy. Kyle he doesn't, doesn't like me. <laughs> yeah, he's that gay guy. <laughs> I know a little better than you guys. I know that his asshole's not that tight anymore. Yeah, yeah, that Fabio guy. Uh, got hold of, uh, Fabio. Um, so, so I hope he doesn't. That one you. for sure. That one for sure. Because he's also, you know, CTE case and unstable ish. Mm. Although I, I think he's doing better these days. Um, man, Mike Perry uh, Ooh, seems like a guy one. that I'm just, you know, I don't know that he's what I, what, I'm just thinking Mike Perry is one of the most violent men in the world right now. He's the bare knuckle fucking guy. Uh, it's, it's fun to watch him roll. I've, I've watched a couple of his fights recently. You know, he knocked Luke, Luke Rockhold's teeth out. Did he? No. In his he last fight, he, Luke quit. Look, all right. So here's the thing about bare knuckle fighting, Taylor. Some people right. from various other sports like the UFC have jumped over there because it's more their jam because they are they got more dog in them or maybe they got their more hands than kickboxer or whatever. Mike Perry is that guy who I think he found out he's like 2% black, so now he uses the end bomb freely. He's also, <laughs> he's okay. also not I'm a in. joke. He's also the guy, there's a great clip of him and he's he's gotten in a disturbance at a restaurant and he is leaving. But what he's saying, and he's being loud about it, is I'm not leaving the parking lot. I'm st- if you call the cops, then I'm not going anywhere because when I'll get here, you'll lie on me, and that'll be the record. I'm staying. And this guy kind of gets in his face and starts mocking him and like because because Mike is being loud and boisterous, and the guy kind of matches sort of his tone or whatever. He mocks him to his face. Mm-hmm. A chubby older man, and Mike is like, I'll knock you the fuck out, old man. And the guy like, maybe does something like this into Mike's face aggressively. And Mike Perry, like as fast as Bruce Lee ever did, is like, Wah! and knocks him the fuck out. <laughs> and then they're like, leave, leave. And he's like, I told you, I'm not leaving now. I'm staying till the cops get here, ninja. <laughs> ninja <laughs> fuck with me. Now he's laid out. And he sits on the bench right there and works on the cops. Mike Perry has figured bare knuckle out. He's got his own, like, st- he's, I feel real stiff with his hands. Just keeps him close and stiff. And he can, he's the knuckles are hitting your mouth guard because there's no glove. And he knocked Luke Rockhold's fucking teeth out. And Luke Rockhold said, I'm quitting. He knocked my fucking teeth out. And that was it. That's he's like, Luke a, Rockhold. It's like a Renaissance painting. Luke there Rockhold, he is losing his teeth. Most people would agree. I bet if you asked who the most handsome man to ever participate in MMA is, Luke Rockhold lands on top. The dude Got is a three. model. He's literally a model. Is, he had a modeling three? career. GSP is a right. good looking man. He's on um, the right. I, right. If I had to pick a boyfriend between GSP and, and Luke Rockhold, I think I'd go GSP. That that voice is sexy. But uh, but I agree. Mm-hmm. Luke Rockhold's a top three handsome fellow in the in the UFC. So for him to world. lose teeth feels extra tragic. Ah, uh, that just put some better ones in there. Fuck that guy. No, Mike Mike Perry's a scary uh, man. Yes. Yeah. Are you watching so bare knuckle boxing fights now? I don't like the cuts. Highlights. I don't like the cuts, so I'll go back and kind of really? like, I don't know, I try to keep up with it a little bit because, I, I don't know, like the records and stuff, but I really don't like watching the fights too much. I've watched maybe three or four total. I don't like the cuts. I don't want to watch someone get, like, brutalized. Like I don't like the, I don't like seeing your face get cut I, at all. Okay, I'm on a different team than both of you. I enjoy watching facial cuts. I enjoy watching people get brutalized. If I hear, like, there's a particularly fun-to-watch match, I'll watch it, but I don't, like, get the pay-per-views or anything. No, I don't buy it, no. Um, the huge fight for me that's coming up, and, and I think the UFC and Dana White and his team of matchmakers, sometimes it's awful, I'll admit. And sometimes mm. it's clearly, they're trying to hurt this guy. They're punishing this guy. They've got a fight come up. They've matched Tony Ferguson. I knew it was going to be. Used to be an all-time great. Now mm-hmm. he's lost six straight. Five of those, every one of those is a top 10 guy. Every one of those losses. Almost all of them, except for Bobby Green, is a top five guy. So it's kind of hard to evaluate his skills overall and just how much he's diminished. Although we, he's not the Tony of old by any by any means. Up against Patty Pimblet, Patty the Batty Pimblet, who's on a six fight win streak of nobody. Against a six fight lose streak. Against a six fight six six L's six W's fighting each other. I, 
soon, maybe December, maybe sooner. Can't remember exactly. And it's like, what's going to happen? I don't it's, know. It's a fun fight. To, One to guy just on, beat six cans about. of tomato in a row, and the other guy lost to six champions. Yeah. I don't know who's better. Put some money I on think it. Tony. I think Tony. Uh, my money's on Tony. Uh, I would abs- I'm going to bet on Tony. I'll bet now if you want to take Patty the Batty, who is also Patty's 27, Tony's 37. I, I might be a year or two off, but more or less, that's the deal. Is he 39, Tony Ferguson? That would that's be a, two that's years That's a big off. gap in... Yeah, it's 10 years. He is 39. Uh, but, but during that 10 years, he was learning how to hurt people in an octagon. So you might want to take that into account. Uh, mm-hmm. most of that time he was doing the hurting. It's only the last two years, two and a half years that he's been the one on the real receiving side. Uh, I, I, I got a bet on, on Tony Ferguson. When's I think he's going to, uh, I don't know exactly. It's this year, uh, okay. which isn't too specific, but it's almost October. So in the next month or two, he'll be 40 early next year aside. There's a chance. Yeah. I, I think Tony's going to smoke him. And he'll get his win, and hopefully he retires. Please don't retire. I'm like the most ageist guy on this podcast somehow, but uh, I think Father Time has defeated Tony, and he has no more wins left in his life. It's just who the... I just think he's a world-class guy still who's only lost to champs, and Patty is none of those things. And Patty is is still green. Um, although, if you look at it like X's and O's, Tony doesn't really hit hard, and you really got to... It seems like you got to take Patty out. Like knock him out and and he's he can eat a shot patty can because they we've seen that for sure so mm. i can't wait for the fight i like like that's one of those fights that's probably i don't know where it is on the card it, it's probably not co-main who knows where i don't know where it is on the the chain uh but i'm excited for it i really want to see it there's a lot of good fights coming out it's uh, interesting I, zach said is this the fight that blows patty up into a star this is something that they do yeah. in fighting they take an aged champ who everybody knows and they put him up against your up and comer. And if the up and comer beats him, then he gets the aged guy's shine. You know, then they're trying to give Tony shine to Patty. We'll see. You know, yeah, it works game. if you beat him. Yeah. And and like I said, the six L's and the six W's come against each other. It's just a cool mm-hmm. storyline. It's a mm-hmm. really cool storyline. Uh, and it's uh, I like seeing those fights. And afterwards, we'll be like, ah, well, clearly that's what was going to happen. But right now, it just seems so up in the air. I have no idea how that fight's going to go. Before we jump to the next thing, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful, wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. Attention, PKA mm. fans. Unlock a 20% discount on everything at FaroDistro.com. Whether you're a gummy enthusiast, starting with our 10 milligram Cub Scouts and 25 milligram Delta 8 is better, or HHC is better, or aiming for the 100 milligram worms or even our 500 milligram Sour Belts for the pros, we've got you covered. For those who prefer to smoke, explore our carts, disposables, pre-rolls, and THCA flour. And let's not forget the DabX Go and our premium dabs. For the holistic enthusiasts, delve into our range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms. Just use code PKA20 at checkout, ferrodistro.com, linked below. Quality you can trust. PKA20, ferrodistro.com, 20% off everything. That includes, as we said, the DabX. Get 20% off that. That thing rocks. It is the... Absolute easiest, most pleasant way to get stoned out of your mind with uh with the Ferro Distro products, especially those little those little dab things in the little the nipple that you just squeeze right in there. Very convenient, very nice. And as always, start off slow. If you don't have a high tolerance, don't be a retard and get the 500 milligram sour belts or the 300 milligram sour belts because it's not a joke. These are going to put you on your ass. You're not going to have a, a fun time with it if you don't have a high tolerance. So be measured. Be very measured in how you do it. If edibles as a whole, some people are intimidated by edibles you know, at any dose because they think, oh, my goodness, I just took one. Now I'm just going to kind of play in the waiting game. If you're one of those people, don't fret. Don't think you have to You go the edible route. You can just get a disposable, a cartridge, and... Uh, I recommend the HHC cartridges. I think those are the most bang for your buck as far as how long they last and how high they get you. But the Delta 8 ones are definitely a bit weaker. So if you want a little bit of a weaker hit on your your pen, get a Delta 8 cart. Try that out. That is how I would recommend starting if you're someone who wants to give this a go. See if it's right for you. Uh, Don't feel like you have to jump in 
you know, to the 500 milligram edibles or even the 100 milligram ones. Uh, just get yourself a Delta 8 cart. See if you enjoy it. If you go, hey, this is great, but I could go with a little more power. Amp it up to an HHC cart. Uh, this actually, I have the other one over there still. That THCA flower joint with the crystals on it. They they sent uh, that shit will that that shit is strong. Um, I I think I mentioned last week I smoked like probably a third of one of those and was high out of my mind. So take that nice and easy as well. This stuff is accurately dosed, folks. So if you're you know, dealing with a hundred, you think your tolerance is a hundred milligrams from gas station trash. Uh, go ahead and start significantly lower than that with these products because they're accurately dosed. They're much stronger than the the nonsense you're going to find at a gas station. So that is my recommendation to you. Check out the edibles, check out the disposables, pre-rolls, THCA flower, all of it. Very high quality stuff. Uh, they fuck and they will get you pretty goddamn high. So check it out. PKA 20, that's 20% off, folks. And the DabX Go is excellent. So if you're looking for a much, much better, cleaner way, cleaner is the word I will I will stress there, a cleaner way to smoke and vape, get the DabX Go, 20% off of that. PKA 20 at checkout, ferrodistro.com, link below. All of their products over there, including the holistic uh, therapeutic CBD and mushroom stuff, give it a go, 20% off. And don't tweet at me. When you buy the 100 milligrams, when you shouldn't have bought the 100 milligram ones, and then you take one, you get too high because I'm just going to say, hey, I told you not to. You should have got a 25 milligram one. You should have got a 10 milligram one. You should have just gotten an HHC cart. So uh, if you do decide to go the route, I know some people do, which is like, I'm going to get this 5,000 milligram container and it's going to last me a long time. Just little bites teeny teeny little bites even smaller bites than you think you should take but uh yeah that's why everyone should just get something more dosed for their tolerance ferrodistro.com pk 20 20 off check it out this episode also brought to you by better help better help folks this episode of PK is brought to you by today's sponsor, BetterHelp. So let's hear a little about their service. Life is full of twists and turns, and it's important for you to show up for yourself through it all. Mental and dental, got to take care of it all. We're very serious about everyone taking care of their physical health here on PKA and maintaining a healthy physique, but mental health is just as important, and you need to work to keep your mind in shape as well as your body. Start getting in the mental reps with the help of a professional over at BetterHelp. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people all over the world. It's super simple and made to easily get connected with a therapist. No hassle as soon as you're ready. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, get going with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Invest in your mental well-being now and get started with our partner, BetterHelp. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. They've got a special deal for our listeners, saving 10% off your first month over at BetterHelp.com slash PKA. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy over at BetterHelp.com slash PKA. That's 10% off your first month over at BetterHelp.com slash PKA. BetterHelp.com slash PKA. 10% off that first month. So if you're feeling like you could use someone to talk to, get some uh, sounding board, uh, that sort of thing, really therapy, that's what it is. Uh, check out BetterHelp. It could it could uh, really serve you well. A lot of people could benefit from going to therapy and having someone to listen. Someone who's not, you, you know, it's great to talk to your friends, great to talk to your family, but sometimes there are things that you just want to talk to someone who's not close to you in that way and get kind of a, a different uh, set of eyes and ears on your current circumstances. And so I recommend that highly, betterhelp.com slash PKA. Check it out. And uh, let us know how it's going for you. Professional therapy done online, people all over the world. Better help. Check it out. This episode, of course, also brought to you by Lock and Load. Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement taking the world by storm. Be sure to use code JIZ or code PKA for 10% off of this product or anything over at Derek's site. Derek's wonderful site linked below, gorillamind.com. You can get protein powders. You can get weight loss supplements. You can get pre-workout. You can get essential amino acid powder. You can get 
stuff for sleeping and dreaming and just all sorts of self-optimization over there at GorillaMind.com. Code PKA or code JIZ for 10% off anything over at Derek's wonderful site. And of course, with Derek, you know that everything is getting fucking uh, efficaciously dosed. Everything. You think Derek was going to put a cum pill on his site that that doesn't have efficacious dosages of the requisite ingredients required to increase your ejaculate, you're crazy if you think that because Derek is a science-minded man. He knows about efficacious dosages. That's why he's ranting and raving about it all the time. So check out Lock and Load. If you haven't, if you haven't tried it yet, make this week the week you do. And like we've said many times, this isn't some hullabaloo where you're going to get three bottles into this and be like, oh my goodness gracious, this just isn't panning out for me. I don't seem to be coming more at all. No. First bottle, if you don't start noticing shit by the end of that first bottle, never come back. Never come back. But you will. You will and you will come back a lot. Come on her back, her entire back. Come on her back or his back. Anyone, we don't we don't judge. The only thing yeah. we judge about is if you got little tiddly wink cum loads that are embarrassing yourself, your bloodline, your your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband. We don't want that. We want you being an absolute titan, a true king, uh, a man of means, so to speak, in the bedroom, coming a lot. Check it out. PKA jizz, ten percent off, and also uh, the protein powder is excellent. His new flavors are really good. So check all of that out. Zach, can you? Can you play that that gif? The cum gif? I, I, no, not the cum gif. Uh, the one you sent me? <laughs> of you coming? <laughs> he doesn't have that. He doesn't, he doesn't have that. I'm glad Taylor didn't recognize me from that gif. <laughs> oh, no, I got yours too. <laughs> oh, it's a giant. It's a giant. So. Oh, it's a giant. It's a giant. I thought this guy looked. That guy looks a lot like you. I. Yes. That's your doppelganger. He sounds like me a little. But then, but see, he's got a black friend. That's how you know. (laughs) See the comments. See the comments. comments. (laughs) Like, Jesus Christ. And they're like, yeah, they just did the 666th episode. That's absurd. That guy looks um, so much like it's. It I've must be nice it for you, yeah, to look like someone I had who's to look carefully, not ugly. Yeah. Every time someone links me, someone that looks like me, not it's there. some just boorish idiot, some some ugly fat headed retard. And they're like, "You look like a spitting image of this guy," and it's like a homeless guy who's hmm. fat. So that's, well, that's not good. Just, that's just not. <laughs> that's just people not being very kind. That's what that. Yeah, is. it happens to be con- like not anymore. I don't really read content about me, but they'd be like, "This guy at the gas station looks just like Woody." He's 65 pounds overweight. <laughs> He's wearing like this shirt. He's testing the tensile strength of his buttons and mandals. And I'm like, he does. That's how you He's see He's wearing me. shorts. Woody. <laughs> White man. Shorts. Woody. Dude, yeah, we I do think... this thing in my house called Huck Finning. Jackie downstairs and... I guess she wanted to give herself some sort of pedicure. I don't know. But it led to her spilling too much water in the living room. It's like she's picking up electronics. It's trying to get under the entertainment center. And uh, she has the Bissell out to like collect all the mm-hmm. soapy water or something. And she's just making it look like fun. Like, look at it go. See the water coming a vacuum? in. Yeah, yeah, it's a vacuum. Bristle but sounds it, like what Snoop Dogg would call a pussy or something. Oh no, no, it's a vacuum, <laughs> but it like it can like shoot soap into the carpet and then yeah. it pulls that soap back out. It, you have dogs, you might like it. So um, I have, I have a similar thingy. Okay, yeah. So she's using the Bristle though to just collect the soapy water that that spilled on the ground, and she convinces Colin that it's fun and just totally fucking Tom Sawyer him or Huck Finned him. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, he's like, "Can I do it? Can I do it?" And she's like, "I don't know." <laughs> This is a good time. Let me try. <laughs> I don't remember the book. Well. Tom, Tom, I think it's Tom Sawyer's the one who it's convinced the other kids that okay. painting the fence was so fun so he could run off with Huck Finn. Yep. Um, Huck sense. Finn's like, Huck Finn was the bad influence. Nobody. Yeah. yeah, he's not doing anybody's chores. He, he was, was the tough. cool kid. Um, hmm. And then there's Tom. What was Tom's first name? What was Tom's go with first Tom. name? No, nah, was Tom. Tom was definitely a second name. Oh no! <laughs> I think you're you're thinking of Jim. <laughs> oh, is that who it was? It was Jim. That's right. Yes, yeah. you're thinking of Jim. 
and his first name. Dude, that that Damn when they guy. when they got that word out of that book, it it like thirty pages shorter. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was an old I, trick I, they did to hit publishing uh, <laughs> limits <laughs> in the eighteen hundreds. Just throw a bunch of ends no. in there. See, but you guys, none of us should be uh, offended if somebody's like, oh, this is your lookalike, because we've seen them play code names. We've seen how their mm. word association alone is, and it's like, I'm not offended anymore if you think I look like that mailman, because my goodness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, because uh, you I, didn't know how to I connect was very, ocean and breeze. Dude, I was so happy with skinnies and, and how that game was going until your guy just threw the game. And, and and that just made that 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 was such a it it didn't feel good to win. Like, what was he doing? Oh, we had been playing. Yeah, we we, we uh we played code names with in our in our most recent hangout. It was which his first Tuesday time night. as the clue master. It's all right. Oh. Taylor's so nice to him. <laughs> Dude, I was the opposite. I, I was teasing, but I teased him all night. Yeah, you were awful to him. <laughs> I don't see it that way. But okay. <laughs> he cried. <laughs> No, he he's didn't. 14. <laughs> he's 14. <laughs> I mean, he'll be 14 soon. <laughs> no, he won't. Not after what you said. <laughs> hey, he's done. Yeah, what uh, was it? Yeah, it's it's a mean fuck. I'll tell you what it was. Here were the words it's on fever the fever and potato. For the win, he has to connect the word potato and fever. And of course, it's hot. You say hot because that's hot potato and fevers are make you know it's when you're hot. It's clear, and that's the win. But he said, "Burning, burning, yeah. burning." Why are they going to think that burning has anything to do with potato when Moses is on the board? So he thinks burning, burning bush, and that that throws the whole game. That that right after mm -hmm. he dude does that, I win. Like it's game over. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? That, yeah, that, that's real upsetting. Burning and all his clues all Moses. game long were like ones and twos. So if people don't know. One couldn't be easier. Anyone can do a one. It's it's, it's a nothing thing. Um, two, yeah, that's like a minimum. You know, you, you typically get two every turn uh, unless you have like such a huge lead you want to play it safe. And three and fours are threes are good. Fours are rare. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy did all ones and twos, and he did. It was his first time. But well, no mercy. That's what we always say. Time. So we banned him. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna go that kind of shit. But, fun, but uh, but yeah, if you want to, uh, if you if you hop in the fifty dollar uh, uh, patron um, Discord, we we have some very intense code names games. And I, if I could ever get Chiz to come out of retirement, I would have my partner, and then we could play for monies. Then we could get a whole fucking bracket going. We get a bracket going. Everybody throws in small amounts of monies, and then and then and then. It would, it would it could be very fun. It could be very fun. You could stream it even. <laughs> it's a yeah, that would be fun. It's a it's a frustrating game in that the it's truly random. And so there are times where like you're the clue giver and you look at the other clue giver's words and you're like, oh no, they have all four animals or they have all four locations. Well, we are probably fucked because they're gonna kick off with animal four. And it'll be like, oh, okay, so we got the easy board. And that's that's hey, frustrating. That's pretty extreme. Yeah, you can get fucked. I went up against Taylor. We were both the uh, code givers. Yeah. And I was like, so Taylor's a smart guy. But in the world of language arts, he's particularly 1%. Oh, thank and you. I was like, oh, no, I'm so fucked. But I absolutely wiped the floor with him. That's how I remember it. Because Taylor, I think it was, I think it was zero to one. Yeah, <laughs> by the end. But yeah, didn't didn't your win that one. I matters so much. And, it and, does. And it it's, and the board. When you're, yeah, of course. Yeah. But when when you've given a clue and you're listening to them talk through it and they're going the wrong way, it's so upsetting. It's like no. Oh, no, I almost shut had a that conniption. Guy up. I, I almost had a conniption playing. Uh, I think Fish was one of my team guessers, and I gave the clue uh, anachronistic for four because yeah. I had four words that were all, you know, kind of old timey, and there was no other word that I could use to specify that without leading them the wrong direction. And like immediately, like all three of my clue guessers are like, Anaconda sack, <laughs> Anaconda sack, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> and then Ooh, it's like yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not supposed to Google, but they all suddenly knew what it meant. <laughs> I, I had to get foam and day, and I puzzled over that until I finally just went with iridescent. 
and like two or three of them didn't know what iridescent meant and it was mm. like fuck <laughs> and then somebody somebody probably googled because they gave a very good definition for what iridescent <laughs> was like i couldn't have done it better and i know what mm -hmm. iridescent means and uh but we, you know we, we i would like to play um a more structured team-based version of that it's my favorite game right now other than Baldur's gate which i try not to talk about but i'm continually obsessed with i love that fucking hmm. game are you on your next character now or are you on a third um i'm on my second playthrough um so second I, I i guess is the answer but just going really slow um there's there's just it's really dense game a lot of fun really like it mm. i try not so to talk about politics and this you know, statement linked to that but john fetterman lost the battle and he will be required to wear a suit on the Senate. thank fucking god forward. he looks like shit he's so embarrassing he's got this mustache now and he he wears like not even a normal hoodie it's got like the sleeves cut off and he's wearing like <laughs> basketball <laughs> shorts it's like dude, you're, you're trying to look ridiculous like, yeah he looks terrible it, it he took the the heat because he looks terrible um Kirsten or Christine Cinema, her first name might be Kirsten. She was also violating the thing, but as a girl, it's a little weirder. Like she dressed in denim from head to toe, and you're like, eh, "This is not the dress code." But mm -hmm. chicks are a little funkier. That's literally yeah. what I was. Yeah. Look at that fucking. That's actually kind of upscale for him. Without the he hoodie. stinks too. Look at that cop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now he's wearing a oath. suit. Uh, there is a big picture. Everyone's looking at him thinking, what a joke. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Even if he's your guy, like, like, look, if he was my guy, I'd be like, yeah, but who's sitting in the This looks chair? better. I'll yeah, think I, I don't go. That's the an old picture, Woody. You can tell. He looked, he looked with it as well. No, he's with it now. Uh, he's with yeah, it now? It, dude, he is healed from his stroke and the new Republican conspiracy bullshit, because they're fucking idiots, is that he has a body double. I that saw he body, has a, body, a full body double. Like yeah, it's a they say, guy. he has a body double, and that's why now he can communicate effectively. Oh, you know, I've seen those where like people are like, "Look at how different he looks," and it's like, do none of you know how focal points on cameras work? Like, just like, yeah, he has tattoos on his arms here, so it's like a picture of him with a tattoo, and they're like, "Now his tattoo is gone," and it's like, that's how arms work. <laughs> the other side of his arm, asshole. <laughs> Yeah. You, you fucking retard. Yeah. The guy <laughs> no, can't I don't communicate like that guy, but I don't him. care. I guess I'm glad he's not my guy. I've already got an embarrassing gal. You know, we've got Marjorie. Yes, Green one's down here. And her hers isn't even the is, hot one. No. Her mm. I would I'd be look, I'm okay with that shit with um Bo, uh, Lauren Bobert fucking mm -hmm. jerking the dude off in the theater, getting all felt up. I had no issue with any of that. I'd give frankly, her the, um, Medal of just so everyone knows, keep you safe in the theaters. All theaters have fucking night vision cameras looking at you now so you can't have any fun in the theater anymore all theaters yeah at least that one theater had all, one pointed there. all theaters that we're gonna go to like i'm sure we could go to a Wee herman type joint and and be in peace there but... might be some footage <laughs> that's what i'm saying right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know sometimes you gotta i know what you're thinking you had to pee that time during ted too and woody just let her rip right there <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I tried to give him a cup he said, oh, during ted like, <laughs> i said this that's, guy in front of me that's <laughs> such like a that's, that's such a ridiculous like like I could I could totally see that if I was sitting in the theater in 2003 watching Return of the King and I have to pee really bad, I could have convinced myself at, at 13, 12, 13 years old to be like, pee in a cup, just pee in this cup. You cannot miss the, the Battle of Pelennor Fields right now. But that's, when, that's two, when I had to pee. I remember it. which one is Pelennor Fields. I thought I learned the crazy names. That's, that's the one. Those trolls outside. have drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one outside of Minas Tirith where where oh. Theoden is riding, doing that like best intro to a battle, like hype up song or uh, speech mm -hmm. ever. So okay. good. Mm -hmm. God, so good. My like, is that the I one where he's like, there's moment. a day where the courage of men will fail, but that's not this day. Yes. It yeah, was good. that is Dude, a good one. I, I, delivering speeches like that is so much harder than you think. I think a lot of people feel like they'd be a decent actor. Like not I mean, maybe not great, but you'd mm -hmm. be decent. And I, I, I want to tell you, listener who might think that the last time someone pointed a camera at you, how'd you do? Did you start delivering lines well? Did you crush it? Were you interesting? Did you have something to say? Because mm -hmm. 
you put a camera on someone and they turn to mush. That yeah. guy killed it. He killed it. I feel like it, it would be so hard as an actor not to just feel ridiculous. Especially I start thinking like about green screen. what people are thinking. That that gets in my head. Like, am I killing? Am I loud? Am I? Do I sound like I have gravitas right now? Probably not, because you're worried about gravitas, and people who have it don't do that. Yeah, yeah. The the real king of Rohan wouldn't be worried about you know the uh, the 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 pace of his speech right now. Mm-hmm. He'd just be laying it out there. Yeah, I don't think I'd do a good job acting either, oh. or maybe I'd do a great job. Probably no. Not. <laughs> no probably not. I think it depends on the kind of acting, right? And it's 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 the director's job to to go as long as it takes to make you look right. Whenever you see bad acting, it's not just a bad actor; it's a bad director who what who who couldn't who either couldn't get a good performance or wouldn't try. You know, like like dude, I was watching uh, the director's commentary for Godfather One. Um, it's Ooh. you basically watch the Godfather but with Scorsese talking to you the whole time, so you can't hear the audio of the movie. Um, Sounds like an awful experience. Yeah, and he's got a terrible actor right there in the opening scene, right? No, I loved it. I love it. Uh, Right away, you've got the uh, the character that's um, the Godfather's bodyguard. It's it's fucking... His name's escaping right now. No, um, but um, (laughs) the guy wasn't an actor. He was a wrestler, big, Mm. giant guy, and he was nervous because he's about to go meet um, Marlon Brando. So he's so he couldn't deliver his lines. And when he did, did do it, it's terrible. It's all ba- he's the one who comes in. He's like, Godfather, on the day of your on the day of your daughter's wedding, I come to you. He's like stuttering over his lines. But they they made it a scene earlier where he's out there practicing the lines again poorly because he mm. can't get it straight because he's not a fucking actor and he's nervous. And it's mm. great. It's like you took a non actor and made the fact that mm. he is a non actor and a bad actor. And made it a joke in the movie, and it—I never noticed that. I was like, "Yeah, that character's like—he's—he's he's not used to talking to the Godfather. He's not used to being in the big room where everybody's got, got tuxedos on." I—I I always read it that way, but no, the guy was just a shitty actor. Have you seen Wild Hogs? I have not. The Tim Allen John Travolta film from yes. two thousand six or seven, where they ride around on motorcycles. Have you seen no. it? No, dude. So. I think it was fish. He suggested it to me in the PKA hangout. And I was like, you know what? Heck I'm in. I, uh, I watched the trailer and the trailer seemed kind of fun. It's about th- four guys who have a midlife crisis kind of, and decide to go on a motorcycle road trip together. And I'm like, all right, this comes in feeling a little personal, but okay. And, uh, uh, one of the characters is even named Woody. John Travolta's name is Woody in the uh-huh. film. It is the worst movie. It is over the top homophobic, by the way. Like there's gay jokes all over 2006. the place in, in like an insulting kind of way. And every everything about it is horrible. All the acting is horrible. The plot is horrible. It's wildly predictable. There's nothing remotely relatable in like just how terrible they are and how stupid they are. And in the end, I was dumber for having watched it. And I'm baffled that such a bad movie could be made. It I it is one of the it is maybe the worst movie I've seen in the decade. This is why I, you don't listen to it's just like a flagrant star vehicle, right? Like they just yeah. threw four stars in there and we're yeah. like just is, is put is metal. Martin Lawrence in it. Martin Lawrence, John Travolta, um Adam Sandler. Right? Allen, it was very you know. popular at the time amongst the group that it's clearly targeting. Because I remember I was playing a lot of poker at the time, like mm-hmm. at three or four nights a week. And most of the guys that I'm playing with are late forties to sixties. And they're kind of like motorcycle dudes. We're in a motorcycle bar and they are. Oh, you seen wild hogs. Oh, oh at Tim Allen. God damn. That John Fox, he wouldn't so much a queer this time either. Yeah. He's a <laughs> stand up kind of feather, I think. And like, this is fucking, I know it's a shit fucking movie. Like you can just see, I can, I can, I can read a book by its cover most of the time. Like I can mm-hmm. fucking tell I can, there's enough I, like directed by who now? What? Yeah. So predictable, so lame. Lame. It just pitifully written. I thought maybe Tim Allen wrote it. Like it was a first effort at a screenplay. But no, it wasn't him. I, I I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not articulate on this. I, I am baffled by how bad a movie was made and marketed, and someone <laughs> thought this was a, a home. I bet it made money. Oh, for sure. It, I, I, I bet it made a lot it. of money. 
It's like fourteen percent yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, it's yeah, terrible. It's it's not I, even like I try not to watch. I, the the most recent thing I'm watching is Rome. I just finished it. It's a real mm. pity that that can't, that show got canceled because you would you tell recommend that, it? I have it on my yeah, list. Yeah, it's yeah, good. I, I definitely recommend it. it. So it's two seasons. You'll tell that things things advance quickly. So okay. it'll we'll talk a lot. We'll have all, we'll have Julius Caesar and and Caesar Octavian and everyone's in a room. We're talking about the war. Oh, big war with Egypt coming up. And then they're like, all right, let's fucking get them. And then the next scene. The, sh the ships of Egypt are burning in the ocean, and it's like, war over, bitches! Now it's time to divvy up Egypt. Like, stuff like that will happen. So, so they'll Sex and really, violence, right? Lots of it? So much torture, violence, mm. rape, and nudity. And um, I wouldn't say the fight scenes are particularly good. They're, they're just okay. <clears throat> but uh, I really like the characters, and it's an accurate telling of like what Roman life was like. Like, when you see the interiors of the houses, apparently... Uh, the way the streets look, the way the especially the way they dress is uh, is true to form uh, historically. And while the characters are doing silly things, they're doing the broad points are all historically very much true. Like, mm. yes, Caesar did stay in Gaul until whatever, 67. And then he came down into the peninsula and this happened on this year. And yes, Caesar Octavian was the one who was part of the triumvirate with Mark Antony and et cetera, et cetera. Like that's all accurate, but the characters of Fullo and, um, um, Lucius, uh, Varinus are real people with fictional stories that are fun to follow along. Fullo is like the big brute of a guy that mm -hmm. you always want there. If someone needs a killing, it's hmm. that, there's characters like that in lots of shows. I really like the guy in the expanse. That's all that he's short, but he's real fucking ripped. He's the psychopath on the sh and if you're in trouble, if there's a scary man around, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, don't worry, he's here. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> we got the scary guy now. <laughs> he's, a, he's our he's scary to guy. you. This Dude, guy's scary. Polo is so scary. Um, <sighs> it's I'll just spoil a tiny part. You you won't know when it's coming probably, but he has an interaction with a guy, and the guy's like, we don't have to fight here today. No one has to die, Polo. And Polo goes, you're right. And they shake hands. And Pullo headbutts him and then grabs him and pries his mouth apart with both his hands, bites the man's tongue out in front of all of his men, spits it at him, and then charges into them with his sword. And all of his men follow in behind him while the main guy lays there choking on his blood because he just got his tongue bitten out. It was so awful. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I was just like... That's the most hardcore thing I've seen in a minute. That was pretty rough. And then yeah. later on, some other I characters... I forgot about like, that scene. Some other characters asking him, because they're catching up. Been years since they've seen each other. Hey, what what happened? Well, we had a big fight. Yeah, what what happened? Well, I pretended like I was going to agree, and then I headbutted him and bit his tongue out. <laughs> the guy goes, you bit his tongue out? Sure did. Tasted like chicken. <laughs> and they <laughs> laugh about it. It's great. I love that. It'd be hard to bite my tongue out. I feel like I'd pull it in. Well, yeah, I feel like he, he's really getting him in, getting in there. Like he he gets up, mm. you know, one hand on the bottom teeth and one hand on the top teeth and prizes the guy. And he also is a bit concussed from the headbutt. So he gets in there. It doesn't seem it, like the first time. He wouldn't have tried that shit with Taylor. He wouldn't have lost the headbutt battle and then tried to pry his jaw open. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, I'd, have, I'd have gotten fucking eight fingers as a snack. Just, <laughs> just spitting fingertips you know at him. You're fucking with. Just would have destroyed him. I told you. Yeah, my my dentist <laughs> is blown away by the size of my masseter muscles. From <laughs> he said, you have the largest masseter muscles I've seen on someone. Like, which is the jaw muscles, because I spent my entire childhood and adolescence up until like 27, 28 years old grinding our teeth so hard in the middle of the night that you like know, they just got big. So I bet there's smooth, somewhere like, with a bite force head. measurement system. I've mm. seen those. It would be I'd interesting. Try it. Yeah. My teeth are fake, though, so I wouldn't want to go all, all out biting it. I don't want to break my yeah. teeth. Yeah, that's true. Well, hopefully it's like squishy, like a um, oh, yeah. mouth guard. You know, you could, you would bite hard with a mouth guard, like a hockey yeah. mouth guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you that think would that be would do well at an arcade? Like instead of the punching machine, the biting machine? Uh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> if you win, Play you get a hundred tickets at Hep C. Yeah, it's like, oh, this, this game is disgusting. Like, <laughs> Taylor, I have a question for you. Yeah. 
Tell me about your African Uber driver. Oh, yeah. This was like two months ago now that I was uh, in an Uber, heading to a buddy's uh, buddy's house, hang out, pool day, uh, had to Uber because the it was in the middle of St. Louis's absurd heat wave where we were the hottest place in the country for like six weeks, and my AC went out in my car. And so I was like, I'm not driving and dying in my car on the way there. And so I ordered an Uber, and it's this African guy who's my Uber driver. And immediately, like he's already on the phone when he picks me up and he like, like stops for one second to be like, do you mind if I continue to speak on the phone? And I was like, Hmm. no, not at all. And so I just got like a 25 minute ride from this guy. By the way, he took the absolute longest way to my friend's house. I like, I tried (laughs) like at least two times to be like, you want to take a right here? We didn't take a right there. You want to go straight? (laughs) And we turned there. We went through like neighborhoods, but this guy, he was like, must have been something have of, a, of a relationship that guru. Would me. Well, he was interesting. He was on the mm. phone, clearly talking to uh, first a man for most of the car ride. And clearly this man was confiding in him about his relationship problems. And they're both Nigerian or something. And so he had all these like funny tips, like the big tip that I remember him saying over and over was like, you are allowing a woman in your own house to dictate to you what you do and what you do not do. This is something that to me is entire nonsense. You, hmm. That is why you are in this situation. This situation has happened to you because she is in your house and she is telling you and you are listening to her. You do not allow her in your house to dictate the rule. He said dictate a lot. To dictate the rules to you. I'm with him. I'm on board with him because I'm picturing a a scenario where like, yeah, you can move in with me. And she's like, hey, clean your shit up. Hey, get get your get your towels off the floor. Hey, come in here. Like, like the fucking what are you doing? (laughs) You left your dish on the on on the table. Yeah, it's my fucking table. My fucking dish. Yeah, he he, smash. This guy was traditional as shit. Like 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 very traditional Nigerian man. He's like, she is not meant to be in your house instructing you. You are to lead her in the house. You are in, when you are in the house, mm-hmm. you are in charge. And so you do not listen to her. You okay. are having, listen. And then he'd be like, listen, 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 listen to me. Listen to what I am saying to you. I say again, when she dictate to you and you listen to this, you are not taking your power as a man. Your power as a man, that is your house. That is your home. You are the head of the, of the snake. Or whatever the fuck. Oh, I like that. Like that. <laughs> Stay with that. I what added that it? bit in. The head, the head of the snake. what? You are the head the of the snake. Oh, okay, okay. You are like the it. head of the snake. I know it will become a silly <laughs> boy. Oh, I like snakes. <laughs> you are the locomotive on this train. If the head follows the tail, the tail of the snake, what would happen? <laughs> what would happen? No, you cannot. You are having problem in relationship because she does not respect you. You are allowing her to. Be in a part of the relationship that she as a woman should not be a part of. And it was like, I, I wish I could hear the other guys yeah. point, like all the stuff he was complaining about. But I, I'd like to say, I think I learned stuff from him. I think I learned a lot about Nigerian masculinity. And I think I'm going to take that to the bank next time I'm in a, a serious relationship. And yeah. never, never allow a woman in my house to tell me how I must behave. Never. Oh, I, I mean... I, I'm 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 with Magumbo here. Uh, all yep. that sounds mm-hmm. pretty good to me. I gave him a good on tip the, and five on, stars on the surface. <laughs> I don't like him driving you all around town. I did not put up. No, the, but, but like at much. the end of it, I was fine with like four extra minutes of driving to get a little more fair. more insight. Yeah, that's fair. But then but, at the end, clearly a woman was on the phone, and so I think he was like mitigating a mm. familial conflict with someone that he knew. Like he was the guru handing out life lessons to people. And I didn't really I, catch much of the woman. I would have got a second. Like, hey, you I know what? Take me back. I want to hear the. I want to hear you tell her. Yes. you are just a woman. <laughs> it is your job <laughs> to shut your trap. Yeah, what if, what if that's what it was. He like gives the guy like all this build up advice, and then for the woman, he's You're like, "You are a despicable witch. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to kill you <laughs> because you step out of line in your house with your husband." So I assume oh, it was husband some, and wife. They're pretty traditional over there, I think. Pretty pretty Christian, mostly you, in Nigeria. So you think you picked up a few things from them? Yeah, I, I think of I them so. as Catholic or, or definitely Christian in some way or another. Yeah, I, they're one I of the more one Christian, Nigerian, I think. 
not super Muslim. I worked with a Nigerian guy. Um, he had like a, his name was like Alexander or something. He had like a very white name. And, uh, and I just remember oh, he was like really good with the ladies. He's a good looking guy. He was a big dude. And, uh, and he called pussy cuckoo. He's like, mm. I, I knew I had to please the cuckoo. The, the cuckoo tried to get away from me sometimes. I do not let it. He's like, right. a whole maneuver. From this point he's going like, forward, I also call pussy cuckoo. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> cool, he little cuckoo man. for cocoa puffs. He's <laughs> explaining how he'd like put a pillow, a couple of pillows and pile them up and kind of put that around the lady's waist so her butt would be up. He's like, but then you grab the pillow and the cuckoo cannot get away. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just always talking about like really getting after some cuckoo. And that she's already woozy from the head injury. <laughs> she does not have a chance to escape my Uber. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't like them driving me around. Again, I don't take Ubers very much, but usually when I do, it's because I'm dropping something off, like a U-Haul or something. And I know the way home. So I know if they're jerking me around. I, I wouldn't like that very much. But wait, I'm, am I mistaken? I thought the price was agreed on beforehand. For so Uber? they're not driving yeah, you around like a taxi driver, like price wise. Yeah, no, it didn't get more expensive. It just like I would look at my app and it's like, no. oh, we're not arriving at uh twelve oh five anymore. We're arriving at twelve ten. He's just inexplicably like, taking a different route. Just inexplic he he went away. I never considered going to my friend's I house. I hate that even more. It was frustrating. Like you're yeah. not even profiting from this. You're just wasting he was both not of our paying, time. He was paying no attention to the drive. I could have I could have been holding him at gunpoint in the back and he would not have known. He was very into this conversation. I just Excuse looked at Nigeria's sir. You religious... cannot pull a gun in my car. Yeah. I, this is you my car it is disrespectful. Me. Yeah. You cannot dictate to me in my Uber even if you have a gun. Like he, yeah, I, now that I looked at Nigeria's religious breakdown, it seems more likely he was Muslim because they're like 50-50 oh, okay. and he was my Coming in pretty was not. hard with the woman stuff, and that seems to go with with Muslim Islam. Yeah, but or in common sense in general, you know, like yeah. it, it does sound like like it does sound like his girlfriend is like kind of bossing him around at his house, and he's, he's and and I, I think yeah. your Uber driver was on to something. I think he was too. Why, why are men better at everything? What is with that? I think it's just God because I, because one. because historically, if you weren't at least good at something as a man, you yeah, probably fuck. weren't going to have any children and pass your DNA along for one reason or another. You had to be good at something. But as a lady, yeah, mm. yeah. So we have, are you there? We have, I saw true. women complaining about men competing in their sport. They said it was absolutely unfair, and that we can't like if if this trans woman you know born a man now a woman uh is competing against us is not fair but that sport was fishing and i'm like why are men better at fishing why do women think it's not even fair it's to compete close. against men in fishing it's not even close yeah. how much men better men are at fishing it was freshwater fishing <laughs> mind you it's not like it was yeah. ever catching giant yeah, marlin that's the hard seas. time the deep water fishing is easy you're just like let's wait the freshwater is when they're doing all those fancy casts and picking the right bait for the sun and the water and the cover and the fish. Like that's I just imagine bringing in a marlin might give a strength advantage to a guy, but if the fish weighs six pounds or four pounds, then women are strong yeah. enough. Men, Men just women like, tend to obsess over things much, much more. And so any hyper specific hobby, you're going to have way, way more men than women who are interested in it. Like I would imagine. And also you're yeah. right about the ancestor thing. Like I think we have like tons of men just throughout history just did not fuck and have kids. Tons Here's the thing. Of you ever them. you ever you ever hear someone did. say, Yeah, he's just talented at that thing. You know why? Because yeah. his grand great grandfather was talented at that thing. And that means he got to fuck a lot. There's a lot of people who are talented at jumping because their ancestors were too. And the guys mm -hmm. who weren't good at jumping just couldn't get away from that thing. Or maybe they just couldn't catch a woman to rape yeah. her, frankly. You know, you, it might have been that. You, know? you think Thor Bjornsson was the first strong guy in his family? Like, Lineage? No. no. He came from a whole line terrifying. of absolute monsters. Like, like you go They're back taller than him. His brothers are taller. Years. Yeah. You really? go back 400 years, and he's like storming a monastery on the coast My of England. God. He would be, see, he's like a superpower in a world where you don't have machinery and like, and, and electronics mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, he shows up twice as three times, four times as strong as any other human being, like 
The doors can't stop him. He's so yeah. big. I wonder what he looks like without steroids. Kenyon's right. Oh, let's agree he'd be just as tall and he'd be very yeah, strong. Right. But without steroids, what how big would he be? How, I mean he wouldn't I mean he'd still be that tall and like, like ancient Viking yeah. Thor. Like I, I think he'd be the perfect big for sm- for smashing people, like whatever he, that yeah. that would be. For but stealing be golden crucifixes from oh my yeah, God. religious was... sites. So, His body is so. not the ideal for fighting. No, right? it's the ideal for moving I weight. I yeah. don't know what fighting meant for them though. Like like I don't think right? it meant squaring up necessarily as much as it meant chasing <clears throat> people down with an axe. Yeah, and just just they seem. The Vikings would just roll up on your shore, and you didn't know you had trouble with Vikings. You might not even know what a Viking is. You may have never seen a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white dude that's six foot two. But there he is with all of his buddies. They just rolled up, and they're here, and they don't want to talk. Like, they're hacking the door down, screaming in fucking Scandinavian. I imagine (laughs) a Roman skilled with a spear beats him. You know, picture a... I mean, they did. The poison guy from Game of Thrones. Uh, um, the, played the uh, Last of Us. Dorn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. All right. His yeah. character, I think, could beat Thor. There's some dude like that that was just oh, interestingly enough. Spear. That that's. Oh, I, I, have you did. seen the whole trend of of people being um, <laughs> the, the girls ask their boyfriends, "How often do you think about the Roman Empire?" And <laughs> yes. They're like, I don't know, like a couple times a week, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what you just mentioned, like yeah, the Romans the conquered all of the Germanic Celtic people, all of Gaul, which was Eastern Europe. Like, like they conquered mm-hmm. or Western Europe. They conquered all of that. And and those were those people. Um, I don't know how long that campaign went on for, but they were just it's some of the things the Romans did are so wild. They just went to the other side of the world. With tens of thousands of men, they bring like eighty thousand soldiers mm-hmm. and go conquer a continent, and then build a road back and start taxing and shipping the gold home. And they just kept doing that until they owned so much of the world. It was yeah. So yeah, I guess I think about the, the most imp- a couple I, I times think about, a week. Yeah, at least a couple times a week. It's the coolest empire ever. I should think about Rome more because I don't know anything. Yeah, Rome is so cool. One seventeen. That. All that's of, that's all the of, peak of their expansion, peak. I believe. Right. Like, like, like obviously, I'm the the least knowledgeable ge- ge- geography wise, but I know that's fucking England up there in the top left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, Looks uh, like they've got like, Babylon like, and Britain. That's a big I, span. And unlike I, that I, nonsense where they're like, "Look at Genghis Khan's empire." It's like you mean just a trail with burnt villages and no infrastructure and no mm, production I don't, I don't that, and a bunch this of was a, like this was a machine this was a, though that this was had. an empire like every one of those provinces is shipping gold by road and ship back to rome it's a machine it was yeah. uh and it's I, I really like anything about rome i wish there was a t- I, 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 it's a shame that uh the tv show failed they should do more rome historical shows those would slay there's a really popularity. good one on netflix there's a really good like Rome multi episode like the history of Rome. It's Spartacus. very good. Spartacus yeah, but, is good. I mean, it's fairly it's historical. Wait, wait. You said Spartacus was good. Did you watch it to the end? I watched one. Was, that, look, again, I'm good at reading books by covers. I could tell that I didn't want to watch that new guy, so I watched the first season, then the second season, which is like the prequel. Mm-hmm. And I disengaged because I knew it wasn't going to be good from there. I could tell. I could see it. Yeah, the writing was on the wall. Mean. The man yeah. died. Mm-hmm. It ended really bad. Like, and the fight scenes that, you, like, I enjoyed the fight scenes in the beginning. It was a different way to do videography around a fight. By the end, they just took it. It, it was like, all right, there's trouble. And they all start moving in slow mo with blood splatters on the screen. Yeah. And it, it got super bad. Yeah. It's, uh, it, but for anyone who wants mm-hmm. to see like another titty period piece, my goodness, seasons one and two of Spartacus, you, you'll never see as much and titty in, in a in a regular TV show ever. I think Showtime made it. Real good show. But hey, um it's got Cinemax yeah. vibes. Yeah, it's got yeah. um um I'm spacing out her name, but fucking Xena uh t- is, is in their top Lucy list, Lawless, am I Lucy right? Lucy Lawless, New Zealand okay. actress. Yeah. Man, yeah. that sucks. He died at 39 from cancer. Ugh. I thought it was uh the one of the lymphomas. Non-Hodgkin so, lymphoma. Yeah, that's the bad one, I guess. I mean, they're both probably bad. 
Ah, uh, you don't um, even mind the other kind. You're just like, ah, do I have that too? Do I have that too? <laughs> that <laughs> oh, rats, I've got lymphoma. Not again. It's going to ruin my weekend. I have seasonal lymphoma. <laughs> seasonal <laughs> lymphoma. <laughs> it really flares up around the springtime. Seasonal affective lymphoma. They get in a bad mood and uh, die. No, that guy was pretty cool. I, I don't recall his name. I do remember, though, Andy that at the, at the height of that show, I was oh, Spartax is a great show. And then he was in a Freddie W video, which is really cool. And mm. uh, and then he died like soon thereafter, it felt like. Um, so as soon as I kind of became interested in him and wanted to watch more of his shit, he literally died. It's a shame. Colin got into old school Freddie W and Rocket Jump videos. And he was very impressed that I knew Freddie W and hung out with him for a day or two. It was like, suddenly I'm cool, which is hard <laughs> to do. <laughs> suddenly I'm, oh, oh, that guy? I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's funny yeah i i uh i remember those videos were just so crazy the uh i remember one with a cat like a call of duty cat and the cat was running around shooting guns and stuff um i, I always liked that stuff a lot he had a tremendous amount of balls uh, maybe some were real some were cgi he did outrageous stuff with like too many balls yeah it's been so long ago i'm mm. uh i'm mostly watching a bunch of science shit now I really like, um, I think it's called Be Smart. I've been watching that channel a lot, but but mm. mostly space stuff. Uh, I saw they land, so a few years ago now, they landed on an asteroid and took samples from it, like rocks and du- dirt mm-hmm. and dust. And they, I think they like land and then immediately popped off is the way the system worked. And, okay. Uh, that, so that arrived back like last week or something, and they're testing it now. So there's samples um, here in Atlanta. They're going through right now. It's pretty neat. It's they in Atlanta. Land- uh, yeah, I think at the CDC. They they landed um, on an asteroid in fucking space. They went out and got it, grabbed some pieces of it, flew them back home, and and they're here now. And they're and they're you know looking for I don't know the chemical composition. I suppose. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine there's life on an asteroid. It's a- could be. I mean, like. Uh, like if you had um, some sort of bacteria or something in a rock and then another rock hit that rock and blew it off into space or something. Or if um, what they I'm always talk about the lack is of this. atmosphere. Do they have life? Oh, without? it would just you just freeze the back. It'd be like frozen in a rock, though. Right. Like, like it would be like mm-hmm. living on there, like living the asteroid life, looking around or anything. It'd be like some little cells that are frozen in crack crevices in the rock in the middle oh, or something. Oh, I didn't consider dead life. Like those Which, worms I'm they find sure uh-huh. in, uh, in um, Antarctica. Ice and they, they thaw them yeah. out and like bring them back to life. They, they've done that a few times with the worms, with viruses that they found that are just dead. They're not moving and they thaw them out. Oh, now we've got it alive again. And then hmm. um, what was the other thing they did it with? Oh, seeds. They found... I always found it interesting. They found these seeds... Um, one example I know for sure is the Anasazi beans. They found mm-hmm. them in these clay vessels in south uh, uh, southwestern United States. And the, we didn't have any Anasazi beans. They didn't exist. They'd gone extinct. But there they were in these vessels. So they got them out, germinated them, and now you can buy Anasazi beans. They're basically black eyed peas that look red. And they don't taste that good, if you're being honest. I bought a bunch. <laughs> I was like, I want some! Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I've still got them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but then I... But they've done that a bunch of times, found seeds in those old uh, clay vessels from Egyptian times and stuff, and then brought them back, fig trees and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess there could be some bacteria living on that rock that got blasted off into space and is frozen, just moving around through the through space. The beans and seeds thing, having a history, is cool to me. I Yeah. To bring it back to corals and fish, like, so what happens is sometimes in the hobby, uh, some legend of the hobby will go scuba diving and here he is in Hawaii or off the coast of Africa or Australia or whatever. And he sees a coral that's cool. So he breaks a piece off of it and he flies it home with him. And now this thing is like smaller than a baseball, but he grows it out and he gives pieces to this guy and that guy. And then it grows out some more and it's cool. And it looks good like in a, in a tank and it grows more and more and more. And then like 
whatever 25 years goes by and this thing has spread through like everybody's tank in america it's this legendary thing and this guy now is like old and fat and like you know 67 or something and he's got this picture of him in hawaii with a full head of hair looking young like the day he found it mm. and it's like the legendary story of the oregon tort or whatever and i'm like i want one. i have one it's called a red planet like it, there are different mm. corals that are like legendary and they're common like it's not it's just neat. I like the history of it. Yeah. It, it came That's, from it here. Is, I don't know what kind of organism coral is. It's Are those it's mini a, plants that, that, that live together? It's an animal. And uh, can you... Zach, can you pull up a picture of like an Acropora? A-C-R-O-P-O-R-A. And uh, it's an animal. It has a calcium skeleton in it. And every polyp is an animal. It's like a separate organism. Ah, and that they're connected by their skin, so they can share some level of uh, of nutrients and stuff that goes throughout. And let me see what he gets. Oh, perfect. That's a great one. Yeah. So if you look like at the, say, the bottom center, there's like a little green polyp. That's what that's And they're called. different animals, each one? Or are yeah, they genetically yeah. so identical? We're looking at, I don't even know, like 100 different animals in this thing. Every polyp mm -hmm. is its own animal, but they can share nutrients. And they have uh, algae inside called zooxanthellae. And that's photosynthetic. So when you shine the light on it, the photosynthetic algae has a symbiotic relationship, gives energy to the animal, as well as the animal also catches like little debris and tiny bugs and stuff that come floating by. So um, fascinating. Yeah. Oh, wow. <sighs> yeah, I guess I what go... I was wondering is it, whether it were was a collection of individuals or one enormous one, the way that some kinds of um, um, like fungus can mushrooms be. and fungi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, so and, and things like that are weird. It's like, how, is that thing conscious? Is it, is it, is it down there thinking about stuff? No, it doesn't have a brain, and its mouth and butt are the same hole. <laughs> but it is an animal. Oh, I don't mean coral. I meant fungus. Oh, oh yeah. I hear people wonder about the fun. Like, I guess there's some level of communication that happens in a network of fungus or fungi. Yeah. Um, I, but like it, it's ants. tricky because the people who talk about it are usually really into psychedelics. Yeah. So it's like you are both a subject matter expert and an unreliable, unreliable. source. Yeah. And I don't know what to make of it. You're trying to convince me that like Mother Earth is communicating under the forest in this like network of mushrooms. I'm open to it, though. Like the, the idea that maybe it doesn't exactly think the way we do, but in some way it's conscious and capable of at least some sort of like. I don't know, reactionary, like, oh, this hurts, sort of, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. th some sort of thought process. I was, uh, someone was talking about ants on a podcast I was listening to, uh, their, I guess their brain is 35% of their body, and, you know, ants mm. do all sorts of crazy things. Uh, they, they, they uh, those networks yeah. and tunnels and... I'm sure you know Tearzoo, the YouTube yeah. channel? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Amazing content, by the way. You guys got a really good uh, concept for a channel. Mm -hmm. And... He talks about what makes animals successful, and so much of it is cooperation. I mean, it's the essence of humans. We're not, well, we're pretty big, but we're not stronger. Really, what we're good at is mm. thinking, working together, and passing, and, and our long lives allow us to like pass down generational knowledge and learn more. If we died yeah. in a year, we wouldn't learn much. Um, so back to ants, their socialization has made them one of the most successful animals on the planet. Organisms, I should say. Insects are not animals, right? I'd they're think. animals they are in the the what, what is it what's the animal kingdom called? animalia animalia no the not phylum the, the kingdom 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 there we go man it's been a long time since third grade <laughs> yeah so yeah insects okay. are animals that's why like long ago i, I was like i don't think i want to do bug fighting because it seems like animal fighting and maybe someone would get maybe get in trouble somehow but it seems like but someone did do it. It's super popular now. I, I, I keep getting these videos of scorpions and spiders fighting. Really? But, I still watch those Yeah, sometimes. they're definitely cool. Yeah, they're gruesome. I, 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 the, the main problem with that, I don't want to house those creatures in my home. Not even a little Oh, bit. no. That's a YouTube thing. Like You don't want a Japanese murder hornet. I mean, actually, the one where it's the murder hornet versus that giant praying mantis... Oh. Like a praying mantis wouldn't be rough to have around because it's, no, it, 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 wants, it wants nothing to do with you. Like it, uh, it's I'll pick those up and, and like help them out when I see them in the woods and stuff. They won't hurt you. They're pretty yeah. chill. They, Wait, ray bandits don't hurt you at all. I've touched them too, but I so, thought they really bit you. 
they're so chill that it almost seems like they know you're being chill. They're like, hey, mm. buddy, come here. And you can like pick him up. And he's just kind of, all right, what are you about, dude? What are you yeah. about? <laughs> almost, I know he's probably just freezing because he thinks as long as he sits still, I won't hurt him. But yeah. he just sits there and they'll let you pick him up and look at him. And like they watch you like an, I mean, they're animals, but like a smart animal. It's you mm -hmm. can see its pupils and it will follow you around. And you're like, dude, are you are you serious right now? All right, get the fuck up in that tree. Leave me alone. Good yeah. day to you, sir. <laughs> Good luck out there in the wild. I wish I had a bird best. do that to me today. We had a bird. Jackie was taking the trash out. So the kitchen door was open for like an entire minute. Bird flies in the house. And I hear these like scream, Woody, there's a bird in the house. <laughs> but as she's saying that, the bird comes flying into the Game of Thrones room. And uh, he's like doing laps around there. He eventually slant. Uh, we have a door with like this glass window over it. And uh, he bumps into it and he's on the ground, but he's alive. So uh, now I can now I can get him. Right. And I sort of catch him. I pet him gently. And I think he I think he was stunned, but also figured out. I'm not about killing him. You know, if, if this guy wanted mm -hmm. to kill me, I'd be dead by now. And I, I picked him up and I put him outside and. Uh, we named him Falcon Food, and I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> well, he, he dazed, got eaten by a hawk. <laughs> it could be. That that does appeal to me a little bit. Um, I, Eating hawks? Getting a falcon and, and sicking mm. it on pigeons. Please yeah, get into like, falconry. Falconry, oh. because yeah. there's, an air, there's, a, there's a small airport not all that far from me, and it's like, man, I bet they could use a falconer. Out here, take care of those pigeons, keep them out of the uh, way of the planes mm -hmm. and such. Keep them out, keep them out the airfield. You think you would do? I don't. I bet that your first job in falconry isn't at the Purchasing busiest airport in America. Yeah. Oh, not would go to not that one. There's a there's a small airport nearby. Um, there's a lot of airports oh, okay. around Atlanta. To be like, sir, but, why don't you just use a rifle? I don't talk about that. <laughs> oh that's the easy way <laughs> he's the worst airport supervisor getting rid of birds ever number one he's using rifles like, no, he's, he's firing 308 on, just deep into chimney sweeps <laughs> we, we lost three plays this week yeah. it's like no yeah. you cannot bring your punt gun <laughs> Take down yeah, the whole i think you want the falcon um, I, I, I did read that book when I was a kid. I think it was called My Side <laughs> of the Mountain, and it's about a boy who goes oh, up yeah. in the mountains of New York, up in the Catskills. And I liked that there. book a lot in school. Lives in a fucking tree, makes acorn pancakes, hides from anybody who's around, and he goes up, climbs up this mountain face, uh, and he takes a, a youngling peregrine falcon, which I believe is one of the fastest birds in the world. The like, best. it's probably top on three a, fastest birds in the world. And, uh, yeah, I think... That, yeah, I think it is the fastest on a dive, like Taylor said. And so he gets one and he raises it and he trains it to be his buddy and fucking help him catch small game. And that's a big part of how he survived. And I always thought that was pretty neat. And then when I was like 10 or 12, some falconers came to my dad's property and was like, hey, could we use our falcons here? We make these VHS tapes and sell them of us falconing. And you could have some tapes if you let us, you know, go. And so it's like, sure, we're about we'll to pass up on that deal. Well, could, how could we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, he gave us a fucking cassette tape, and you can imagine what it looks like aiming a cassette camera <laughs> at the sky, <laughs> yeah. mm. trying to capture your falcon hitting a dove. So I was, we watched three minutes of it and turned it off. <laughs> but I remember watching them do it. It was really neat because it would fucking, yeah, fucking smack. In those person, I bet it's really bring cool. them back. Yeah, because you've got a, I mean, it's. it's you know what it is. You've got a goddamn bird that'll fly off and kill another bird and bring it back, and it's pretty sick because they knock the shit out of them when they hit them. Did uh, we talk about on the show that uh, the Blade News, the guy who died on his stream? Yes. Or maybe, we or something, was that maybe in a hangout? Blade stream somewhat. Do you want to lay the, the whole thing out? Do you, have the, do you have the broad strokes? Do you know the whole thing? I have the, the broad strokes of it. Lay yeah. it out. So, so basically, and I'm Someone in the comments will correct all shit I'm wrong on, but Blade and then a few other guys were in like a streamer house where they all obviously stream and whatnot. And one person named Willie was like a fan of Blade's stream. 
and he kind of got involved in it on the content side where now he was on like, in the house and you know uh, chatting with the people and like, the, the text country. to speech I guess, I guess he drove cross country. I didn't even know he drove that 12, far. So, I was told 12 to 18 hours or something. Jesus Christ. So like the, for a big part of the country, yeah, 18 hours if he's driving that far. And they're all in this this house streaming and lots of boozing, lots of uh, seemingly some, some drugs going down there. And this guy, Willie, took like I... Apparently, he took a bunch of Ambien or some kind of pill that obviously is not going to interact with alcohol in a way that's Xanax. safe. Xanax, that was another one, a benzodiazepine. That can straight up just kill you because it will shut down your respiration and everything. Don't do yeah, that. You don't want to mix, do not mix drugs, folks. Do not mix benzos and alcohol or any of that. Don't fuck with I mean, benzos. sometimes. Uh, don't fuck with them. And this guy, I guess, was on those or Ambien, something like that. I saw a couple okay. different things, but basically he was on some kind of pills that like make drinking like a a death wish, basically. And he started, I saw a clip of him drinking on the stream, Willie, and I guess someone paid on the, the chat, the text to speech. Donated to himself. Donated to himself. And he took like a whole so like like most of a solo cup filled with uh, Crown Royal, which is whiskey. So like m- probably six shots worth in there, a huge amount. And that amount all in your system at once is already a shit ton. But with pills like a Benzo in your system or Ambien, I, Benzo makes more sense, like Xanax, like you will get to the point that like your your central nervous system is so depressed that like you stop breathing. you Your, your heart stops beating, like you will die. And this guy is clearly like, totally out of it he's unconscious out. he's unconscious on his feet he passed out on his feet leaning up against a railing and it wasn't blade stream it was one of the guys he was with uh was standing there filming willie as he's like totally out like just basically almost wheezing with his breathing and he's like joking being like oh he's gonna fall Everybody, we should make sure he doesn't fall. We should make sure he doesn't fall uh, from where he's standing onto the ground here. And the guy's clearly going to fall. If he wanted to help him not fall, you would have just sincerely grabbed the guy and kind of gently, any adult man could have done that, like got him on the ground in a safe way or preferably to bed or to the hospital. At that time, they didn't know he had to go there. And he collapses onto the ground, falls very, very hard. Um, some people said online, like, oh, it looks like he hit his head. It, it, I, I didn't really see that it looked like he hit his head that hard. It looked like he just kind of went down almost like Phew! sack of potatoes, not a big mm. head knock, but mm. it wasn't, I don't think, a, I don't think they're even claiming a head knock had anything to do with it. He was on the ground, like totally out, not with it. And instead of calling the paramedics, they started like I saw one person held his nose for a bit. Like he's not breathing correctly. And one person, uh, it wasn't blade. It was one of the other guys is like held his nose for a bit. Pretty, pretty shitty. And then also they started painting his face. So they have like black and red and white paint and they're slathering it all over this guy's face. They're writing juggalo on his stomach. They are like uh, putting like insane clown posse stuff on him. Maybe that was an inside joke. I don't know, but I don't know how long into that. Probably an hour or so they realize like it's, this is not a guy who's just passed out. Like he's not breathing correctly. He's like doing that knocked out, like wheezy guy, like fast breaths, like very unnatural. And so they call the paramedics. And I think it was, I think it was actually blade that called the paramedics. And I did see the clip of blade, like talking to the paramedic on the phone and was holding the guy's head and being like, do we keep him on his side? Do we keep him straight up? Uh, And the paramedic person is like, all right, Every time he exhales, tell me. And so Blade's like, he exhaled. He exhaled. Blade is? He ex- yeah, Blade was saying this on the phone. And the woman's like, okay, his respiration is very, very fast right now. Okay, make sure that he still continues to breathe. Keep his neck elevated and his head and this and that. I'll send people out there. The paramedics get out there. And immediately one of the, the streamer dudes is like, they're still streaming it. There's still the the guy is still streaming it. I don't know what Blade's buddy's name was. I wouldn't give him the attention even if I did. And he is like talking to the paramedics like we're streamers. We do YouTube. And like as someone who like does a podcast that's on YouTube, I'm like, oh, that's 
fucking embarrassing. <laughs> why would you say? Why would you say that? Even? Oh, you should like, have said that right away, sir. We'll send oh, the we'll YouTube send streaming ambulance. It's got some <laughs> cool bitches it's in like, it with Diddy. <laughs> and so, <laughs> for good content. And so then, <laughs> would you like us to bring some some fucking marijuana? Like, what are you what are you doing? Like, like you think there's a different line or something for streamer yeah. YouTubers? You cock like they 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 get in there dying. and they start trying to. He's dying. They're trying to help him. The paramedics are like, "Get me off camera! I don't want to be filmed." And the guy's like, "Oh, we're YouTubers. We do that." And it's like, dude, the, oh, a guy's no. like in in. <laughs> The, the paramedics are already here. Like, it's already an emergency. You didn't oh, call him for fun. Like, what are you Wait, fucking recording doing? paramedics and the paramedics are like, he would, get yeah, us off camera? The, the guy, it, it was oh. uh, one of the guys who was there with Blade was like, like started lifting his, his phone up and paramedics are like, I don't want to be on your camera. Like, they're, they're at work and their job is to keep people from dying. So, yeah, they don't want right. to be on your fucking stream. Can, can we pause right here for a moment and make a yeah. judgment call on that move alone, isolated on an island by itself? Let's say you were there. You just arrived. Or maybe or you've been there a while, but you didn't drug this man, or and you could have helped him if you'd seen it, but you didn't see him. You're not culpable in any way. Yeah. I think I still am gonna stream the paramedics helping the guy because I'm not trying to be ex exploitative, but if I'm streaming and someone goes down as being life or death paramedics, like turns out my life got interesting today, right? Like, like that's the way I, I see it. I, I I would not feel comfortable streaming someone who was like in a life threatening situation. It could like go that. well though, and then it's a happy moment for everyone. The I, best I, case scenario with, is he doesn't die. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that living, shit. Living streaming your day to day life. And then the most interesting thing that could be the most interesting thing these guys see their entire life. Uh, if, if you're them, you film it. I understand their impulse too, definitely. And they clearly have mm. no scruples. And so like they yeah. were gonna do it. But like I personally would not feel comfortable if if I were in a house and Kyle, Ooh, you took a video. bunch no, of you, you took a bunch of Xanax and then you guzzle the solo cup oh. full of shit and you're on the oh, floor don't, wheezing. Don't stream me, Diane. God damn it! I wouldn't <laughs> stream you. But if yeah. you fucking <laughs> fuck, fucking loser drives cross country, cross country and like poisons himself in front of you and you happen to be there. I might want to keep. All right, this we need to documentate everything that happens. That's I'm going to record. I'm going to stream. We need to read this obituary. Please, oh, is, it, is, there, is there a please real read that obituary because I'm sure that everyone would like to hear these beautiful words. Willie Two Guns, 52 of Kansas City, Missouri, passed on August 25th, 2023. He was surrounded by alcoholics and drug addicts in his death. This selfless man spent some of his last dollars buying energy drinks and T-shirts for a fentanyl addict at Walmart. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Damn. I thought that, it was going to be a real <laughs> obituary. But no. That is the that real one. obituary. It mentions his screen name. Willie Two Guns. With oh, the number two. Willie Two Guns with the two. <laughs> that yeah, was in that's, the newspaper. That's fucking why I don't think he's of Kansas City because that's where that that shit happened. If he drove across, the I guess country. Willie Moore Guns not. took only use me blades. Is it wife or girlfriend? It looks oh. like the drama there is like I guess Willie was dating his ex girlfriend. Maybe it that says right? he <laughs> stole her from only use me blade. Now I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what the truth is, but that's what's in front of me. Yeah. Um, Either way, oh, this guy... It's uh, crazy that he and Blade were hanging out drinking in the first place. That that he, like, went there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, like, Being that know. they had this woman between them, it, so you would think yeah. it would be awkward or volatile. I wonder if it was, like, going before he went to, like, meet up with their group, or if it was, like, they met there. I don't know. I guess no, that's... that's well, I mean, he, I mean... No, I think that's old news, him, like, getting his girl. I don't know anything about that shit. All I know is what I saw and what I took from the whole fucking thing was clearly someone's dying in front of us and nobody's helping. And it was real upsetting to watch. Yeah. Um, especially the way they were. I, I I particularly did not like them holding his nose. It was, it was brief, mm -hmm. but when someone's struggling for breath to stay alive, that I don't, I, I don't like that a bit. And then painting yeah. his face. Man, if 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 this goes to court in some sort of civil suit, even like all of them are are in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, it, the fact that he so. bought the shots for himself is not no good. He poisoned himself. It should be phrased that way. 
you can't even say that someone donated and made him do it or coerced him. He showed up, sure. he drove eight, he drove that all the way across the country to put on a show and he did it and he drank more, uh, more than he could and poisoned himself. But then nobody helped him. They let him die there. Like lots of people drink too much. They don't die on the floor in front of everyone though. Cause eventually somebody, yeah. like, the, I don't know. That was pretty fucked up. Xanax, which is a kind a brand name for benzo. Maybe does anyone it's a type of benzodiazepine? Yeah, it's good stuff, <laughs> but it doesn't <laughs> mix well with alcohol at all. And no, yeah. not and even, I'm curious, not like what did the other people wow. in the house know that he had taken a bunch of these pills? Because if like the other people in the house knew he had taken these pills and he drank that much and passed out, like that is that's an immediate emergency. Like, I, no, this guy I, was taking Xanax and he passed out with drinking. We need to get him to the hospital or he will die. He will go you're right. I'm not die. sure that's common knowledge, though. It, it, so when I saw him passed out. It looked like any other passed out. Mm -hmm. So they might not have understood the gravity of the situation. That's I what I was thinking. Like, it's like, out. I'm you, sorry. I mean, I, but, but I, these I guys see people, people passed people out all the time. That's true. So, so I've never, I can't think of anybody that I've seen that's like passed out, passed out, like knocked out, maybe like choked out. And oh, he comes right back. But so drunk or drugged that they can't answer a slap to the face and, mm -hmm. and come to. Ah, that would be so fucking scary. Immediately, I'd call somebody. Like, yeah. if, if you can't answer me, then we've got to call for help. That's it. Yeah. Especially, like, if they did know that he had taken a bunch of benzos or whatever the pill was and then yeah. responded that way after drinking that much booze, like, that's that's an instant, like, if we, dire, dire emergency. Maybe they didn't know. I don't know the story well, of it, but that... Like that is a it's, it's, that is the most surprising. depressing way to die. It's surprising it didn't happen sooner, based on what we we see highlights occasionally. I don't really watch them because you know yeah. it's kind of rough to watch. It's not my cup of tea to it's see people sad. poison and be mean to each other on a usually a RV. Like Ice Poseidon, I his his RV idea has become this awful. Evil proliferating. Deadly. Thing. <laughs> oh my god. Like like dude, did you read the blade the Keemstar texts? No. I did. I no. saw that. Like, yeah, apparently. Yeah, you go ahead Please and read be, them. I'll read it. All right. You I, might I have to do a little censorship. I'll do my best. <laughs> so Blade, apparently, there's the first one I'm about to read is drunk and then it comes sober, but we'll see. I just woke up. Bro, what is your fucking problem? What happened to you? Uh, this is Blade talking, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm disgusted to have ever help you you talentless leeching faggot you must be bored or evil here's the deal fuck off don't mention me ever i don't mention you you should have necked in the womb fuck your shitty drama alert channel which i came up with by the way you talentless maggot the fucked up thing is you were never my friend it was an opportunity for you to grow a youtube channel besides no i'm sorry because besides determination you're nothing that dumb kid at recess that tries the hardest. I grew up knowing kids like you. Fucking losers that think if they try harder than the other kids, then maybe they might make it. You are the equivalent of an ugly bee cupper that thinks she deserves the prom crown. 100 years from now, when the dust settles, people will forget about you and I'll live on. I'm so disappointed in myself for ever helping you. This is Blade talking. Fuck your interview and everything you stand for, piece of shit. The thing is, I don't hate you. I wouldn't go to your funeral, though. I am... Uh, okay. It doesn't take over from there. I'm sure you're going to make a video or whatever. Here's my statement. Willie died a month later from complications from ventilator. I called ambulance and stayed on the line with the operator until the paramedics came. I was sober and I didn't give him any booze or knew that he wasn't supposed to drink because of the medication he was taking because of a rollover car crash a month prior. There is no police investigation. Anybody saying that is giving misinformation. Double dog toss, colon. I dropped, not tossed, dropped the dog like two feet, including a picture to show the dog fall was not what the angle is. Same thing as your dog toss years ago. Clearly not okay, but not as outrageous as you people make it out to be. Stop tossing Last dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last note, going sober. I've done it before. You've helped me before. Not, pro not making promises, but this time shit's old. Every negative thing stems from that. I do appreciate you in the past going out of your way to help me out multiple times and knowing I'm better than the booze. So it looks like Blade and Keem are not friends anymore. 
No, I don't think they've been. For, I think Keem kind of disowned him a while ago after after that first. <laughs> yes, well, well read. That yeah, was, uh, I'm known for my insight. <laughs> Um, very big alive, tone change. <laughs> very big tone change in those texts between the, yeah. the wasted one and yes. the, the sober one. Jesus Christ! And it's like Jesus. to have to like talk about like I didn't know the guy was on the pills and that. And it's like that could very well be true. Like could be, uh, but to then that yeah, like I, mean, I don't blame have to, Blade. Uh, it was yeah, the like, other it, guys that were there painting his face and pinching his nose that I don't like. And I don't yeah, like I don't the guy think who Blade was painting his from, face or doing that. I don't like that the guy let him fall. Um, although mm. I'd have probably let him fall. Yeah, I'd have let him fall. <laughs> <laughs> Just being real. Some Just stranger's being... so drunk he's sliding down a wall. I'm gonna dive, dive across the room. I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I didn't see that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't know you. Fuck you. <laughs> Come on, be real. You're at a bar and you see some fucking schlub sliding down the wall. The guy, that guy, and you're you're gonna dive in there and help him oh, out, dude. Like if that? I if I would have been in if, when I put myself in that house, like my real yeah. self is like I would have been there for 15 seconds before I was like, <laughs> this is the most depressing place i can imagine being is there a david you busters nearby we peeked in that all right so i remember when we were in boston and me and woody like go up to y'all's hotel room and and we like peeked in there and it was like ah cool cool all right then bye yes because <laughs> there's like 20 of you dudes living in this one little room with a xbox i think yeah, it was like just everyone's 19 nowhere to sit huh <laughs> Yeah, they, oh, they were budget oriented. Smells bad in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but no, yeah. that's that that whole thing. I'm I'm not jumping in and helping anybody sliding down the wall, so I won't judge that. But I didn't like how they like fucked with him on the ground. And I'll say again, the reason I wouldn't grab somebody down the wall, like I don't know if that's a homeless guy and he's all nasty and stuff, or he's gonna get needles in his pockets. I don't know if he's just goofing around and me going over there, he's gonna fight me now. I don't know if he is falling, but me going over there, he's gonna still fight me now. I, I don't want any part of crazy man falling down the wall. He's on yeah. his fucking own. Hit your but head. But I know that all th if if each of us were there, and let's say he's he fell down, and mm -hmm. you walk over and you're like, "What the hell's going on with this guy?" And then someone goes, "Oh, he took a bunch of Xanax and then drank oh. a solo cup of whiskey." You'd be like, "Wait, oh, is there, go. Uh, so so the ambulance is on the way, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna call the ambulance on the way out." Put in That's a, exactly a little anonymous tip. Hey, you got to send an ambulance here right away because someone's overdosing. Their imminent imminent death is nearby. Like, send someone Here's now. Here's the move. Here's What's the move my name? Do. I'm just a good Samaritan. Here's the move. Give me your phone, person who's going to be staying at this party with the person. Ah. I'm going to call 911. Hey, 911. Yeah, I'm about to put you on with Jeff. This is his phone. We're at this address. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> X, Y, and Z. Dude's down. Here, tell him the rest. Tell him the rest. And then I'm calm. I'm gone. Then you're I mean, gone. Why is it so important you? to be gone and not be? I don't like, want to be here when the dude dies. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I, I don't, like, watch I don't want to be here for questioning. <laughs> if I stumble I in this situation, be... I'll be like, "Whoa, these guys are fucked up." But I'm the adult in the room, and I'm sober right now. I'm calling the ambulance. I'm going to give a accurate status report. No, he's not ambulatory. He's breathing is irregular. I think this is urgent. You know, like yeah. I'm not afraid of that. I'd like to nah. get out of there, but you're right. Like when you phrase it that way, like. Taylor, you, Taylor, he's staying. We don't have to. We don't have to. Oh, if we're all together, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can I, go. I'll can take go, care of it. We can go we to Hardy's. We need to stay behind while we I'll get do it. back I to the hotel care. and and clean out the mini bar at, to make our hands stop shaking. Because <laughs> 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 that would be the most stressful night of all time. <laughs> oh, we'd have to hit a dispensary on the way back. It's Kansas City, so illegal. We'd be good. Yeah. Mm, oh my God. Yeah. Well, that's that Jesus. genuinely is a shame. But um, well, but I, you guys missed the big news. Blade's sober now. If he throws chicken no, and broccoli not. into this mix, he's gonna prove me right. If Blade, I I would love to see him turn it around and prove me right. Foot's That'd be gonna good. start getting good circulation. Diabetes will go away. He, I mean, do you, you have the beetus? Fix that with diet. Yeah, he has uh, the beetus badly. That's what yeah. the cause of the. Uh, I bet it'd be easier to get like into stuff. pee play if you had the beetus. 
Why? Oh, because oh, because tastes... it would taste so good. That yeah, makes, makes perfect pee, sense. Makes your pee yeah. sweet because your you know your, your your body can't filter out all that. It, it's all that not actually sugar. sweet though. It's like it's probably sweet, like only sugar. sweet in the world. Is it of pee? Is it a little tangy tail? No, no, it's, <laughs> it's like it's like cane syrup. T- no, uh, no, you know the kind of piss I like. I like a sixty year old <laughs> coffee drinker, like just a, a black coffee drinker. Where it's yeah. just so much you can you can smell the coffee through in the piss. Mm. Coffee and asparagus. Those both can get I don't, through. I love as, I love asparagus. It's delicious. Um, it's it's good even with nothing on it. Like I can spray it with like a little bit of Pam and put salt and pepper on it. And it's good. But I don't eat it because I don't like how my piss smells. It's a it's offensive to me. Like I don't. I, I'm in the yeah. Pe- it's so yeah. gross. Yeah, but it's one of the best vegetables. So you just deal with it. No, I don't. I don't eat asparagus. And it goes through I, your or, body so quickly. Like you I've eat cut out all leafy greens as well, except for spinach. all of them. But well, yeah, but I, guess like, I cook the spinach. Oh, okay. No, no raw leafy greens, of course. No sprouts. Oh, I'm we didn't I got touch really on, by that documentary. Uh, we didn't touch on the dog thing again. The the dog throwing, or as he put it, oh, the dropping. How do you do that yeah. again? How do you yeah. again do that? And he did it twice on that stream where he was just holding a dog and then just like, like almost like aggressively dropped you know, the dog. I, I, I don't, I don't like that at all. Cause no. I, you know, I got my, you know, I don't like people throwing dogs or, or dropping Dude, dogs. I didn't I, watch it, but everybody who watched it the other day, they, they were like, they were like, oh, that's that. They reacted strongly to it, so I know I don't want to see. It, it. So he held the dog course. and then he kind of dumped it. He didn't throw it for yeah. distance. He just kind of dumped it and he did it twice. And uh, like Blade, if you're watching this, cats are for dropping. They're built for it. You can chunk a cat. Yeah, you can might like it. Cat, like probably have fun dwarf. with it. Didn't we? Hey, I, I can't remember. Uh, you know, because the drugs. But didn't we determine that a cat could be dropped from almost any height and yes. survive the fall? Tall it, skyscrapers. Yeah, actually, they don't always survive, but they sometimes do. More than people, like like way more than you think. If you yeah. put a small parachute on a cat, it can survive from any distance. No, nah, I bet that would throw it off. No, what if it? What if you, you do it cat. right? It would have to land on its feet, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be a little glider on it, so it goes. That's tat cat. This well, is my all I'm hobby. saying is throw cats, Blade. Don't don't throw fucking dogs. <laughs> They're not good at yeah. it. They, you know, there's no way to win someone over by abusing a dog. No. Everybody likes dogs. I hate Koreans. the instinct that Blade had. Like, I don't know how many times I've seen him on stream. Dropping and throwing dogs four maybe like three times. Well, the the really bad one was the one years ago where he just like threw a dog and it was like it like flipped almost seemingly. Yeah, it and that dog like so he abused the dog and then he picked the dog up and the dog was so loving and just like endearing towards Blade and yeah. then he did it again to the dog and that what is is it a parasocial relationship? What is it? Is it? What is it called, that, Taylor? You let you taught me a new word the, recently. Parasocial is like someone developing a imagined relationship with like us. Like they listen to a podcast a lot, and they're like, "I know this guy." Ah, so it would okay. be, I thought it was like unrequited love, but uh, so I use it incorrectly. Um, anyway, yeah, that dog love Blade so much, and it was so just like wanting to snuggle and make up. And mm-hmm. Blade did it again to it, and it was a special kind of cruel to me. Yeah, that's me. It's like. Like the first time the dog was probably like, oh, sorry, boss. Did you drop me on accident, boss? It's okay. Mm -hmm. It happens sometimes. And it's like, no, (laughs) no, it doesn't happen. Number one, Mm -hmm. (laughs) just like, unless you're like the dog of a very elderly person who just loses strength in their arm. Like, no, no dog hunt, Taylor. I was just thinking about that. You were looking, I would say three shows ago, you're kind of on the edge of pulling the trigger for a dog. I was, and I still am, but Mm. I, have decided when I get one, I'm going to go full puppy mode, uh, not like a one year old dog that's already trained. And okay. I was talking to my dad and he was like, you know, I think it's a really good idea that you get a dog. But something I wish I had thought through when I got my last dog, my last puppy, was that it's really a good spring purchase. You don't want to be standing out there teaching a dog to pee in the snow for a whole season through its puppy phase. That would be annoying. And or he said it was annoying, you know, with my dogs. And I was like, oh, I didn't consider that because, yeah, it gets it gets cold as shit here. There's a bunch That's of snow. That would be annoying. Got him in October. 
See, yeah, I think I, I think a March dog might be. But my wait, favorite. St. Louis and Atlanta are not the same. I'm not sure Kyle made a mistake. Where do you weigh yeah. in on that? Yeah, do you Let's even get snow? Cold. Snow? Okay. Snow, we don't need the snow for the cold. It, it, no. You know, it. Well, we get our, a lot of snow. <laughs> it gets it'll cold. Be the, sometimes it'll be in the 30, It'll be in like the oh 40s. my god, <laughs> in, in the forties. Yeah, <laughs> <it's real, laughs> you don't understand. It's the forties, dude. Last winter, it got to minus freeze. eight. <laughs> <laughs> It's cold to me, you know. I, I put on my fucking snow gear. I, I'll have on like a snow gear, hoodie. meaning flip flops, <laughs> shorts, and a hoodie. <laughs> no, I've got like, like a fucking a tundra coat with a big fur, like cowl and everything. John Fetterman cost when I when, when I was Georgia winters. When I was genuinely considering going to Ukraine a, a year or so ago, um, my girlfriend bought me a, a, a Ukraine ready coat, <laughs> and so I was like, well. I like um, I just I decided I don't want to get castrated in Western in uh, Eastern Europe. So instead, I I got this for when the dogs poo. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it works well for that instead. That way, I don't get castrated or anything in Russia. But the um, winter's that terrible in Ukraine? They probably are probably not. Yes, they're, they're rather they're, terrible in Ukraine. Yeah, it has a big impact on the uh, their ability to move armor heavy vehicles. Oh, yeah, okay. that makes sense. Um, I guess it's basically Russia. So yeah, the I'm, I'm, I'm still looking at dogs. I don't I don't know what I want to do, but I do want another dog. Hmm. I, I I go back and forth. A little a cutie. Small yeah. Yeah, I, I've been considering small dogs. I've been looking at a lot of small dogs, mostly Pomeranians and Pomapoos. And um I like um um huskies mixed with um Pomeranians. It's a Pomsky. I like those. It's like half husky, half Pomeranian. It's a very odd looking guy. It can look more husky or more pomeranian but the ones that look more pomeranian are basically like big fancy looking pomeranians and i think that's cool i and love they're, they're, they're ready for the winter it's like a it's like the winter model of a of a pomeranian sport or something am i right in guessing that they're healthier mix like mutts tend to be pretty healthy dogs more genetic purebred. diversity seems like a, a good ca catalyst for them not getting some weird tumor on their neck at, at right. you know three or four years in which happens with those like like oh a yellow lab huh what generation of inbreeding is this eight mm -hmm. thousand like, like like this guy I'm wow like, oh, that's that's a handsome dog i like it oh i'm fancy uh <laughs> so i like those um but but i don't know what i'm gonna get i really like my doodle uh toby is tremendous i've never had a dog that just sits there and makes eye contact with you and smiles as much as this dog does uh he just wants to be with me all day he's just super loving um he barks at the neighbor's children when they lean over the fence and puts a scare into them they're That's like can good. i play your dog i'm like he bites he bites <laughs> he no, is he not. is he waiting for you in the bait or downstairs right now just excited oh, yeah. to play oh he's probably i he's usually right outside that door like laying there waiting um or That's or so he'll sweet. be downstairs sometimes just listening he, to it, your voice adoringly yeah, uh, if Dogs i kept the, the door open he would be under my desk with his foot like on my foot uh, or his head on my foot. Uh, but sometimes he gets tangled in the cables and they get scared, so I can't have him in here. <laughs> That'd be a fucking He's nightmare. In the he gets scared. <laughs> he just knocks I, all he you, knocks your router warm, over. Because, you know, there's there's a lot of hot air coming out of the, the back and the side of the PC, so he, like, nuzzles up in there, and he'll sleep there for three or four hours at a time if I'm gaming or something. So I mm. might get another uh, doodle of some kind. He's supposedly a Bernie doodle, but he mostly looks like a big goofy ass poodle to me. So any kind of poodle mix works. Mm -hmm. yeah, you My should. dog loves me. And uh, it's funny because Jackie does too. And they both want to snuggle me all night. But I run a first come first serve operation. <laughs> and Jackie <laughs> will bounce and be like, God, Enderman. <laughs> you know, he took that spot. I'm like, eh, you know, you lay sideways a little. Get in just, here. just move him. <laughs> he's so big i don't know what he weighs now 170 or something he's oh so my big. god it's unreal for have you considered that getting a bigger bed point. like one of the fancy it's a king, king beds uh like i wonder what bed. that'd be like to live with all right so i've got a king and mm -hmm. i love it i've still What's got my old casper mattress king. every now and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be like oh yeah there's a new thing can you kind of mattress and then i just remember i love my mattress so goddamn much and i don't think they make mm -hmm. them anymore I love it, but a, a it's Texas probably eight king. years old now. It's about time for a new mattress just for grossness reasons. I don't know. A lot of it. Yeah, ours is too. Yeah, it's about time. And uh, I, I do. Toby and the other dog always sleep in the bed. Always. 
and they'll get hot and then they'll get up and get on the floor and cool off and they make that circuit. And when he lies down, he will flop onto me and wake me up and it affects my goddamn sleep. So I'm thinking about getting, there's a couple of different ones. They basically, they just take a word and put it in front of King, right? There's a California King. I think those are like bullshit. People think it's better. It's bullshit. Thank you. It's just longer. Yeah. I think it's wider. No, it's longer and narrower. Like put uh, Zach put up the uh, the Texas King. Yeah, show us the King. Show us the whole diagram. He did. There's a. Oh my bad. But it doesn't have so everyone could see. It doesn't have regular King for comparison, which is a yeah. We need we need the. But I know they make like a Texas King or a Montana King or a Colorado King. I think it's a Colorado King. That that feel that rolls off the tongue a little Hmm. a little bit better. But it's huge. There's a Wyoming and an Alaskan. I don't know. Okay, there you go. Anyway, I. I've been thinking about doing that next time around. Just getting. All right. Mm. So let me find the king. Okay. So there's the. Okay. And then. It doesn't oh, we'll have see. the Texas one. Yeah. That's it's, unfortunate. This is. It doesn't so, have any of the so best. So if you look. look at. California. Oh, whoops. Um, oh, there we go. Excellent. Oh, this Here we go. Open. Yeah. So the California king. I need to make my font bigger. It looks like on the width you lose four inches and on the length you gain four inches. Yeah. It's just taller and skinnier. The Wyoming King is the way to go. Alaska. All right. It's a the party Alaska King is pretty I, great. I, I, <laughs> I usually cap out at three people. No dog, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you want, it's, uh, you it's want not legal dogs here. in there. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're in the comfort of your home. You can't be stopped. Can't have babies aren't legal here either. I don't know what country this was made in. This is what <laughs> I, I don't. I, don't I like how they judge, put a, cri- a standard size of a crib in there, as if like like that. <laughs> like, like there's baby. Like like okay, so I usually sleep in the crib, but so that's gonna be. Oh, I have so much more room in a in a human sized bed. This is great. Yeah. Like who's yeah, making that as, decision? As far as practicality goes, the Wyoming king. Looks Look like how much best. bigger the crib baby is than the, the the baby on the Wyoming King. None of this is making sense. It's not tracking for me. I don't know. I I'm <laughs> like not sure I'm one of that crib far away. There. Like I, I get that big's fun and everything. I we slept in a queen for like the first 20 years we were together. Dude, no. And I, I liked oh. it. I like no, dude. No. <laughs> My I, I I I used I had an ex-girlfriend with a queen. Most girls have queens, and I, I was like, babe, we gotta get you a new bed. I was, I was like, guess what you're getting for your birthday? <laughs> a king size bed. <laughs> a king size bed for me to fuck you in. Um, so, so, so pick one out and I'll pay for it and I'll help put it in here. And that's what we did because I couldn't stand to really? be in a, a queen size bed because I want to be able to like, I don't know, get in like the, the fetal position and not worry that my heels are going to clack against her knees or I, I want to make, I, I want to be able to roll over a little bit, not elbow her elbow. I, I don't know. I want a little bit more room. The Alaska right. King seems definitely like overkill. I can't even picture that in the room because I know yeah, that King is already. Yeah, that's just arrogant. Bed. The Wyoming how King, how I'm many literally going to do. How many feet is 108? 96 is eight feet, right? Nine. So it must um, be nine, nine, nine by nine. Feet would be yeah. Uh, so it's a nine by nine foot. All right. So you got to really commit to your room being the bedroom with of an Alaskan <laughs> King, like. No, I was meaning like there's not going to be any other room in there in a normal size bedroom for a nine foot by nine foot bed in a normal house. Yeah, oh. so I, I mean, my bedroom's really big. Um, I don't know how big it is, but it's thirty feet. I don't know. Like it's big, and the ceilings are like twenty feet tall. Like it would fit that bed. So I'm like, should I? I yeah, you're not. If you were I'm, still in the queen now, I would be like furious. Soon. <laughs> I used to like it though, queen size bed, so she can't get far away, and we had a king size comforter, so we could like both steal the covers and do whatever you wanted with the covers. That was I'm currently doing the doing the like one step above that, I guess. I've got the king size bed, but with the the comforter from the size up, so that it's extra wide, so no one can steal all the covers because there's mm-hmm. literally an extra couple feet. So, but I, I do want that bigger bed because I don't, I didn't usually sleep in bed with two grown ass dogs and i can't even imagine the great dane situation because my dog's like an average sized dog he's leggy but he's probably 60 pounds a 150 pound dog is something i can't even imagine he's so long <laughs> his feet are so long 
Uh, his legs. Uh, does he ever just like 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 start like kick you in the face or hit you with the claws? Like I'm not in the face, that. no. But he he runs in his sleep and stuff. Sometimes wakes us up. That's hilarious. <sighs> yeah. I've also so all right. So here's the alternative to the dog, and I'm seriously, I guess, kind of considering that because my girlfriend's oh. into it. Uh, the calif um the um the Maine Coon cats. Are you familiar with oh. those? No, I'm I was I was that. fully expecting a pig thing, but carry on. Fuck that. I don't want that. Look, she'd be down for a pig or a goat or anything, like, but I don't want an a livestock shitting in my house. Okay. So fuck all that. But this cat, these Maine Coon cats, they're very expensive. They're I, I guess what based special on how about much I, they're huge. They're gigantic. They're like 35 pound cats, Whoa. and they're not fat. They're athletic, small lynxes, basically. So that's a kid holding one, obviously, but you're not getting a, a ton of force perspective or tomfoolery here. It's genuinely a really big fucking cat. But why would you yeah. add a cat to the mix? Can you like show the picture with the woman, Karen? Because it? these yeah. cats are uh, personality wise are, are quite a bit closer to dogs. They'll fetch, they? uh, they'll they'll go on walks on leashes and stuff, and they're just beautiful. They they genuinely are beautiful. That one in particular is so beautiful. I this is chopped and there's a little force perspective, but they're big, they're beautiful, they're neat. Yeah, I like them. Are they nice? Uh, what nice I hear is it's a regular cat, it's just a cat. So, you okay. know, you're gonna get what you, oh my, all right, that looks frightening. I don't like that one. I don't like <laughs> that a bit. I, that looks, is that a guy in a costume? This. What the fuck is going on <laughs> here? Fucking, why is it fucking mean mugging me? Like, I, I'm, <laughs> I feel like we're ready to go right now. Like, like, like I'm just, all right. You want you want that thing with those eyes walking around your house scaring that. the wonderful Not dog that. Toby? Dude, I'd, I'd smoke that fucker. It's like, going like to bully the first... shit out of Toby. I would lead that fucker into the oven mm. the first night and turn the gas on. Like, that if thing's I, scary. If That's that a reincarnated human bully... and not a nice one. If that cat tried to bully Toby, I'm 100% sure Kyle would make that a 2v1 right away. No yeah. cat yeah. bully and Toby. Now, now you both get, Now you both need to go but get Toby's shots only eight hundred dollars. Cat scratches. See, Toby's only eight hundred dollars, but most of those Maine Coons seem to be like a fifteen hundred to a five thousand dollar purchase. Well, in the grand scheme of things, no. But I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I, I meant can't, like I can't, I'm not going to snap his neck. Like he's not disposable, but he's getting it. He's he's going to win. You know, Toby will win the fight. <laughs> you can get like you Toby, can get like two Toby, of those this uh, husky palms or whatever. For that price, right? We'll see. We'll see. Then you gotta. Then you have the maintenance and the upkeep of two husky palms and the annoyance. I think of this guy as the least annoying thing. He's gonna be all aloof and shit up on a banister, mm -hmm. looking over us like like he's gonna be you know litter boxing it up. Those things don't poop and pee in the house. Like like, I mean they do, but they use a litter box and it's, it's not a thing. It's not a problem. So I, I'm, I'm considering those a little bit. I saw some gray ones that looked. I don't know, like something out of Harry Potter, like something out of a fantasy novel, and and kind of want one of those. Your house is going to smell I, like cats. You know what? I, That's no, exactly what I'm thinking. I was just thinking that if There's Kyle no gets a cat, that. I look forward to seeing the litter box he chooses. I bet it has an iPhone app. Look at that babushka holding this thing. My God, it looks <laughs> like it's stolen her soul. That is a big cat. <laughs> it sapped me of my life force. How much? Eight. So you can find them for fifteen hundred dollars, and you get that cat. Um, again, I think I don't know that that's not some sort of Photoshop nonsense. I would mm. advise going to like the the site you purchase them on because they don't have any reason to to get extra clicks. They're just selling cats, and there's it's like everything else. There's different levels to the to these Maine Coon cats. There's different bloodlines, and there's preferred eye uh, coloration and obviously mm. fur coloration, and then there's some that are more short haired. It seems. So the really desirable ones are like really desirable dogs up three, five, eight thousand crazy shit. But, you know, I like the idea that like one cool thing is what someone who shows a cat really values might not line up with what you really value. You know, you're our, probably care about personality paramount size second. Yeah. So it looks cool. Eye color. If you're like me, 100 percent flexible on that. So if that makes the cat cheaper, I'll take the brown eyes. One of the We're... things that I really want in a, in a dog is pretty eyes. Uh, that that is hmm. one of my that is in my top three of, of important things is that they okay. have nice Wild. eyes. If they're first of all, if they're cross eyed, not even interested. Uh, and if they have 
extra pretty eyes that really puts them up a few levels. Same thing, same with girls, honestly. Like I was going to ask has, that. If a girl has these really light blue eyes, I'm super into that. Green eyes, super into that. Look, if you got brown eyes, I, 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 I'm still going to think you're beautiful. I'm just saying, like, like, oh, look at that. That's a neat thing. That's a cool thing. I agree. Um, it's a cool thing. Although, if I look at eyes closely, I've never seen human eyes that I didn't think were beautiful. Mm, like, sure. They're all well done. I have these beautiful honey almond eyes. It's, it's, you just get lost in them. I do. <laughs> do, I do you have honey almond eyes? Is that a nice way to uh, say brown? With flecks of green, yes. With flecks of green. That's hazel. hazel. I have hazel eyes. It says so on my license. That's <laughs> right. It says so on mine too. It also says I'm six four. Really? Fuck no. I would. I mean, I, although that would be kind of funny. I do think that <laughs> would be funny. Like like when you get your driver's license done and make make it silly. I I do think that prank is funny. Who was it that shaved their head or like did a whole disguise Murr from uh, Impractical Jokers? Oh Bring up God. the Murr his, Impractical Jokers licenses and passport. His yeah. punishment was to make his driver's license photo look nothing like what his day-to-day -day self looks like. So much so that it wouldn't work his ID. <laughs> <laughs> they, made him, they made him get a, his passport what, photo taken one season as a punishment, wearing like a wig of fake hair and being all hairy and ridiculous. And the next season, no hair at all for his license. And so he was like, yeah, even at airports, like it's not working. <laughs> he's, he looks like a fucking murderer in that. Damn, I wish there was a side-by-side -side of that with his... Uh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, that's why it doesn't work because his passport, they made him look like that. <laughs> and that that wig is the punishment he had to, for that wig. That's not a wig. That's another cast member's hair that they <laughs> shaved off and made into a wig. And so he has to wear his buddy's hair for a year. That I'm, I'm going to rewatch some Impractical Jokers. That is such a fucking good show. I keep waiting for the new season that doesn't have the, uh, the one Joe. Yeah. Joe in it. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but, but I don't know I how they're going to do it without Joe. Well. Joe hey, you is said you've been, so much. Yeah. I, I, I wanted you to finish your thought, but Joe, Joe was great to the show. It's going to suck without him. They 100%. bring in a guest star every week to replace him, which is what you always do when you lose someone beloved. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good transition period. Hopefully he comes back. Um, I was going to say, I think you wrote in the chat the other day that you'd been reading horror books or something. Yeah. Yeah. As we I've lead been... into the spooky month of October. What have you what have you been reading? Uh I went to this like discount bookstore probably like a month ago and was just poking around. And within like picking two books out, I was like, oh my God, like you can get like these are like thousand page books for four ninety nine. And so I bought a bunch of them. I got the Necronomicon, which is the compilation of HP Lovecraft's horror short stories. And I've read most of that now. It's very good, mostly. I've read like a lot most of that anthology. too. Have you? Yeah, of like, course. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft as most. Well, yeah, I don't like read too Lovecraft. much about him, or you might like him less. Um, oh, you'll I love. I know. Him. I know. <laughs> I know. I know his cat's name. Um, if if you know that lore about him, but uh, yeah, that was or no, what was that? Yeah, that was him. That was him who named his cat the N word. Uh. I'm pretty sure so, that, you know that who flew in the twenties wings of redemption. Also one of my favorite soundboard clips, it's wings. It's, it's not altered. It's just wings saying I had a dog named Ninja. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. dude. It's like you were born in the late eighties wings. Like that's not or mid eighties. I don't fucking know. But yeah, anyway, yeah. The Necronomicon, I've been reading that. That's a really good one. Um, but like, I won't, I won't say it's like all a banger or anything because like any anthology book, there's big wins, big like where you're like at the end of that short story and you're like, fuck, I want, I wish this was fleshed out more. I wish there were 500 more pages of this story. And then there are other ones where you get like 15 pages into the 30 page short story and you're like, this one just isn't, isn't doing it for me. And then you just flip to the next one and go Stephen there. King has those. I read like, yeah, I don't know. One of those anthologies with just tons of stories. I have a bunch of, or I bought a couple, um, giant books that were uh sci-fi anthology and like i don't have nearly as much experience reading sci-fi as i do fantasy and horror and so i've been doing that more like like just before bed like i'll read a few of those uh it's just called like like the 
they're compilation books from like the like 2000 like 1998 like and it's a bunch of uh i just say they're older books because i got i don't even know what you would call them it's just like the best sci-fi you know of 1998 or whatever and it's like 1200 pages of short stories and what i found with sci-fi is that even more with even more than horror or maybe it's just i enjoy that genre not as much as horror is like real early in stories you'll be like oh this is just stupid like mm. this is really bad but then other but then the the chasm is so great there's other sci-fi ones where you're reading and you're like pissed that it ends where you're like fuck that premise was so so good i wish this author like fleshed it out further instead of kind of leaving a cliffhanger some sci-fi books have me going at like if my brain was an engine it's maxed out i'm redlining to keep up with this fucking book like wait a minute i need to visual like three body problem did that a lot to me Mm -hmm. um and I kind of like that. I kind of like trailer for you know, that's out. Oh, yeah. So, I, anyway, I, I like a book that makes me work at it. Yeah, and I've got yeah, this. Uh, I, I've got a thriller anthology book. Uh, it's called Thriller, I think, um, and it's uh, maybe Stephen King edited it or Jane, some like well-known author edited it, and it's got a bunch of like thriller style stories in there i just i don't know why i just saw they had a bunch of anthology style books available and so i bought like nine of them and it was only like like 50 60 bucks for yeah probably I found a fifteen thousand pages i found a website a while back where you could just buy boxes of books and you could pick the genre you wanted to purchase and every time i try to like That's wait risk. for them to restock they're sold out of sci-fi and fantasy and it's just like, oh, do you want a, you want 25 pounds of romance novels? It's like, fuck you. No, I want 25 <laughs> pounds of sci-fi and fantasy. That's how they sell them, like by the pound. You just get a crate full of books. I would do and that. I would definitely do I that. I wanted it, it but it, you know what it'd be? It'd be like that time I bought all, all those magic cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just all trash. <laughs> I was like, what do you There's mean? a lot 10, of land in God. here. <laughs> oh, my God. We're never going to run out of land. <laughs> <laughs> it was so i i think i bought do a horror box you like horror i i think that was always sold out too i should check again it, it's like three months in a row that they didn't restock but um i have i have a lot of books here that i haven't read i i have a, i'll send you a picture later of the library is a strong word of the book pile <laughs> the <book> shelf. <laughs> not yeah. even a shelf just a pile well the shelf's full um and then the second shelf's i've got two or three shelves full um, of a bunch of stuff but a lot of it's fantasy and a lot of it i haven't gotten to but i do like i like the old stuff i like the um i like jules Verne a lot and i really like the um uh, all the cthulhu stuff I, I i really like that and but then the more i learned about your boy he's a real fuck he's like the og incel that guy was a fucking loser lovecraft Who cares as long as it's a good story Fair enough. As long as it's a good story. Well, oh, Slush Puppy's going to join. Oh, no, he's not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, hope you guys enjoyed the show. I know I, I did. did. That was Check out hey, all of our six, wonderful six, sponsors down below. There's many of them. It's Greetings. the time to join the Patreon. It's the end of the month. You roll right into October. For the mm. spooky month of Patreon, which is exactly like every oh, other month. Shit. But spooky. we have costumes to do. <laughs> we do have costumes to do. Yes. Yes. I love doing and, the costumes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd it's like fun. to see one where it looks like your head is off your shoulders, but over here, like offset with some sort of Tom Fool trickery. Maybe we'll do a theme this year. Well, I got to start thinking. Yeah, I got to start thinking. I like when we surprise each other. I, I enjoy mm-hmm. that. So as much as the theme would be fun. I always enjoy the surprise of when Woody showed up with those short shorts. <laughs> that was that one was, of my better ones. Dangle bad. is your best costume. It's one of the best costumes I've ever seen right, from someone. Zach, don't end it yet. Is there a, a picture dangle. of me as Dangle somewhere on the internet? I bet dangle there is. Incredible. That that Dangle blew in much better everything shape else him. out of the water. <laughs> yes. Oh my. Yes, you are. This is. The first picture I found that I don't want to share. Dress up like <laughs> that. <laughs> you remember You're like, that? oh, well, not that one. <laughs> now, now, I'm not suggesting that, uh, like, just a thought, someone could dress up as that guy with the huge ass um, that, that we keep laughing about that, that does all the pranks and stuff. He's got the big fake ass under his shorts. 
I don't know what's about to happen. Oh, I, mean, I those love are that. Short. Those are short shorts. Mm-hmm. Looks like you're cranking out some pull-ups here on stream. All right. Oh, no. those calves. I am not enjoying that. Oh, oh this, is not, oh, this is just oh. a bad. Zach, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that was a good look. That was a good look. Oh, well, I guess uh, that's the show now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, PKA 667. <laughs>